It's YouTubing there. Oh, yeah. I should write a book about YouTube. YouTubing. Your turb. You wouldn't to open. Mm hmm. Oh, you, oh, you've been learning some more German, I see. Very good. Very good. Well, I mean, your lessons have been very, very strong. I yeah. even know that, uh, like, uh, it was, it was, what was it, written a hundred years ago they invented it. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Newest language that's caught on. There's a couple people, there's a whole country with them. Uh, yeah, exactly crazy. when I was born. It's crazy. Mm hmm. A hundred years ago, <laughs> you were born. <laughs> that's when I was born. Mm hmm. Oh, things, things were just go? things were just better. <laughs> movies were better a hundred years ago, I would say. They Probably were, yeah. only three Indiana Jones movies a hundred years ago. There's no women talking in them. That was for sure. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, rules change, laws change. Continental oh. drift. You know. Continental oh. drift. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to. Ah. Go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what does that even mean? How does that affect <laughs> things in the sky? I don't understand this film. Uh, I, I was just sitting I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever you say. The continental drift between the United States and Europe has been <laughs> 500 meters in 10,000 years. Yeah, it's about an inch a year, isn't it? I think. Yeah. It's, he so didn't when, factor it in, so ha. He would have been in the general area, <laughs> you know? I think he would have been fine. Ugh, alrighty then. Um, the movie was pointless, totally pointless film, but we'll get into that. What film are you even, what, who knows what we're talking about today? It could be anything, right? It's not in the title or anything. Or it could be the one I'm recording a review for right now. <laughs> it could be what everyone's talking about that will be forgotten, what, in three days, four days, three and a half? Uh, Monday or Tuesday, uh, And but the good news is nobody's talking about The Witcher, so there you go. <laughs> Oh it's, shit, that started again. I completely is, forgot. Remind me, because yes. it's, it's Netflix. Is the whole season out, or is like a portion of it out? Uh, five episodes, and it's... It's bad. It's it bad. Is so bad. It is so bad. Um, well, don't worry about it. I'm sure that that show's got long legs that are going to keep it going forever, and oh, everyone's yeah. going to love it. And... I think it'll be forgotten before Indiana Jones, because no one will remember it. I saw a tweet yeah. that said uh, Liam Hemsworth is getting him into the law, like uh, reading the books and getting ready for the role and stuff. But someone else said, like, oh, shit, I hope he doesn't become passionate about it. Then they just boo him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might want to stop doing that right now. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like, why, why be invested in the source? That's not a good idea, man. Over anything. Hey, what are you um, when, did, when did Indy become scared of bugs and spiders? I don't remember. Uh, feels. I thought that was going to be the joke in that scene, by the way, that she would freak out and then he'd be like, it's just a bunch of bugs, like, you know, something like that. But yeah. no, even he was like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> like, what? Uh, he has a fear of CGI bugs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. Um, anyway, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I love how we're just sort of already talking about it. Let's let's try and get some structure <laughs> here, people. Gosh. Also, yes, no. I'll acknowledge Rags is unavailable. Little dog goes on little holodo, um, which you know I think he would have loved to have talked about this because he's gonna fucking hate Dial of Destiny when he watches hey. it. I'm uh, sure he's gonna be very. I upset. asked you how a dog takes a vacation. I don't know if you guys have them in your countries, but we have puppy daycare now. Oh, maybe he's one of those. I didn't hear about those. Mm. Puppy week care. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, He's yeah, he's not out of the the doggy daycare yet. So once he's back, I'm sure he'll let us know when he catches up and watches the uh, <laughs> rags got sent to the farm. He's okay. He'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> he'll look slightly different and look a lot younger too. But that's fine. It's the same doggo. Jeez, you have to teach him the same you ever, tricks. He's just forgotten. You ever you ever read where the red fern grows? That's where he's gone. Oh my god. Um. Okay. So the way we usually do this, and it feels suitable here, is. Do a brief. Uh, I say brief. You know what? Just just for as long as you want, summarize your overall thoughts on the film. Uh, what direction should we go? We'll go maybe backwards. We haven't done backwards in a while. A little platoon. Do you want to go first? Oh God, do I want to go first? Um, mm. you know, why? Uh, well, like I try and I usually will try and steer away from the it didn't need to be made argument because though it's everyone true, says it. It's everyone says it. It's also true. But, you know, lots of things that don't need to be made can accidentally turn out good. Sure. It's just that this isn't one of them. So, really, oh. you know, it didn't need to... Everything about it is designed to be... Hard to hark back to the originals, but then in completely the opposite way. So you've got plenty of member berries 
but then completely undercut by the fact that the main character is just this husk who's been defeated by the world. It's another old mainstay hero who has to be reduced before he can be rebuilt. And he isn't even really rebuilt in this. He's just twatted in the face. Um, it's it's just quite a depressing film. I was more annoyed by Crystal Skull, but I think Crystal Skull's a better film. Uh, this one is just miserable and depressing mm. and baffling and nonsensical. And um, it's going to take me quite a while to actually get a script through with this one because uh, it's got time travel in it again. And of course, it makes no damn sense. Uh... But yeah. This could be a long stream. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see. I've got all the notes ready. Uh, it needed a spaghetti scene all right. to explain. Gary, you're up next. What did you think overall of this wonderful adventure? Uh, it was an Indiana Jones made by the people who made The Last Jedi for the people who like The Last Jedi. <laughs> That's the way to put it. Oh, that explains a lot. Formula complete. <laughs> Good night! Well, hey, I mean, if, yeah, okay, because <laughs> I assume you can get more into it if you want to, whatever you want to. I will. I will. Um, all right, Mel, what have you got? Oh, okay. Uh, so this is one of these movies that just actively drains the energy out of you while you watch it. You just sit there and it's like, okay, yeah. And it's like, oh, fuck, there's over an hour left. Jesus fucking Christ. And then you just watch it and watch it. And it's this is one of these movies where it's like, and then this happened, and then, and then, and it's like, oh, you're here now too, and then this, and then, oh, time travel, oh, thank fuck, we have some more time travel movies. Yes, I'm very excited about time travel these days, mm -hmm. if you can't tell. Um, it's like, I think there were jokes in there. I probably, I don't know. I was allegedly, just miserable. Yeah. I don't As, believe you. I mean, does it, I say allegedly. I'm, I'm, I'm not we'll making check the point. evidence on that. We'll see if it's true. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, you, you, uh, people can open their case uh, to me. I'll uh, answer in two to three uh, work days. I, I uh, have actually seen some evidence that one or two people laughed in what? one cinema somewhere in the world. Um, but <laughs> only they, one or two of them, and not maybe very they hard. Went to, maybe they went insane. Uh, like, maybe they saw, it, uh, like it wasn't a very definite, assured laugh either. I think it was more of a, is this, is this supposed to be funny? Did they put in a different yeah, Indiana Jones just, movie, maybe? Play the wrong one? Maybe. Yeah, Are you yeah. thinking of happy memories, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if you watch the uh, the old Indiana Jones movies, one, two, and three, you always have like this sense of adventure, and it's like, yeah, this is some fun stuff. And this is like, not that. I don't know. It's just it's just miserable. I hate it. That's the key it, it's word, one of, I think. It's, it's one of those movies that once you make you to stop watch movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If <laughs> um, what is, I guess, oh gosh, because I, I feel like I might end up just saying the same thing I said on open bar for my intro, but, um, what is with the whole, like, if a character is above age 45, then he wants to die? There's, like, nothing else they have ideas for? Because, <laughs> um, from what I've understood, James Mangold came to this project when action had already been, like, settled, which is something common now for, like, all movies anyway, at least of this budget, and he said he, like, there's some quote where he's like, I wanted to make this about something. And, you know, I decided to make it about time and how, you know, Indy's getting on and the world's leaving him behind. It's just like, why? You didn't have to. You could have made any story you wanted, but you went with the one that everyone fucking goes with. Man's old. He wants to die. <laughs> just like, what else die. can you do? <laughs> That's what old people do. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that is, that idea is fucking stretched across this whole movie and it's, it's in all pieces of dialogue and set pieces and... Uh, as was said, miserable. I know it sounds weird to use this word, but the one I really, really feel for this film is lame. And I don't mean it in the way that we always sort of use lame to mean like, oh, that's that's crap or bad or whatever. I mean, like, it's it's like a... Uh, as people would often use it in its original definition, right? It means like um, something that doesn't work and it's just sort of old and fucked and it's just sort of there. It's lame. It's, it's a bit wonky. It's just the whole thing. Nothing quite ever works. There's actually a few details throughout that I would probably lean some compliments to, but I think a lot of them are accidents. Um, <laughs> and a lot of it is just like, well, if, you know, how would they fuck that up? And it's like, no, I know. People have been fucking some, some storytelling things up for so long now that seeing something done right is almost congratulatory, even though it's like some of the most obvious shit. For example, seeing a dead person and saying, wow, it's bad that that person is dead. Like, it, it, I almost feel like I should let the film know. It's like, I'm glad you did that. <laughs> even though it's like it's not normal it's like hey, it should be but you know um but yeah vast majority the funny part is i say i've got compliments for it um the most complimented stuff in this film that i've seen on the internet uh, i don't like so 
I'm hoping we can get some interesting conversations going. Uh, mm -hmm. Rewatched the uh, three Indiana Jones films and that weird one that Spielberg made with Lucas later that uh, South Park already eviscerated, but it's so weird to think that that's old as fuck compared to this. And 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 it's like a, a new era that we, we we've gone through like the <laughs> it's already been tarnished and it's like the doing it again just to make sure he's still alive so we can keep going. Then it's like yeah we'll probably do it after he's dead as well because that's we we kind of got the uh, trappings of that at the beginning of this film. Mm. So that's what we're here to discuss in, in extensive detail and it was sad. The whole thing for me was sad, especially after having watched. Uh, uh, I've said before, Last Crusade is is my favorite of the set i adore that movie and this is feels like the opposite of that it's the complete reverse in terms of how it makes you feel but i'll stop there because we've got plenty of hours to go john what did you think uh i thought it was a bit pooey <laughs> i looked at my phone a lot throughout the whole thing i went in with high hopes i mean i don't really have faith in any disney projects these days but i like james mangold i like copland i liked his 310 to yuma remake mm -hmm. logan Ford v Ferrari. I thought those were all great. Yep. Um. So, uh, I was like, hey, maybe it'll in it'll be at least interesting. This is what I thought initially. It would be interesting to see how he handles a Disney project like this. And I was very underwhelmed, disappointed. Um. Uh, CGI, too much of it. Um, none of the action sequences felt. Um compelling or perilous uh felt very formulaic and um i laughed near the end but for <laughs> totally the wrong reasons <laughs> and uh yeah credits rolled and i went well that felt like a waste of time and now i go and, home uh, <laughs> yes yeah. that's, that's that not a great experience unfortunately and fringy what did you think uh, <laughs> the, it, it's this film doesn't need to exist and it reflects in like what the film is it feels like this really directionless idealless vacuous product as opposed to a film um bearing all of the standard writing problems standard plot and character problems but i mean it was just like a pretty miserable experience it's just like lame to watch this movie sort of shuffle forward <laughs> and just sort of <laughs> And just sort of come to this, uh, sort of, uh, like, th this end. It's just a really, it's, it's, just, it sucks. Yeah, it sucks. Um, that's about it. <laughs> well, so we've got plenty of diverse opinions here. Plenty of people who both <laughs> enjoy it and didn't enjoy it. I'm glad of that. Um. <laughs> there's, um there's an overarching irony with it, though, which is that, and it, it, you often see this in in these bigger remakes. Jurassic World Dominion did it as well. When you, you know, this incredibly uh, lucratively like studio backed film comes out and complains about evil big corporations just extracting profit with no soul. Um, and, but the, the whole thing about Indiana Jones, the whole point of his line, you know, it belongs in a museum, is that old things are old things. They are in the past. There's a difference between past and the present. You should leave old things in the past and just appreciate them for what they were. And the Nazis, the people he's always against, are the ones who try and pervert old things and bring them back to the new. They have to open the arc. They have to do it again. There must be a modern material value to it. And that's kind of what this film is. This film is this film is the opening of the arc. This is the people who cannot allow Indiana Jones just to be this museum relic piece, which everyone loves and enjoys. They have to just bring it back and do it again. Something new, something more, something modern with it. And it's just, I think that's the most depressing thing of all, because of all the characters that really embodies that that sense of the importance of, of history in the past, then Indiana Jones is the one. That's his whole guiding motive. And yet here the studio is insisting that no, no, the arc must be opened once again. And lo, all of our faces melt as a result. But mm -hmm. there we are. Yeah, there's a lot of unintentional like meta scenes in this, including yeah. uh, Toby Jones saying some things should stay buried and in the beginning you're right. <laughs> when when they find that all the artifacts are fake in the train, I'm like, yeah, just like this movie. It's it, you know, it's it it was weird that that message was throughout it. Uh, yeah. and, still, and and on top of that, I honestly think an intention. Uh, I haven't seen it explicitly from him, but the intention seems to be that. You know, like with Logan, um, a lot of people say that Logan, part of the point Logan's making is that you have this refurbished new uh, Wolverine coming in, but he has none of the heart and soul, right? Like almost in universe. That's what that creature is. 
and it, it's a monster basically and that wolverine logan himself is a lot more than just the muscly man with claws and it's like yeah okay i could see how you could definitely grab that and that the, you know wolverine without that is is a, is a monster blah 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 i think he was trying to do something in this film where I think Mangold would argue, like, yeah, anybody who thinks Indiana Jones is a, some historical relic that we can move on from would be wrong. There's plenty that he has to give. There's plenty we have to gain from, I don't know, enjoying his adventures. Like, like some kind of meta line like that. But I was just like, fucking hell, how did you make this film if you thought that? Like, right. This film constantly fucking makes fun of him and puts him in situations that he can't deal with because he's too old. And then constantly references that he's so fucking old. It's like, yeah, but I said at the end that he's needed. It's like... Oh. Oh, you didn't give me that implication <laughs> for all of the movie. And he doesn't even realize that himself. He doesn't actually have a character arc in that direction. That's no. forced on him. <laughs> but la like, lame is a really good die. description, though. <laughs> it's like, la lame is a fantastic description because it is like, you know, if you're watching a horse race or something and the like, young horse is their first race and you think, well, this is, it's challenging, but look at them fly over the hurdles. They're so athletic. And then one of them stumbles or falls and breaks its leg and limps off. And you think, well, that, yeah, that is a lame old dead horse, and it's only going in one direction, and that is the glue factory. And that is like watching Indiana Jones. You used to think, oh my god, is Indy going to get shot by Nazis? Is his head going to get crushed by the rock? And now it's, oh, can he make it up those stairs? Please don't <laughs> fall, Indy. If you fall, you <laughs> might so. not get... Don't break in. Fragile. And they, Should they, we get you a wheelchair? I don't know. There's like legit a scene for that. Like, they're climbing the average rock face, and it's like, oh, you've stopped. Oh, look at you. He's like, yeah, I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> we're close to parody. Like, why? Why are we doing this? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I figure the, uh, you know, go nuts with whatever thoughts you may have. We'll try and go chronologically, but I don't blame anybody for jumping ahead, as usual. Um, so on, the, on the point of it, like, <laughs> things getting on, things getting old, the opening of the film has a ticking sound it doesn't relate to like a, a clock in in universe or anything i think the ticking stops by the time the film starts up and i was like of course you can argue that relates to the fact that this film is largely about time travel it's going to make a lot of points about time like mangold said but to me it just felt like time's running out old dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah fuck off basically time to die <laughs> time, yeah it feels that way time to die yep which um dare i even list how we're doing in that department because it, it, it evokes james bond to be straight away like it's time to die You're like oh yeah i remember him don't forget luke don't forget hard don't forget it's like just stop there's no point don't, no need to open mm -hmm. that chest right now but uh yeah we're in a flashback that's how it starts up and this flashback is quite favored uh, i found across the internet most people seem to think that this is the part of the film that's actually pretty solid pretty good man that's filled with like contrivances and bullshit I yeah. think so, yeah. Yes. I think it's crap. Um, and I, I guess I was one of the only people who's uh, relatively distracted by the the young shit, and I think it's half and half whether or not it's... A, like, there are shots where it looks really good, but there are also shots like when he's falling or taking the noose off his neck or when he's in water. That was the worst of it. And I think yeah. they blur him on purpose and keep him in the background because they couldn't quite I nail felt it. Some, <clears throat> I felt sometimes it looked like the... I don't know, the capture couldn't quite yeah. keep up with the movement. You know, it looked like kind of wobbly. When he smiles face, and looks straight at the camera, it's okay. But when you're rushing around in an action scene, it starts to go... Like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's stapled on. Mm -hmm. um, like but the... Actually, yeah. main it's thing to do with that as well, because like, Harrison Ford, especially as Indiana Jones, has relatively few facial expressions, but they are so well known because they are, they're, they're yeah. always extracted for maximum effect. So everybody knows what the face is supposed to do. And then you see the CGI version do it, and it's, 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 like, it's not quite there. Sometimes it's closer than others, but there are others when I think I know what face is supposed to be deployed in this scene, and it's it's that's not it. That's just rubber. Um, but there mm -hmm. is. But then again, you know, it's what we seven years out from Rogue One, and if you compare Tarkin yeah. to this, this is light years ahead. Yeah, no, so, they they're getting closer and closer to nailing this forever, and it's, it's uh, which, got that uh, little bit of creep factor. You know, well, it's Pandora's box, isn't it? Now yeah. that this is available, oh god, we can like. We can just keep actually like much more closely uh, trying to recreate um, old stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, and um, something else that I think a lot of people would uh, kind of agree on this, and it's certainly the thing that pulled me out first, was uh, there's some dialogue back and forth between him and Strucker is in this. The, the At least I don't know the actor's name, but he played Strucker in the MCU, evil German man doing evil things. He does a really great job of it. I think he's done it many, many times. Whatever. They hired him. Good stuff. And he's like... Uh, 
you know, you were alone. And then he's like, I like to be alone. He's like, why are you here? And he goes, you got a lot of stuff, other people's stuff. And I was just like, oh, fuck me, dude. Could you man. sound like you like in your forties, <laughs> just a little bit? He's old. Oof. Yeah. He looks like a 40 year old and sounds like a 40 year old, 80 year old. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> I know a lot of people are complimenting the first 20 minutes and I'll just play a little devil's advocate. I would call it tolerable, but that's in comparison to the entire movie that I had sure. to watch that I didn't want to. And it didn't feature Phoebe Waller bridge. That's true. So I'm um, probably why I mean, people, we got Toby Jones over. and he's fun. Yeah, he's fun. Completely misused shaky camera. Everything's dark, uh, bad Spielberg impression. They even try, he even tried a Spielberg zoom. A couple of times it's just like oh don't don't just do it stay away do it. yep we're gonna say that for ringy oh i was just gonna i don't know i mean i guess i understand the sentiment but like when the 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 ai gun exploded flipped around and started shooting all of the germans yeah. and the <laughs> on the train like <laughs> it just well, it's just put, lined up neatly it's like and the first one is gone the second and then the, the, and then it just all shut down it's like oh that was Handy. and it's then you just see so convenient it's so fucking lucky. and right after you it's see convenient. the ammo run out yeah it runs out right as they go in across right. <laughs> when they walk past it's like oh that was already and there's like a lot yeah. of that kind of shit in the film like in that opening sequence of things just lining yeah. up just right for indy to like pull through yeah most of it isn't to do with his choices most of it is to do with the world allowing oh, things sure. to happen yeah pretty much like that things pan out in a way that he never could have predicted and that he had no influence over and they just keep bailing him out i mean the f first and foremost is he is captured and they're yep. like he's alone it's like yeah and then he's like okay go and take him up this tower and hang him it's like maybe Instead just execute him here him. and now no like, we need no to hang him. it's the dr evil thing <laughs> like <laughs> no i want him to experience an elaborate and exotic death and i'll assume everything went to plan <laughs> I but think like, the other thing is, is compar it's well received by comparison though because at least by comparison with the rest of the film this the opening is trying to do an Indiana Jones style thing it's it's bollocks it, it doesn't work and as you say it's all full of contrivances but and it almost it's, it's almost laughable how many things that you've seen before they try to cram in so he you know he's on the search for this ancient religious mm -hmm. relic MacGuffin um he's got the the old British professor sidekick with him there's fights on motorbikes there's fights on moving trains there's the shots where he's dragged off the edge and he's gonna is he gonna get smashed by the rock oh no he gets up just in time and so it's doing all of these Indiana Jones bits to it and even if that is just this completely empty simulacra, which I think it is, compared to what comes after it, it at least seems like it kind of understands why people liked the old timey stuff. Whereas the rest of the film is just. Do you think that's better misery. or worse? Knowing that they're like, this is what you want, really, isn't it? And then they have like a pathetic attempt at it, and then they're like, anyway, over to this stuff. And you're like, wait, what is this? What are you doing now? And it's like, this for the next two hours. <laughs> I mean, others have compared it. It's like an AI or even an algorithm wrote, uh, tried to fit in an Indiana Jones movie before the Indiana Jones movie. Yeah. Which is just excessively long. God, because was long. You're right. It hits all the all hallmarks you might expect an AI to pick up instead of having the sort of heart and soul and creative drive to make a scene or a, a, a sequence of events. But um, anyway, we get it slightly ahead. We should probably give more context. There's plenty of people in chat who've never even seen it. Those poor buggers. He's dragged no. off. Oh no. yeah, they they found the spear of destiny. That's what this scene is about, quote unquote. Until we realize it's about a little bit something else as soon as it goes on. But for now, the Germans have the spear of destiny, quote unquote. And you're like, oh my god. Nine. What, what's that going to do? What's that going to mean? It's like, oh well. And and Indy's dragged off, ran up a tower. And then set to hang, and and everyone's watching him get hanged until, and I I really do think like I know that Indy gets lucky, but this was this was pushing it for me already. <laughs> like minutes in, yeah. the U.S. drop a bomb on exactly where he is. It crashes through the ceiling and hits the floor. Does not detonate. They're lucky, but it it, it is live. It's not a dud. And it hits the floor and it starts to like go through it really slowly. Everyone's panicking, looking at it. All the Germans and Indy. It somehow like goes right through and hit, goes through each of the floors until it hits the bottom explodes and destroys all of the floor so all the germans fall down and die but indy's okay <laughs> yeah he's not even hit by shrapnel or anything he's just uh, like ah uh, oh, that sucks 
well, because you know, this is right at the beginning. I was like, seriously, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> barely even being five minutes, and it's already just like nuts. It, and someone might be like, yeah, well, it's not worse than the fridge. It's like, okay, that's a high bar uh, to clear. Not, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. We shouldn't really treat it that way. I think. It, it, the, I think what bothers me about a lot of the luck in the action scenes in this is the, is, as I was kind of alluding to earlier, none of it, how he escapes them has nothing to do with him, really, ever. It's always just like, oh, lucky someone dropped a bomb on you. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Yeah. Fridge, at, least, at least he thought of the idea of getting in the fridge. He, <laughs> that like... was something he committed to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember the luck elements feeling a bit more earned in past movies. Oh, yeah. You know, in Last, Last Crusade, where he's hanging off that tank barrel, he's about to be, like, driven into that solid wall. And then there's like a bullet ricochet or something, and the the driver yeah, dies, fight. and he falls over the lever, and then he turns it at the last second. It's there's a like, fight inside the tank cool. between you know the people in there, the dad and Brody, and it's like it's at least as mm -hmm. a result of the fight, you know, something happens in there that moves the tank controls. Like that's way more cause and effect than something like, like I said, it's, I find it hard to describe some of the things that happen in this film to a to an audience. Like, as a result of the Americans trying to land a bomb on Indy's head, his life is saved from being hanged. Yeah. Not on purpose, obviously. <laughs> like, because none of this is on yeah. purpose. All, all, almost, if not all, the luck scenes in this movie. I was like, oh, come on. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So, yeah, uh, Basil is the British professor man who's with him. Like I said, Toby Jones playing him. He's captured, too. And um, uh, 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 he's, like, taken on... Because they're going to try and question him to figure out what's going on with, with Indy. Why is he here and why... Why is everything going on? Whatever. It, like I said, it, it was said. It feels like it's evoking. Just that's the that's an event that happens in indie films a lot. The, he gets captured. His friends get captured. And then they get uncaptured, escaping. You know, this is just something that's happening. Um, this is a fucking weird part. They, they want to create this scenario where Indy gets into like a German vehicle and oh. puts on the helmet and he has the uniform. And then G Germans get in the back waiting to be driven somewhere. It's like, oh, that's that's awkward and funny. It's like, how do we start this? Well, he just walks up to a car, knocks on it, the, the, the window comes down, he punches the soldier, opens the door, drags his body out, gets in, and there's just a bunch of Germans around. Like, they're all Nobody just standing around. Just, yeah, I remember that. Nobody reacts at all. They didn't notice. I, I didn't was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this I mean, like, between five and ten, you can just see in the background doing stuff. And I was yeah. like, oh. Okay. I get that, like, he's not known as the most stealthiest guy, but that was just funny. Like, <laughs> you just. And they all climb into the car, and it's like, you're gonna have to walk past the body on the floor. <laughs> like, and be like, well, <laughs> guess that's got but nothing that's to do with anything. Because that was done in an, in an old Indiana Jones film. He goes undercover, he's in disguise, so it, it's happened before, it must happen this time. That's yeah. basically mm -hmm. the reason. Also, we need to manufacture some kind of pretext for a motorbike chase. That has mm -hmm. to happen, because that also <laughs> happened before. But. If I'm right, I, I can't remember this scene very clearly. Isn't the train still in station? Because he's trying to get on this train. I think the train's still there. And I was wondering why he didn't just go straight for the train rather than get into a car to drive alongside the moving train to jump onto the train while it's moving. You're right, the or train is not something? left yet. It feels okay. like that might be the editor's fault. Because oh. I don't hmm. know, because you're right. It, 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 Indy needs to get onto the train. That's why he's getting into the car. It's like, why would he get into the car if the train is in like it's meters away from him stationary the smart thing for him to do would be to get on you know so yeah i don't know if that was because the things were ill-timed or that they uh I, I really can't think of why he would get into that car when his only goal is to get onto the train maybe there's a line where he finds That's out because he wants to get the spear of destiny back right that's his goal right now yes because he, he doesn't realize it's a fake which it's uh he cool. and the Evilmans realize soon. Anyway, yeah, car chase. Um, I don't know. What did everyone think of it? <laughs> like the first action set piece. Uh, I mean, I thought the whole opening scene was like, sh like shot, probably storyboarded and e edited well enough. But like, it all felt fake. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. anytime there's vehicle carnage, like uh, you know, the guy on that the side compartment on the motorbike gets smashed against the tree or shit like that. It just it's like, oh, that's CGI, whatever. 
Mm -hmm. you know i've been spoiled by movies like mission impossible where it's yeah like, oh shit they actually did that like that's cool. spoiled by movies like indiana jones <laughs> maybe he... <laughs> <laughs> that too yeah there's some great stunt work in those old movies yeah doesn't he like... jump onto one of those bikes at some point and then it just gets cut in half without him being affected at all or well, so sometime else the physics just stops working um yeah those yeah. things are connected you can't just like tear it off with no effect to the driver of the bike and he crashes it into a tree and, and it just comes off it doesn't wrap him around the tree which is what would happen no. yeah um <laughs> so this is what i mean it's just like oh that that's lucky that it worked out that way it's like Andy could have just punched him but i guess they wanted something cooler than that right it's like look at that he drove him into a tree how fucking cool is that yeah <laughs> like, yeah i guess so <laughs> um and yeah, the the they've got his effects in the in the room as well. The bad guys they put the the whip and the hat on the table, and you just hear the soundtrack, and you're just like, yeah, 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 fucking. Yeah, it's um, about the only thing you remember from the soundtrack. The soundtrack in this is quite weak overall. Also, you can barely hear it because the sound mixing is terrible. Yep. Um, but, I felt um, bad because I didn't realize John Williams had done it, and then when I saw it, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. But uh, he's uh, yeah, hmm. he's he's been out of that that period of his career for such a long time that like, you can't really do Indiana Jones style uh, fight music. I guess if he, he's been doing Shostakovich stuff for ages, it's he's in a much more mellow phase, and so he doesn't really jump out above the action sequences. Also, the, the sound editing doesn't let him jump out above the action sequences. But with the exception of the one or two moments when that theme comes in, I cannot remember a single piece of the soundtrack, which is kind of depressing in its own right because it's John Williams, and you should yeah. be able to remember more than that. Yeah, I yeah, was, this is weird because I thought um, the the theme that he wrote for Kenobi, I thought was quite good. Like just the music theme of that show, I thought was nice. And and I remember thinking like, oh, he's old, but like he still got it. He still got that magic. But here, it was really unremarkable, you know. And just a lot of reusing, mm. right? Which is easy to notice. Yeah. Uh, so then, in the end, has, uh, he's gotten to the back of the train as a result of that little action scene and he's uh, he's going through the carriages and he's stolen uniform and it's really odd because he's stolen one that has a bullet wound uh looks like shot through the heart sort of thing and i was like well that's not gonna work like i saw it when he was walking toward them there's the huge you could see it on the uniform i was like are they not noticing that? that that seems like something that they would pick up but okay and then there's a payoff later where they notice that um and so i was just like what <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, you pick one or the other, you kind of both. Like, why is it that they would take that long to notice a bullet? They notice it in his back. They don't notice it at the front, which... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. just, like, sure, I guess. He's just lucked out. So that he, uh, he does manage to get the Spear of Destiny, but he realizes it's fake. I'm not yeah, sure I what... Wrong. Is, the, is the jacket bullet hole thing something they use in Solo as well? Is that how they figure out... That sounds is, familiar, sure actually. In Solo. Is it... Um... It's not. It's no. It's not Harrison. Well, it's not um Aaron Aaron Reich. Olden. It's not. It's not Han Solo. It's um. It's what? Oh, what the hell is his name? The um. The double crosser at the end. This is how much Wait. I remember about Solo. <laughs> the double crosser at the end. <laughs> yeah, Woody Harrelson. Yeah. By the way, they all do a double cross at the end, except Solo, basically. <laughs> but I think that's how they figure out that he's not actually a military, uh, like uh, an imperial officer, isn't it? Because he has a bullet wound through his jacket. I so think you're right. I can't quite remember. Stealing from yeah. the best there. I really. <laughs> A single thing about Solo. <laughs> Solo's a hard one to remember. It has Darth Maul in it. That's cool. Oh, it so cool! What he lights his lightsaber that, up. That lightsaber getting turned on was so awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that was incredible. That that part was oh, that broke the internet. That was so good. So uh, yeah, he he locks the door behind him, and I thought it was kind of odd because I was like, if it's the basic lock, that's one shot from the MP40s. I think they have that would definitely. Broke, broke that door open, but he gets a good like few minutes to inspect that spear, and I was like, alright. They, they break in way later, and I don't think it's from a gunshot. I don't even know what they did, but they eventually get through. Oh, they don't use their guns when they fight against Indy, don't worry. <laughs> they are blocked off, not a lot. Well, there is one time he does get shot in this movie, you know? You, you wouldn't have yeah, known it I mean, from I'm, the consequences. I mean, in this scene <laughs> specifically, when they're on, on top of the train, I was like, shoot him. Oh, and right, yeah. Just, that's... Just shoot him. Hello. It's like, no? Okay. There's a particular detail know. about that that's particularly funny. But, uh, yeah. Um, Is it so... a 1v1? Mm hmm. 
So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, he's moving through and realizing, like, a lot of this stuff is real. A lot of this stuff isn't. The dial uh, the, the, the dial isn't something he cares about yet. It's something that um, the new a new character called Vola, I forget his first name, but... Um, Jürgen. 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 Jürgen Vola. He's, um, he's our evil German scientist for the film, and unfortunately his personality does not go beyond that. Um He's no. got one of the worst villain introductions I can think of in, mm -hmm. like, certainly in recent films. At no point is he ever conveyed as being competent or threatening or dangerous. Nope. Um, his first scene, he gets knocked out in one punch. It's just, oh, it's such a waste. Mads Mikkelsen is wasted so often. I mean, he plays Hannibal in basically every role he's in these days, but he's still good. It's You're just right, a shame yeah. he's not getting very good parts. The, the thing I, that baffles me about this one, at least in Rogue One and in Doctor Strange, I think his total screen time with both of them put together is something like fucking eight minutes. It's ridiculously small. So at least, uh, you know, we don't get much of him, but so the the wasting of him is at least like there's not much you could do. But he's in a lot of this movie. He's a lot of scenes, a lot of interactions with a lot of characters, and each time you just you don't feel much. You're just like, yeah, he's just a bad guy. That's basically as far as we're ever going to go. I feel like um, all of the bad guys from previous uh, Indiana Jones installments have had way more of effect. Even the goofy Kate Blanchett thing, <laughs> whatever that was, the Russians, I, uh, the, the more impact <laughs> is made. He sort of just slinks between scenes and he keeps losing. Like, he just loses all the fucking time. So it's just like, he's, yeah, there he goes. He's an idiot. Yeah. He's an idiot throughout the entire film. Incompetent and an idiot, but he's supposed to be, you know, Werner von Braun. You know this brilliant physicist and they just they kind of just drag him along mm -hmm. and it's sad. it's sad that this guy gets wasted so much i mean he might be a one-trick pony don't know haven't seen him uh in much else other than these small roles that he keeps getting cast in and just they're forgettable uh, oh he's capable of a hell of a lot more it's, it's really yeah. unfair uh movie if you have not seen it i think i want to say it was 20 was it 2011 or 17 what was when was the hunt made not the stupid one ringy do you know <laughs> I don't know. Let me check. It's an easy recommendation, and he's amazing in that movie, and he's not playing some crazy villain man. 2012, that movie came out. Go watch that if you want to see him in a completely different role and absolutely nailing it. It's, that's the kind of movie that gives you like full respect for an actor. And then you should watch Hannibal, the TV show. He's amazing in that, too. And then you're like, wow, it's so cool that he's getting all of these roles. And then you're like, it's not cool. It's not even close to cool. <laughs> you're like, oh. Not cool. <laughs> it's actually very lame. So, uh, they start chasing Indy through the train because he's discovered, and uh, there's, if you think about it, like, he's, carriage one is a bunch of Germans, carriage two is him, carriage three is the next one he needs to go to, and carriage four is where all the villains are. It's like, so, so what's he going to do? What's, you know, what's the plan here? Is the alerts going on? He's, he's, he's going to be tough. He goes in, and it's like, um, I don't know, like a mess hall carriage, like it's a bunch of Germans having food, a kitchen sort of situation. And luckily for him, he can blend right in because he has the uniform and he can sit down. And I was just thinking to myself, like, man, imagine that was another carriage with nobody in it. You just would have been yeah. fucked. That would have been it. It's annoying as well because the, the, the alarm goes off, but apparently the alarm only informs people right at the front of the train. The yeah. people at the front of the train come yes. down the train, they go past him, they free the people he's trapped, and then they point them back up the train the way they've come and said, go find him. So you wouldn't, why aren't you alerting your own guards as you go? Dude, you wouldn't think this alarm would backwards. go through the whole train it's so because, weird. you know, it's an alarm. <laughs> they have a shot for it where a guy like pulls a lever and it's like a big red yeah. thing and it's like, and it's just like, but nobody in the kitchen carriage knows anything. Why? Nope. We're hungry. <laughs> yeah. You don't even tell them as they're walking through. The Nazi general walks all the way through the kitchen carriage, mm -hmm. and then we only see him later on coming back through the kitchen carriage, telling people that there's an intruder and that they need to go and find him. Just do that on your way, and you're fine. But they're, well, they're incompetent. That's why they lost the war. But even then, it's just irritating. <laughs> it's so weird, though, isn't it? Like we already have all these broad issues with why was this film even made, and and all this execution, all their ideas of what they want to do with the character. But even the simplest, most basic just stuff in the movie. It's all fucked. It's like, this is what I mean by, I was watching this intro scene and I was just like, fuck, they can't even get anything this right. Which is weird because it's Mangold and I thought that he made movies that weren't cringe. I mean, you know, I say that as if Ford v Ferrari isn't great. That's a fucking great movie. What's going on? Why is this so crap? Anyway, yeah. all of the villains pile into that uh, kitchen one. They, they, they assume he's further along so they go past him because he's like doing a hide and then he runs past them and locks the door behind him, so now it's all the Germans are locked between 
two doors, and then Indy has got access to uh, Toby Jones, his kit, and the the uh, the Doctor, Mister Mister Voler is there as well, and that's where you see if you've seen the trailer, that's where he just punches him out, and that's that. It's like okay, yeah. the, isn't it sadder as well that they weren't there for the Antikythera, but they knock him out just as a casual thing, and he drops it and it falls out of his bag, and they're like, huh, may as well just steal oh, this yeah. too. May as well take that yeah. with me. <laughs> Sucks, man. <laughs> oh well, your whole plan is just thwarted because you dropped your little dial. Uh, Indy, what about the spear? Oh, it's a fake. Ah, oh, damn. Hey, what's that? Ah, uh, take it with. I'm like, okay. That's the mystical time travel dial. That's definitely <laughs> real. We'll just nick that straight away. Off we go. <laughs> um. So yeah, loads of Germans chasing them. Is it? They start moving to the front of the train, I guess, and. uh they head toward an, like an anti-aircraft gun that's on the train, and it's shooting presumably at the British because they're the ones that take over this bridge at the at the end of this scene. Which oh, even that annoys me because they blow up the bridge. The train is going toward a bridge. The train has anti-aircraft turrets on it. It has to cross the bridge. The bridge isn't defended. Wouldn't they just blow up the bridge and stop the train and then attack the train and then they're fine? Yeah, think, from the yeah. air, the train is a pretty easy thing to attack. <laughs> it can only stay on the track. And uh, nobody was worried on the train. They're sitting around. No, they didn't give a shit. They were just like, well, whatever. That's the, this is the crazy thing. So for anyone who doesn't understand what's happening right now, the aircraft gun is just doing its thing. Everyone's chill while the aircraft gun is like fighting a war outside. <laughs> it's just like, okay. <laughs> it hungry. gets hit with a bomb or something, like a, like a series of shells, whatever it is. And it fucks up the gun so much that it ends up shooting its entire like load throughout the train. And it kills everyone except for Indiana Jones, Toby Jones, and Vola and the uh, Strucker. They're like the only people left. Basically all the named characters. And I don't even know the name of most of them. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, uh, it's just funny. Like, that means that they all would have been chilling out, eating their food, doing their thing, talking, and that gun would have just slaughtered all of them. Yep. And that would be the end. Because uh, I think the only ones that survive are through complete luck. So it's very likely they would have died if uh, Indy hadn't done anything. Fucking bizarre scene. And you know it's really? because, like, yeah, they can't get Indy to kill all of these Germans. It's like, you can. <laughs> you can just get him to take control of the anti-aircraft gun. But okay. That's what happens. And then they keep on moving. It looks like they get into the front of the train, but Strucker cuts them off. And I was genuinely oh, confused. out of the mist. In the yeah. Room. Oh, no. He has, like, oh, yeah. this scene. villainous sort of intro, and he's holding something. I was like, <laughs> so that's a gun. And how are you going to make him miss? I figure, like, oh, the train hits something, and he drops it, or something hits him. <sighs> no, he's not holding a gun. He's holding the Spear of Destiny. Yeah. Why? <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> you want to go on 1v1 Indiana Jones with the ancient knife instead of your pistol that you have right now? <laughs> that he has. If he just pulled the gun out and shot him, it would be over. I thought that was so strange. And he yep. does pull the gun out, doesn't he? When they he get does. into close range melee mm -hmm. fighting range, that's when he remembers he has a gun. <laughs> he pulls it out. That's the first and one of the only times Indy uses the whip, and because he uses the whip, obviously we get da 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 because <laughs> it's, you know, it's Indiana Jones. Yep. Yeah. And uh, it just, it's, it, the, the fight goes on. And we get a hilarious interaction with the gun falls out of both of their hands and Toby Jones gets it and he shoots one shot and it it's like Indy's hand. It like bounces off the train and into his hand or something. Then he's like, don't shoot me, shoot him. Like, Sorry. <laughs> I think oh, that's man. a joke, right? That counts. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was great. Um, and then Toby Jones shoots Evil German Man, and then he says, To the victor go the spoils, and kicks him oh, off the train. Oh, that's because the other guy said that earlier. <laughs> ba -ba -da -ba -ba. That's so cool. And then, like, uh, yeah, and then they jump off the train into the water, and they've saved the... Oh, wait, no, sorry, there's one part before. <laughs> Vola oh, shows up, and he's like, Give me my fucking dial! And then Indy tosses him the bag that the dial was in. We find out later dies. that he, well, so he dies. <laughs> And he do loses it, his head. Yes. Do it as clearly as possible, right? This train is going at a conservative guess of what? Like 40 miles per hour? 50 maybe? That's on the lower end. I don't want to go too far. With uh, I don't know how fast trains typically go, nor one at this time, or what it's doing. I don't know if it's in a rush or whatever, but it's, going pretty, it's a train, okay? It's going pretty fast. There's a joke in Archer where um, he goes up to the top <laughs> of the train, and isn't it like he can barely breathe and see because oh, the wind is going so fucking fast? 
<laughs> what happens yeah. is he's, he's climbing up because he always wanted to fight on a train. As soon as he gets up above, like, to get hit with the wind, he loses his gun and gets bombarded in the face <laughs> with, like, <laughs> all of the dust and everything. And then he puts on his little night vision binoculars, and then when he goes up, another train with its headlights on <laughs> goes right <laughs> on. <laughs> oh, that seared like tuna steaks! All I want is to fight on the top of a train! <laughs> It's basically the point is fighting on top of a train is not fun. It's just difficult and painful. Yeah. In any case, it's going fast. And then um, all I can imagine is th th describing this is that Vola's got the gun on him and he's expecting to get the dial. Uh, a piece of metal, I forget what the thing itself is called, but a piece of metal's coming. And Toby Jones warns of it. Indiana does a jump, so he uh, avoids it. It slams Vola in the face directly at full speed and he goes <laughs> flinging off the train <laughs> yeah he's yeah. Like, he's, he's not dead um, um he's very like, so not only is he not dead but there's not even a scar no there's there. nothing he's, he's, i know there's nothing he's fine. yeah he i was sure. whacked him so hard you would think at least he would be like disfigured i thought they're gonna go with james bond villains thing with him where you would have like half his face is all fucked up but nope yeah, yeah. In, in, yeah. In jones yeah. has done that with a guy in in raiders grabs the hot medallion and then he has the yeah. permanent Hot's. scorch yeah. mark with the medallion in his hand it knows how to do slightly visceral like body shot horror stuff but nothing it's just he's been just... twatted at 60 miles an hour <laughs> by a solid metal boom and he's gone flying off of a train and no it's fine there's this thing where humans devised tools that can throw hard objects at you really oh. fast. It's designed to kill. Oh, and um. James, because he, in, it, James Mangold directed the Wolverine, and you remember when they were fighting on top of that train, and then uh, Logan tricks the Wait. dude into jumping. Is into that it. was that James Mangold that did the Wolverine? Yeah, he, he directed yeah, the Wolverine. Did. Oh shit, yeah, I didn't so know he, that. He's done this before, so he knows that when you get hit. <laughs> he knows by how that trains thing, work. It's, it really hurts. <laughs> 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 Yeah. All the stuff on top of the train felt very unperilous and fake. Like oh, yeah. they needed yeah. to crank up the the fans mm -hmm. that were blowing their clothes. Cause it looked like a mild <laughs> breeze. <laughs> you know, like it's that attitude that I it, know would be there. If I asked Mangold, like, why did he try to hit uh, Indy with the, the the ancient knife instead of his gun? I picture he'd be like, because it would be no fun if he just pulled the gun out and shot him. He'd be like, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> No, it's, it's another example as well of the CGI and, and the de-aging I think really working against the film because when Harrison Ford is actually hanging off the side of a tank then there's always going to be that little bit of you that says yeah that's really kind of dangerous he's actually doing that and mm -hmm. that's that impressive and perilous so you're automatically more sympathetic to the character and, and you're more sort of tense about where that scene's going to go but given that he doesn't look real at all and you know he's not really there and you know none of it's happening his head dangles off the edge of a train and you think, well, it's not really dangling off the edge of the train. So why, why am I even, also it's the second time they use that shot in the space of five minutes, which is never a good idea because you should use mm. those things sparingly. But it's just, it's the whole unreality of the thing makes it weightless and basically pointless. Yeah. And that, that one wide shot where like he, he first climbs to the top of the train, he starts jumping over the carriages and it cuts to a wide and it does the music. Da, 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 da. Like he looks like a cartoon. Yes. Bounding from one, carriage to another and that was like a face palm moment for me where i was like jesus christ i'm we're i'm gonna get a lot more of this in this movie aren't i like well this, this didn't look real at all this is gonna sound like a, a, a nitpick but it's just more so do you remember when he's putting on his like indiana jones costume he like he like has old man putting on coat of body language and it's like impossible <laughs> not yeah. to see it he's like struggling to get the coat on properly and i'm just like man <laughs> <laughs> It's supposed yeah. to be him at his prime, but okay. Because if you remember, he one-handedly picks up Toby Jones off the chair to get him going, and it's definitely a moment of like, see, this this ain't no fucking 2,000-year-old. And it's like, yeah, but he was probably on strings, or he did it himself. Like, it, <laughs> I don't know. Just, right. <laughs> it's, it's cool. Unfortunately, old people have a way of moving yeah. all their limbs. There's like yeah, a hesitation um... to everything because you don't want to put too much strain on your bones and your joints <laughs> and you can't hide that with CG. It's true. No matter how fucking hard you does it later. It's, it's the Biden shuffle that he does which you know he's really, <laughs> really old. It's yeah. just it's yeah. that slightly, the legs don't really have any flexibility and the back is very careful not to move too far otherwise it'll throw a hip out. It's just, yeah, you know he's old. Even, even when he's just doing mocap stuff, it's just, that's an old person. Yeah, yeah. I got vibes of like you know watching The Irishman. You know where were they? Yeah, they were trying to make De Niro come off younger than he was. If you, I always remember that scene outside the grocery store yeah. where he's stomping that guy, and it's like 
he looks so old. Like he's looking like he's trying to hold himself together, you know, mm -hmm. while he's doing this. Yeah, like he's gonna fall apart at any minute. First scene like that, get a get a fucking double, and you'd be like, what? A yeah. double for him to walk over and pretend to kick someone in the face? Like, yes, he is a million yeah, I mean, years old. If he looks like an old man doing it. Right. He's not gonna be an old man. Then yeah. And, uh, yeah, if you look at that clip on YouTube, all the comments are about how old he looks. They're not about, like, the meaning of the scene or the character no, interactions. It. It's, <laughs> how they look. it's, it's so, so distracting. Like said, how they move. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, fun it's not just the body, either, like, the limbs, but, like, it's in the face as well. Like, when I first saw Harrison's face, his de-aged face, like, there's a... Because he's old, there's a stiffness to his face that's just... There's a vigor to the way he, like, subtle ways uh, his face moves that just aren't there anymore. Like, if you compare, you know, his facial acting to the old movies, like, there's a youthfulness there. There's a vibrance that no amount of CG can My uh, recover. Favorite expression so, from him across the whole series is in Temple of Doom when uh, he's, we yeah. are going to die. And then he just makes <laughs> a <little> sad face. That's <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, yeah. Um, they take the dial home. That is the flashback. Mm hmm It's very, terrible. It's Make no mistake. Epic. Pretty bad. It's, it's 20 minutes long, and it's awful. And it's, it's better than everything else. <laughs> <and> it's <laughs> bad. Yeah, yeah, all downhill from here. Two hours to go. Two hours and ten minutes to go. Yeah, this is um, a, a long movie. The old movies, they, they, uh, they're they like two hours long, and they, they don't dense. waste your time at all. They're dense, and every scene is purposeful and entertaining. And now, it's every... <laughs> Why are they getting longer and, like, less Shittier substantial? And slowly What's going paced? on? Yeah, I don't know. This this one, to me, I know a lot of people uh, felt otherwise. I've seen different like reviews and comments about it, but like this one, for me, felt like they were padding like crazy. Like They just oh, didn't yeah. know what to do with scenes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem as well yeah. is that everything, all of that first 20 or so minutes is basically one long, consistent, and continuous action scene. And it's by far, I think, the longest of any introduction. Most of the indie films start with some form of action scene. This is, I think, by far the longest one. Um, happens, and yeah. you, you start to lose the point and the purpose of an action scene if it just never stops. Like, action is supposed to punctuate. It's not supposed to be the default setting, which very occasionally slows down for five seconds for characters to say two words to each other. And then, oh, we're back to the action scene again. Um, and it's also, it's probably the, the least effective... Well, I mean, it's a toss-up between this and Crystal Skull as to which is the least effective introduction of the MacGuffin, because... In the original, I think all of the original three films, you have, the, it opens with the search for a MacGuffin of a type, but that MacGuffin is not the MacGuffin of the film. That MacGuffin yeah. is just, this oh, is the quest else. he's already on. Yeah. He's already done the work that's led him here. And then we can go back to a much more slow, civilized buildup, usually in the university, when that's when the plot is majorly introduced. Um, and then you get to see him begin the quest and the puzzle from the beginning again, whereas this one is just... He's walking on, he's gone for another MacGuffin. Oh, he's luckily found the thing that the film is all going to be anchored around. That's now done, and the rest of it is not going to be the nice, classy, glitzy, glamorous 1920s, 1930s setup in a posh university. It's going to be miserable. Oh, and yeah. like, everything about what comes next is just so depressing and, mm -hmm. and sad. And I just think that this, this is what I think people really mean when the film didn't need to be made. Because if you're going to do this with... Indiana Jones, if you are going to reduce him to the status we're about to see him in, then you've basically said, look, this guy who has been throughout your entire life this, this p pinnacle of both class and sophistication and also action and, and physical ability, now he's got none of those things and he is himself depressed. What, what are we even supposed to be aspiring to here? Like, the point of Indiana Jones is that this is a character you want to embody. This is someone that you really want to grow up to be like, not someone that makes you fear growing up, <laughs> which is now what he does. So that's what I, we may as well talk about the scene in just a sec, but you can guarantee they would tell you that all the things you're about to, we're about to highlight about what's wrong with this is intentional. They'd be like, of course, that's the idea. And we're going to subvert it as the film goes on in terms of like, no, just because he's old doesn't mean he's useless, doesn't mean he's a an artifact, blah, blah, blah. But it's just like, we'll get to what your film has to say about this state of being, but you did not have to make this the state of being, which to be honest with you, I guess I completely forgot the trailer because this is shown at least partially in there. But in the cinema, mm -hmm. when it's panning through his room, and you can see, like, his, uh, his sort of uh, war-related 
uh, and and like religious lots of different things across his life across his desk is a picture of Marion as well she's like okay then it pans you can see Indy asleep in his recliner chair in his in underpants. He said Indy pants. <laughs> his underpants. Indy pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, watching TV in his room is a complete mess, and it it's such a fucking image. I don't I don't want in my head. It's like, can you can you not? It, wa it wasn't really like, oh, for fuck's sake, really? It's like, oh. And not only that, music plays, and he wakes up, and he does the old man like, Whoa, oh god, what, what's going on? Where am I? And it's like, oh. Why is the only idea that you have for an old man that he's yeah. cranky? Why is that like the only conception that you have? <sighs> because I mean, it just proves Lucasfilm hasn't learned a damn thing. No. They've been doing it for ten years now. I mean, they 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 didn't learn anything. From the last Jedi, didn't take any advice from the fans, didn't care. They're completely disconnected, and they're just making a product, and that's all this is. It's yeah. it's a product, and thankfully, it's going to cost them hundreds of oh, millions yeah. of dollars. This thing's going to like flop. I love hard. how the flop was called for this so far before like any information had come out about any audiences. <laughs> it's just like you're done. You've killed it. It's over. It, it, in in five minutes, I'm going to get a little head, but we can backtrack. Is they uh, uh we got a sad, empathetic, possibly alcoholic, dead son, served divorce papers, retiring, and uh, all the kids are bored by him when he was adored in Raiders of the Lost Ark. They and, and that's yeah, all. right they, away. And, like he's this, bored as well. I think that's the, the more yeah. interesting thing is that he's yeah. bored by all of this. But he was and, never bored ever. Yeah, yeah, the, no, the Indiana Jones like story itself has an example of an older man who is not very kind to younger people, but is not bored by his own life. It's his own father. Like we know what an older Indiana Jones is kind of like. It's Henry Jones Senior, um, and he's he is out of time, but he's not disinterested in the world or in his studies or his profession. In fact, he's more interested than ever. That's the thing that creates the antipathy between him and, and Indy is that he doesn't find young people very interesting, but that's not because he doesn't find life interesting. That's because he just doesn't think young people have the, the kind of intelligence to be worth his time. So uh, you can see, because we'll, we'll go on to do that against jumping ahead, that this is moon day. So they're celebrating mm -hmm. the moon landing and Indy has no time for any of this stuff. Um, but that's a factor of his overall depressed state of seeing no worth in life. Whereas I could absolutely see an older Indiana Jones in the model of Henry Jones Sr. being, well, the moon landing is not as interesting as history. It's a lump of rock in space. But this, this is really fascinating. Whereas in Indy's case, it's, I don't care about that. I also don't care about this. Can yeah. someone please yeah, And he me? doesn't show much of <laughs> any understanding of it. He does have a throwaway line about how it's like going to Reno. That's about it. But... You, you'd be nice to hear more. I actually thought for a moment, as foolish as I am, that the the, the theme of the film was going to be a sense of, like, the future versus the past. And you might be like, yeah, that is what it's about. It's like, no, no, no. I mean, like, the interests in uh, space pushing us so far forward that we forget how we got to where we are sort of thing. And plenty of, uh, you know, insights about that characters are represented. And then an appreciation of looking to the future while appreciating the past, that sort of thing. I don't think we got anything to do with that. We spent most of the film... Fucking with Phoebe Woolbridge, I, I don't think like I could draw a lot of, of it uh, thematically about any of that, especially not with the third act and where we go. Um, I don't know what the fuck I was supposed to make of all of that crazy shit, but we'll get there. Um, but yeah, as to what uh, Gary and Little Batuma highlight in there, they really did tick every possible box to make him disheveled, despondent, like decadent. He's just this absolute ruination version of Indiana Jones. They're just like, did you need to do this? Could you have had him so that he was normal and also a little bit sad that everybody's so interested in space yeah. that they're not as interested in archaeology? That's perfectly easy to tell as a story without making him a zombie. You don't have to do this. An embarrassing him, like, zombie, too. Everything yeah. around him is poorer as well. So you know, if you remember that the settings of the original one, the university is is big and it's grand and his house is quite large, if I recall, and it's it's well adorned and it's well furnished. Mm -hmm. And he's clearly quite an affluent guy. And in this one, he lives in a dingy little apartment next to some hippie student neighbors who play music too loud. And he's at a shit looking university with a tiny little staff room full of people who don't really want to be there and don't care. And you just, how did you go from that to this How, at what point did you just completely collapse as a person in life and the world recognized that and punished you for it uh, and why, why again <laughs> why is this an indiana jones film yeah i'm well, not happy about any of this when they were filming this shit wouldn't you have just been like you're having him in his underpants with his baseball bat being like you quiet down you kids with your music it's like do you 
you joking? Why is this what you want to do? And it's like, well, that's what old people do. Not all old people. <laughs> no, <laughs> different. Yeah. Jesus. It's like a Simpsons yeah, I'm joke. Not, Look, what is this? I'm not inherently against a like a movie about an old person, you know, dealing <laughs> with old not. age and how much it <laughs> sucks. But like Indiana Jones is one of those like James Bond type characters where it's like a male, you know, fantasy adventure guy where it's like there's an alignment between you as an audience member and the character of like wanting to go on the adventure. And then when you're greeted with old Indy who doesn't want to do anything and is depressed, it's like a cock slap, you know? Like it, It's because know. Indiana Jones is fir firmly rooted in Saturday morning serials, which is rooted in pulp, which is, it just, yeah, it's, it's alpha male stuff, which is stuff Hollywood just doesn't believe anymore. They don't believe, they think any kind of masculinity is toxic now. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and, Indy was always a layered character too. Like uh, what it, when it came out, you know, Indy was fallible. Like they when they introduce him in Raiders, he's he's got that badass scene where he you know uses the whip to to get the gun out of the guys. But th but then he's afraid of snakes and he's running and and that was kind of new back then. All the action stars were kind of like I'm a badass and I'm just gonna kick everybody's ass and they, that was something that was kind of new and different. Well, yeah, him so he's all running from the natives, yeah. right? Where he's just like. Yeah. Ah, get the plane started up. Holy fuck. What the <laughs> that's the, yeah, that's he different. He he him. No, like, so he starts out badass, but we see that he's like, he's kind of clumsy and he, and he gets out of stuff, you know, just pure with pure grit. You know, he's not like this. He's, he's not James Bond. Okay. Who, who's just really badass at everything. Uh, and that was different at that time, but this is something Hollywood just doesn't fundamentally believe that like, it's such a trope now to have your old character just be broken. And, and, and I can hear James Mangold and whoever wrote this now, and they say, well, it's just so boring to have him happy. We need to, <laughs> we need to create drama. So it's like, all right, maybe he's sad about one thing, but like you put five things in there that you could have just, yeah, made, just retiring would be enough yeah. for Indiana Jones. Just yeah. retiring. The, yeah, him being sad yeah. about his son and his divorce, but he still uses his uh, his lectures as an escape because he's super into that shit. They should have had his dog die too. Fuck it. Man. Just yeah, why not? Just because this is the thing, right? As you just highlighted, it, it's, it's such an interesting story to have any one of these elements, but they threw all of them at the same time and just completely destroyed him. It, because it's, it's so weird. It's like a lack of imagination as to the kinds of stories that you could tell about an older Indiana Jones if you have to. Like, if you absolutely have to make this film. Like, this wasn't the only option that you had. Fucking timeline yeah. where there is a good vision of this. It's still not one we yeah, enjoy yeah, that yeah, much, yeah, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> He's sad about retiring, and they find a dial, and instead of time travel, like, it leads him to Atlantis, and then you can connect it to the Bermuda Triangle or something cool like that. It, like, it, it would, there would have been a million different ways. I, you know, have a father-son story. James Mangold's done pretty good ones before. Yeah, just for recast. I was if thinking. Sheila Booth is unavailable or too crazy, just recast. You could have recast, but it's not, not a big deal. Nobody cares. Because the way they do it, and again, I know we're jumping ahead a bit, but the, the backstory for Mutt is that he dies in Vietnam and he only enlisted to piss off yeah, Indiana well, Jones, apparently, which yeah. in, in the first place already seemed to me kind of backwards, because you know, Indy's the guy who's fought in wars, yeah, he enlisted, he's older, he? you'd think he's more, and you know, he, he spied against the communists and Vietnam was a war ostensibly at the time against communism in Vietnam. Um, you would think Indy would be the person who didn't understand his younger son's antipathy towards signing up. And you could find some kind of, like, if you would do it, if, again, like Fringy said, if you really wanted to remake this film, not that, which is not to say that you should be remaking anything, <laughs> but if you were going to do it, I think a pretty good story would be essentially to say, what was the last crusade model? Well, that was, the Holy Grail wasn't just the Grail itself, but it was the father-son relationship that they both felt in some way was lacking, or certainly Indy felt was lacking. You can easily replicate that. If Mutt is like a draft dodge or he refuses to go to Vietnam and Indy's off doing something else and he doesn't understand his son's refusal to to fight for his country and to stand up for what's right against people who hate history and eventually I mean, he could even disappear you could even do that dynamic from Last Crusade again you could send Mutt off on an adventure to find Indy and they come together which would be it would be paralleling for a purpose as opposed to just recreating the last crusade because it's been done before that could have been an interesting story and and like gary was saying as well you, you would really want to tie that into some kind of MacGuffin which has got real cultural power and influence and history like the holy grail like the ark of the covenant do as opposed to the one they just basically invent which is this archimedes dial that never existed and does stuff that it never did 
well yeah, uh, it's based yeah. it's based on the antikythera mechanism but yeah it doesn't uh travel through time they don't even know what <laughs> crazy it is. they don't know how yeah uh you could look it look it up it's a much better mm -hmm. story oh, God, yeah. but it's also i mean it's got nothing to do with archimedes because he didn't make it no. um no, and, and it wasn't found in two pieces it was found complete and they've had it in a museum since 1901 so it's not the best device they could have used um it's I probably agree. like well of all the devices they could have made up world. that one's pretty shit too like if you think about it like complete freedom to make it up and what it does and that's what they got us fucking time travel yeah. and, and you've got and you know because mm. again i think fringy you might have made this point at open bar as well which is that all of those the original films in particular had very strong cultural tie-ins and that they're basically replaying myths that are already well established Whereas this film doesn't do that. This film is just trying to create some random time travel dynamic. But given that it wants to go back to Greco-Roman times, how the hell you don't make use of any Greek or Roman myth to tell this story is kind of bad. Right? Oh, that, yeah. Oh, mm. oh my God. And there's so many that you could have done that were so yeah. good. Uh, and, and you could... The, the Antikythera mechanism could have been in it. It could have just led to something much bigger like mm -hmm. uh yeah. it is a mystery and it is a cool mystery and they, hell they didn't even know what the hell it really was until much later they found it in 1901 it was i guess built in between 100 and 150 bc i think it was and, further back i think it was 240 and then it, like, it was, something it was, it was seven, right until they fit like they were able to x-ray it and figured out it was gears and mm -hmm. uh it's pretty crazy it's a pretty crazy device <laughs> but no no we, we, phoebe waller bridge that's what we needed and it's funny, out of all of the, even the death of Mutt, uh, the, the one that really just threw me off as soon as I heard it was like, yeah, he's divorced or separated or whatever. I was like, Ugh. Like, I don't even... When the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull kind of went out of its way to, like, reestablish and rebuild that relationship only for this film to be like, oh, no, it ended Fuck it. off screen. <laughs> and also Mutt died <laughs> off screen. It makes it so much more apparent that, like, this film really does not slot in, like, at all with the prior films. And even Kingdom of the Crystal Skull really didn't slot in, but like no. maybe more so here. Yeah, well, it this is the equivalent, like the assassination is already in full effect. Like this isn't Indiana Jones. Yeah. This is about as far away as you can get from Indiana Jones. And then it's like, yeah, and also Barry has just fucking left him. <laughs> it's like well, why yeah, are you doing that? Are you just trying to be mean? Like what is this? Asking people to accept all of this off screen. It's like that's a tall order mm -hmm. to ask people to accept that Indiana Jones. Oh. What's all that? for a contrived scene at the end. Yep. Which we'll yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, what? we'll get to that. Oh. <laughs> Fucking piss me off. I was so mad when I got out of this movie. I didn't think I could get mad again at Lucasfilm, but uh, <laughs> they did it. And, and it's so crazy how it's not a shock. Like, a lot of this, no, you're like... it's not even remotely shocking. Uh, like, yeah, here we are again. Now, kind of know. A lot of things were predictable. Like, as soon as you see the divorce papers, you know, like, okay, at the end, mm -hmm. yeah, they're going to meet up. I didn't even like that he uh he goes to the fridge and puts a magnet on her face because I was like yeah that was is the implication like, that he wow. just doesn't want to think about her and so he puts it on her. it came across more so like eh, fuck you it, yeah it did <laughs> it came across as angry yeah. not uh evasive I was just like thanks I've got zero context for why any of that has happened you just telling me now that he and her kind of hate each other it's like cool thank you I needed that imagine yeah. what it's and you haven't i'm for some reason you haven't seen the previous indiana jones film you'd be like why does everybody like this character he's an <laughs> asshole <laughs> he sucks. well and that's the thing he does suck because we uh he goes on the train sees a kid with a little helmet on just to i guess push the fact that yes moon day it's uh it's gonna be a thing in a sec and he starts teaching and as was mentioned it's miserable and this sucks oh. man because he's not that's mm -hmm. not indiana indiana jones is fucking interesting to discuss all these topics. He's obsessed with them. He thinks they're amazing. And to portray his whole class as either falling asleep or having no idea what the answers are. So lame. Yeah. And like, yeah, he, he's like, he's clearly noticing it as well. I think he says, um, uh, I've got a quote, hang on. It's, yeah, in 213 BC, the Roman forces led by Marcellus laid siege to the city of Syracuse. And then some girl in the fucking audience goes, Syracuse. And he goes, no, no, not, not the one in New York. In, in Why would she even think that? It's so fucking annoying, I, man. It's I, like, oh, I she's just so a clown. Thing. Absolute yeah, clown. Yeah. Like, oh, is, is he talking about how the Romans invaded New York? Like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. Clearly. And yeah, um, he's asking more and more questions, and nobody's answering, and then someone in the audience, a bright spark in the audience right there, clever girl, is answering all the questions correctly. 
I guess that you could say that's the first we uh, see of Phoebe Waller Bridge. And yeah, what, honestly, when I saw her down. and how she was already being portrayed as energetic, lively, and intelligent, I was like, oh, Jesus. What? <laughs> yeah. what, what's and the if you didn't get that, the character's Helena, is her name, I think. Helena okay. Shaw. Because I yeah. keep just. It's, it's, yeah, Wombat. Yeah, it'd be better if we don't just call her Phoebe Waller Bridge because that's fucking long. <laughs> 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 call her Shaw if you want. It's good enough, it's quick. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and as she's answering the questions, Indy seems to light up a bit, like yeah, he's been like, dead Ooh. for centuries and finally somebody actually listened to something he said. <laughs> and then these kids just burst in the room, they're like, look, Moon Day shit on the TV! And it's like, That oh. was hilarious as well, because, I don't know, what, what year is it exactly? It's like not... 1969. 1969. Yeah. So they just roll, from, from the outside of the, from the hall, basically, they roll in a TV that's fully functional and shows the fucking program right there. I didn't see any cables or anything. They just roll it in and it just works. It's like, Moon oh, Day! For me, it was just like, that's fucking disrespectful. He's in teaching a class, too, but alright. It's in the middle of a and class. Every Ooh. normal teacher would be like, can you get the fuck out? I'm having a lecture here. And he's just like, oh, I guess I'm going home. <laughs> yeah, no, literally, yeah. He, it seems to end his class. He's just like, hmm. yeah. Bear in mind, he just realized that all of his students knew nothing about this thing, and he, they're all going to get a test on it soon. It's, it's yeah. just like, it's, it's like, all oh, so all fucking fail. sad. The whole thing is just sad. Yeah, they would I roll TVs into, like, when Reagan got shot, like, they rolled the yeah, TV. Yeah, that makes more sense. Challenger exploded, they rolled the TV. Mm -hmm. I was, like, I, I was barely born when this movie... Yeah, I don't think they're going to pull a TV in for a parade. Maybe the moon landing, but not an effing parade. Well, it just Absolutely. felt weird. It looked like a random bit of footage of people talking about the moon. It wasn't, like, it, there's nothing, there was nothing special on it. If it was the launch, maybe I'd buy it. Uh, if it was <laughs> something significant, yeah, like an event. But no, it's, it's just that. And it's not that I couldn't buy it at all. It's just fucking like, what are we doing? And it's like, oh, right. You have a shot of the TV overshadowing his projector and technology, the future over overshadowing the past. And he's looking sad. It's like, I get it. Fine. That's the, we're just doing that. More, we've got to pile on more sad because we had that opening 20 minutes where he's, you know, a, a photocopy of an action hero. Now we've got to bring him all the way back down. And the, the rest of the film doesn't really pick him back up. So, mm. all good. Uh, they're celebrating his, uh, his time here. I forget where this place even is. Wasn't he the dean at the end of, uh, he was the, the joint dean at the end of the Crystal Skull? Yeah, he was. Yes. What he happened was. to that? No idea. Disney. Oh, all right. Off <laughs> Disney. Screen, I, I, that. Disney it, it's all basically headcanon because it all happened off screen, but I'm guessing it's, yeah, death of son, divorce of wife means that he loses his love for his work and gets demoted or he's he's moved out because he just doesn't have the passion and the talent anymore and so mm. that's how he's ended up here but that again all of that is off screen so i have no real idea yeah, it, it, it just... yeah. it's for us to invent basically it's like he's retiring at this place that we've not seen it's... before didn't know he worked here it's like okay i just, I just realized so I, I i guess the implication is also that was his le his last lecture yeah that was the last <laughs> fucking lesson i guess yeah <laughs> and it just burst in with the moon Language like, nobody gives a shit. That's what I mean, it's like, oh, I guess I'm gonna go, and they're like, here's a clock. It's like, hey, thanks for putting up with me. And then just it just gives the clock to some random fucker on the street. I didn't like, like that either because the implication I think yep. is that Indy recognizes this clock isn't like historically valuable. It's just some random clock they pick up from, as if to imply that Indy doesn't value like sentimental shit. When in this same movie, someone uh, lifts his watch, his wristwatch, yep. and he says, "Give it the fuck back. That was my father's." It's like. Yeah. So you do understand like items that are given to you with meaning rather than historical relevance. Like all of these people appreciate in the time you've given them and that you're retiring. I don't think I'd buy that Indy would just toss it to the first person he sees well, outside. I mean, I well, guess, hang on. Oh, I would I buy that this it. Indy would do that. Okay. I wouldn't buy the, <laughs> the sad, <laughs> dejected <laughs> Indy that doesn't want to do it. I would buy Harrison Ford would do that, but not in. Not yeah, already. Harrison Ford would do it. There were no friends there that he valued enough that he would want to keep that clock. No, he hated it there, I guess. Yeah. The whole time, the whole ten years. Ain't that fun? <laughs> no. I, what else you got, I, movie? I actually, I actually don't think I would have minded some of the retirement stuff in, in a different movie that didn't involve like a, a like an adventure fantasy character. Like I, I kind of get that there's something to like putting a, an old character against this time period of 
like the late 60s where all of a sudden it's about space exploration and he feels kind of like uh nobody cares about these old stories mm -hmm. nobody cares about the past anymore um and like i kind of liked when he like uh when he was given the clock and he just said thanks for putting up with me yeah i i just went oh like yeah, he's but that's just, he, he's still like humble you know i like yeah, that, that out of context his... on its own is a perfectly good moment you could put into all kinds of stronger stories but then to have him toss mm -hmm. it away as soon as he gets outside i feel like that undermines the whole thing mm -hmm. yeah well you brought up a good well. point sorry you. sorry you, you brought up a good point about the him being sentimental over the watch later on actually i forgot about that that's a good point like it's inconsistent about like what he's sentimental of but like i i gathered like because it was a clock that he was given he just didn't want to be reminded about the passage of time and there are better ways off, you know to put Got that you. forth than tossing it to a hobo like that that's <laughs> <laughs> totally missing the point the writers were trying to uh, uh you know tell you that he was depressed and he was very sad and pathetic yeah if we get it from the five or six things they told us before they wanted to give us one more so i think i don't get it quite i think right. they should do more <laughs> yeah <laughs> didn't Seriously, go far enough it is insane, because um, it's just beating him down again and again and again and again and again. And all the reprieve you get is Phoebe Waller-Bridge shows up, because now he's at a bar drinking while depressingly looking at the screen about how space is everything. It's just like, thanks, we need this scene too. The movie is mm -hmm. so dour. It is so oh, effing dour yeah. all the way through. Yep. It comes at an interesting time because we just started a secret invasion. <laughs> the same thing is happening there. And then I start watching this movie, it's like, oh, for fuck's sake, I just had that. This is crazy. Okay. Stop hmm. it. We thought we'd have a new idea where Fury just hates his life, is depressed and despondent and unskilled and hates <laughs> just everything. Just sulking in space for 15 years. <laughs> me, me. We felt like I think if you're different. Gonna, if you're going to do an old indie story, and I mean, with if you're going to use Harrison, you have to address the age. Um, of course. I guess, but yeah, but... Um, I think a, a better way probably of approaching it would be like he wants to go on the adventure. He's still eager, but the world around him is telling him like, you're too old now. Just retire. Just like go <laughs> sit at home. It's okay. But he's like, no. The capacity. Like I want to do the things. Capacity you have to kind of go with probably is going to be that he's in an advisory capacity, right? That he gets to talk a lot. In, you know, Sean Connery's role in Last Crusade, it's not as action-y. Still some action gets to be done, here and there, but again, this is all under the impression of why do we have to make another one? Stop making me try to solve problems that shouldn't exist. It upsets <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, he's at a bar drinking his fucking troubles away because I'm sure he does a lot of that with this iteration and this era. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, she's like, "You don't recognize me, do you?" And he's like, uh, "No, sorry, you're if annoying. I Please go away." Of course, <laughs> so, it's been eight years <laughs> then she's like hell to shore and, and i was just like oh fuck and you get this throughout the whole movie she is so aware a camera is on her at all times in this fucking oh, film yes, yes. Yeah. she Ugh. can't like no offense i haven't seen her in the thing everyone likes her from apparently or, or the thing that made her get somewhere was it flea bag people keep saying i've never flea seen it killing eve as well but holy mother fuck like every time the camera's on her she plays to it she's like hey, ho, ho, ooh, ho, ho. She, <laughs> to me she was marvel as a person like current marvel just in oh, the film God, yes oh. Oh. um she <laughs> never recognizes the tone of any scene she's just doing whatever the fuck she wants um, there's one time she gets partially called out for it, but the film spends about two seconds on that and then moves on. Not even that. A second. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's so annoying. And we've, that's just the beginning. Good God, there's so much of her in this film. Um, so anyway, we move over to the villain side. Uh, Vola is, is obviously just back to, uh, present day Maz Mikkelsen instead of like DH and stuff. And... He's, mm -hmm. he's doing something. I don't know when we'll explain all of the context, but first, he's getting some room service. By God, the fucking makers were proud of this one, weren't they? <laughs> they were. <laughs> so, um, oh, by so the way, bad. first comment I didn't understand, uh, he's got a subordinates. One of them is Huge Chungus Man, and the other one is uh, Boyd Holbrook, who we we will talk about him in this film, because he's baffled me. Like I, he, he was like a... I think he tried to be a leading man at some point, and now he's been downgraded to head henchman with no lines. I feel kind of mm -hmm. bad for him as an actor, because like, he spends a lot of time in this film just sort of being there-ish. Uh, 
don't know what the plan was with him. Maybe he had more lines originally, but it just feels weird because he's like a known actor to some degree, but he's sort of just there. Anyway, he advises the guy who's delivering the stuff. Yeah, he's in there. Don't uh, give him anything on wheels. Put it on the table. He doesn't. He doesn't eat. Th he doesn't eat anything on wheels. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a really weird statement. I'm like, what? I thought maybe Are I was they... missing something. Like, is that a reference to something? Like, what the fuck? I think, yeah, I think they were just trying to uh, drive home that that was a servant, right? Because uh, this maybe. was supposed to be the big scene that established the villain because he's <laughs> racist, which being a Nazi, I would just kind of assume that, but uh, <laughs> we need to find out some more. So like, because he hates was... trades. <laughs> It's like, and, the, the guy should have just answered, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, this is just for me to transport it in here. I just put it on this table, you fucking idiots. <laughs> I, just, I thought it was so odd. Like, just make sure you don't serve him food on wheels. Like, okay. It's like, well, I guess I'll take it back then because it's, it's on here already. So I don't yeah. know. Don't let him see that it was on wheels originally. It'll make him think of the train. Well, that's just right. Say, just say, Austrians. put it on this table. And then that's, it's fine. whatever. Moving During along. During um, his little close-up reveal shot where he turns around, I thought uh, we were going to see, like, oh, the, we're going to see how the train thing yeah. disfigured him, yeah. like, getting whacked. Like, <laughs> right? there's going to be yeah, nope. gnarly, like, one half of his face is going to be destroyed, and it's like, oh, oh I, I guess he's no fine. <laughs> I guess nothing. he's okay. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Boyd Holbrook <laughs> says, he's in, uh, after that, he says, uh, the man you're serving, he's the one that put the men on the moon. He built the rocket. And uh, he turns around, he's like, where are you from? And it's a it's a, a black server, right? So the, the the you know Mr. German man's gonna hate him automatically. Um, <laughs> sorry, Metal, but that's just the truth. He's like, where are you from? I, says, I hated him. He came in. It's like, oh, well, like it's serving guy. a man food on wheels. That's fucked up. We all know that yeah. that's not what he's supposed to do, but yet he just did it straight up. So he says, uh, where are you from? He says the Bronx. And he says, no, no, originally your people. So he says, I was <laughs> born in Yankee Stadium, so or near it. Then he says, did you fight for your country? He's like. 320th Battalion assisted in stopping the bombing of Normandy. And then he's like, you enjoying your victory? Oh, God. I, I, I legit was like, is this... What are you doing? <laughs> like, if, he left it, if he left it after the first question, then mm. I, and like with maybe a lingering pause, it might have worked, just because you can tell then that he's still got these deep, dark, nasty feelings about ethnic minorities. But then he goes on, and by the end of this little interrogation, you think, how the hell do people not know you're a Nazi? Because it's pretty <laughs> damn <laughs> obvious. He's also really <laughs> shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> he has nothing to say when the guy is like, oh, I was born in America. Like, he's like, fuck. <laughs> you got, <laughs> like, I got nothing else. It's like, oh. He's like, wait, I know. Did you even fight for your country? He's like, yes. Fuck. Yeah, it's like, oh, Jesus. Oh, I, I hope you didn't bring me food on wheels. Ah, I got you now. Like, if you wanted to <laughs> show how awful his point of view is and his ideology, you could at least, like, try and present it. Like, because I have no idea. He's just like, I just hate you. And it's like, yeah, okay. That's that. That's the, which, which is, you know, he's a Nazi. That's what they usually do, I guess. But it's like, could have made dialogue that fit a little better, was a little bit more. Um, doesn't doesn't he close it with you didn't win the war Hitler lost it? <laughs> yes, yeah. which is possibly the most cope line stink. I've ever heard Fucking about the cope. war. <laughs> you didn't win, we lost. Like, and okay. by the way, I'm totally not a Nazi. Okay. What's <laughs> <laughs> for me? Like he's he's just like I just you could replace the dialogue with I really hate you. It's like okay, yeah, I hate you. Yeah. Okay, I really hate <laughs> you. It's right. like yeah, I okay. The, Moving along anyway. <laughs> And then ending it, yeah, with, you didn't win, Hitler lost. And then he says later in the film that the history is a, is a long list of losses. It's about who loses. And it's just like, what the fuck are you... you <laughs> Hitler doesn't lose without someone winning, man. It's, it's a really weird right. fucking comment. <laughs> and nobody says anything back to yeah. it. Every time he says shit like that, everyone's like, hmm. 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 <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, so that's... And, as uh, Gary was just saying, that that is more so, I think, the villain introduction for Voler, and it's so shit. They got nothing. It's so bad. It's like, yep, you're still a Nazi. I got it. Anyway, that's yeah. That's as far as they ever want to go time. with it. They're just like, yeah, okay, fine. I mean, whatever. So back to good old Indy and friend. Um, she's researching for a doctorate. Uh, she's gonna be picking the Antikythera, and he says, "What do you know about it?" And then she says, "Uh." The, as far as she knows from her dad, that it was lost on that train segment in the flashback. But we know they didn't lose it there. They took it back. So 
I guess she's got wrong information from her dad, and I think India, along with the audience, is supposed to assume the dad lied to her about its fate, which is a bit confusing for Indy. He's like, don't you remember the last time I was with you? Because that's when he took uh, the dial, and we just, you know, cut to the chase. She's lying. She's pretending that she's forgotten about all of that. Um, I'm not sure why. I don't know what it's difference a... we would have made if she had just said, you have the dial, can I see it? This is what was confusing on my first watching. Now, granted, I was checking my phone a lot. I ran out to pee because it was such a fucking boring movie. But uh, after watching it a second time, which was uh, brutal, by the way, uh, it's a double double cross. But they, that doesn't really come across like really cleanly. Uh, there's a lot of st it, this movie. So uh, you guys mentioned earlier that the uh, the original Indiana Jones films are dense. They're absolutely they don't waste anything. There's beautiful shots. This is just busy. It's busy with stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, so she's double crossing Voller and it, she, and I guess she had made a deal with him and she was going to go find uh, the Antikytherium, but then she was going to go off to Morocco or whatever. Uh, and she just wants, she knew everything at this point and she's lying to him and he figures it out in a second, but it's, it's, it was so freaking, I just couldn't get past like how annoying she was. Like, and I'm like, why is she here? And I, and I was like, well, maybe they'll do something with her character later. They'll make her a little fallible, uh, which they just never do. They just absolutely never do. But like this whole opening scene was like confused. Like who's the guy on the crutches who was, uh, okay. <laughs> we'll talk about him in a second. Yeah, we gotta get, we I'm gotta get to the it. Nazi you, girl bot. Is there a reason then why she didn't just say, you have the dial. I know you do because that's the last time I saw it was with you. So I'd like to look at it for my research. Why didn't she just say that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know I either. Don't... Yeah, I couldn't come up with anything. So all of that is just to... Because I, I think, honestly, you need a reason to distrust her. He needs a reason to figure out a lie in his story. So she makes all... Because she didn't need to make up any of that. And then his story wouldn't have been a lie. You know what I mean? It wouldn't have been, and, and he has plenty of reasons not to trust her, like, moments after it's this. It's great that you said that, Gary, because the first thought I had when watching this was, wait, Indy doesn't recognize her at all, but she's claiming to be his goddaughter. Uh -huh. I wonder if he's going to do the thing of, like, who even are you? Like, I, I don't buy it. I think you know that I have a goddaughter, but just because I haven't seen her in a while, like, who the fuck are you, person who's pretending to be the goddaughter? That's, like, the really obvious interpretation, but he never has that thought throughout the whole movie. He never even entertains mm -hmm. for a second that she's not her. Um, it's been a while since he's seen that girl, and there's a lot of ways people could benefit by pretending to be a family member of yours. It's, you know, it's just... And then, you know, all these agencies after it, and Vola's after it, it's like, why wouldn't there potentially be an agent to pretend to be someone related to you who asked to see... Mm -hmm. how, how weird is that? May I see the Attica theory as a part of my uh, doctorate? Yes. Out of the blue. It's just like, hmm. <laughs> and bit, remember, Vol Vola's after it, He's after it. The CIA is fully aware of it. They're assisting it. And yep. They're just trying to keep them happy, basically. But they're 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 they go full on. We'll get to that and helping them get it. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, uh, you know, it's it's ready to be collected. It's down there, and nobody knows except us. It's like really just pushing it as far as she can go for trying to be a, a, a bouncy character, I think is what she's trying to achieve, because she's like, and you can have a final triumph, Indiana Jones, going out with a bang, back in the saddle. Oh, I'm no. not selling this terribly well, am I? And it's like, no, oh, not. God. Not. <laughs> yeah. But even that's, that's an irritating setup, because, I mean, quite apart from the fact that the real thing was found in one piece anyway, the version of the dial that they have in this film... It's found in two pieces. The half that they have was found in 1901. The second half is still on the same ship. Both halves were transported on the same ship. The other half of the ship has just sunk a little bit deeper, a little bit further away, not very much further away, just like a few meters further away and a few tens of meters further down. But given they've known about it since 1901, everyone knows where it came from, what it is, why hasn't anyone just gone back there already? Don't Surely know. that would have been... Nobody's asked about it either, because... It's so weird, he's just stored it in the, uh, I guess it's a university, like, holding room for important items, storage room. It's like, that's where it is. Like, okay. Yep. Whatever, I suppose. Um, she also says, like, he asks why she's chasing the thing that drove her father crazy, and she says, wouldn't you? Obviously referencing fucking the Grail. And I was kind of like, does she know anything about that? Does she have any context for that, really? Why would she? Because they haven't spoken for ever. 
He knows like barely anything I about guess, him other than assuming he's a grave robber. I guess her dad put it all in one of those journals she read or whatever. Uh, and that's probably it, yeah. He wrote about how he shouldn't be getting involved in his dad's obsession. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. I don't know. I thought it was annoying. I was like, Go away. But that's okay. Um so yes, as was mentioned, uh, we we go outside and this is you know Gary's completely right. This gets really confusing. We have got guy on crutches, uh, black agent lady, and then the two thug guys, and all of them are working together to go get Indy. But like when you no. fully understand everything, it's like well no, it's is Vola because of his aiding the government, the U.S. government with technology like going to the moon landing and stuff. Uh, they're assisting him in his goals of retrieving the Antikythera, right? In his side hustle, yes. Yeah. And so you have so, CIA boss man on crutches. I don't know why he's on crutches. He's just on crutches. His, it was to emasculate him so they can have the, the diverse girl boss be the boss of the CIA Nazi detachment. <laughs> I thought it was, it was really odd that they're supposed to all work as a team, and yet they all like hate each other and have different yeah. allegiances. Uh, and that Suppose gets really fucking weird in about five minutes from now. And they, they don't even really seem to know exactly what each other's plans are, because nope. the a agent lady keeps telling him, and also she's she's not like a rogue CIA agent, she does say, as a representative of the US government, I want you to do this. So the US government is on, is in on, uh, I was about to say Muller, what the hell is his name again? Jürgen, Jürgen, we'll just call him that, Jürgen's little sign quest thing. Um, and yet, it can't be, because surely if they, if they knew that, then why would they be subcontracting the search for a time travel device to this random scientist guy who then will pre... Well, he'll go on to completely ignore them and ditch them entirely and then, you know, kill them. Um, I, I don't understand their relationship at all. I think it just makes... It, no, it's still it's really hard to piece together, on. honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you let somebody that you supposedly brought over Operation Paperclip, a former Nazi, and just, like, let him hire his own guards along yeah, with the CIA? And they're, they're really sense. fucking weird guards, but we're about to find that out in yeah. just a sec. But basically, but they're like, yeah, too... Jones is in there, and we've all got to go get him, is, is, is the thing that unifies them. But that is the last time they're all going to be unified, let's just put it that way. But, but why also, why are they even assisting him in getting this thing, given that CIA women later on will have the line, you got them to the moon, they got what they wanted, because they're not actually interested in what he's going for. So in which case, think... why is the CIA helping him at all. What they were trying to, I think, get across was that they were, like, humoring him, but that seems, like, really fucking yeah. weird. They, like, That's a weird... They, they humored like, him to this extent? They <laughs> like, humored him to murder? <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> humored him. <murder. laughs> so, uh, yeah, they're all going after him. Um, there, he, he gives the dial to her and figures out that she's lying. It's, uh... The, the, the more interesting part, I think, is that they move into the the uni and um they're checking out his room his office the thug guys and uh agent lady is is seemingly like progressively looking a bit more concerned and some some teacher shows up she's like what are, what are you guys doing what's up and she's like what are you what are you doing searching through you know jones's stuff and she clearly gets a bit worried and she starts walking away cuz she's probably going to call someone and she's shot in the back by one of the uh, well, Boyd in this case, Holbrook. Um, I was so baffled because I was like, "Oh, you guys yeah. are just horrible villain German people." Then I guess so you could just go around killing people. Uh, uh, uh. But it's like, well, no, because Agent Lady then pulls a gun on him. And she's like, "What are you doing?" And then I think he says, "Like, no witnesses." This is what the doctor tells me: no witnesses. Because <laughs> like, yes, yeah, some other it's not instantly like over. Some other teacher walks up to see the woman who's been shot in the back, and then he gets shot too. It's a building full of people. You're just gonna kill everyone. It's, it's absolutely insane because uh, first time through, I couldn't quite pick what was wrong because I didn't know what everyone is here to do. Second time through, she's CIA. She should shoot them dead on the fucking spot. These yeah, two are murderers. Even though, yeah, like why is she letting that happen? I don't understand it at all. The only way around that is if you have it as a, a very deliberate and planned out CIA collaboration doing evil stuff with Nazis. Yeah. That's the only way yeah. you can make any of that make sense, but that isn't what the film does. Well, later is, on, it's, it's maddening, though. As, like, opposed to them. Later on, she's presented as being opposed to what they're doing. Yeah. It's so funny, no witnesses, because they've made more of an actual, like, 
uh, insane <laughs> event out of this than ever needed to be. They could have just been like, yeah, we're looking for Dr. Jones. Do you know where he is? And that's it. Yeah. They could have just said that. Instead, they fucking kill them. <laughs> this <laughs> body stop piling up. It's and nonsensical that... as well, though, because they, so the, the original three films have the advantage of being so very easy to grasp. Nazis versus civilization is one of the easiest moral quandaries in existence. Nazis are obviously bad. Everyone mm -hmm. knows that. Crystal Skull comes along, and I think one of the reasons it doesn't resonate quite so well, besides the fact that it's just a load of nonsense, is that you've lost that same... It, you don't have the same easily graspable thing. The 60s are a more morally, politically complicated time. The Soviets don't occupy the same place in anyone's imagination as the Nazis do, rightly or wrongly. Um, and it complicates it. And people quite liked, I think, looking back at the old Indiana Jones films, certainly during the 1980s in times of very sort of high political intrigue for their very simple morality tale. This film has brought back the Nazis to do away with the Cold War era intrigue stuff, because that's not what people watch Indiana Jones for. And yet it's introduced it again, because it's having, it's having the CIA work with suspected Nazis to get the time travel device. But if you are going to do intrigue in the cold war why are you not doing it with the soviets again and if you're not going to do cold war intrigue and if you are just bringing back the nazis then why are you having the american government working with them it's just i don't it's just i don't think they understood yeah, what they were even trying to go for with the tone here they shouldn't have had the american government uh working with voller at all it should have been that he like no. gained his citizenship and he was a free agent after the moon landing was successful they let him go and he was a private citizen and he had a bunch of you could run the exact same story you don't need the fucking insane cia shit yep Oh, it, gets, I, it gets so fucking uh, and, weird. And guy with crutches then comes up, who's supposed to be the boss, and goes, what's going on here? Boy? Yeah, they show all of them arrive. The CIA, like, boss arrives. There's bodies on the floor, and he's like, oh, jeez. And then nothing else on that. We don't see it again. It's like, okay. Nope. I was going to bring up as well, when uh, 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 Sean and Jones are talking, he says about the Antikythera, uh, uh, about what Toby Jones thought of it. He says, um... He thought the irregularities in the rotations could provide ways to predict large disturbances. And she says, disturbances? Like what? And he says, fissures in time. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> you thought the dials on the thing could spot fissures in... Like, where did you get any of this from? <laughs> I don't know, it makes sense to me. You made Maybe that shit up. Good. It's, uh, yeah, that's pretty insane. It's a big leap from like uh, you know the mechanism possibly being able to help navigate ships and it and it factored <laughs> in the rotation of the moon and and time uh, yeah totally I might just be go. able to travel through time like oh okay oh why didn't I think of that that makes so much sense um, yeah Indy figures out she's lying and just as he does all of the bad people arrive and you start to really think like so motivations they want the dial. The bad guys. The CIA lady seems to want Indiana Jones because she wants to ask him about the dial. But she also knows I who guess. Shaw is as well. Yeah, but they're after Shaw. They're not after Indy. They're after yeah, Shaw. They seem to not recognize, though, that she's there. She's got the dial. Jones is basically irrelevant now. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's the, the, capturing him doesn't really do much for the, <laughs> the mission. You gotta get her, and she is within reach. She's she's exited a very obvious way. They chase her on foot. We'll get into how they fucking lose her. It's a bit of editing magic. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so this is the first instance of Helena locks the door behind her. She could easily have locked it once Indy got through, but she chooses to ditch him yep. with all these people that she knows she may very die. well kill him. Um, she leaves him to die. So we know very little about her, and it's funny how the film tries to argue, because this is the first of, I th want to say, three instances where she leaves him for dead. Yep. Um, yeah. She sucks. She's awful. Yeah, that's, a, <laughs> that's immediately what I thought. Like, she just locks him in and runs away. It's like, oh, fuck you. I hope you die. Yeah, and she, you might be like, yeah, but they barely know each other. It's like, fucking goddaughter. She knows that yeah. he, he would have saved her dad's life several times. What the hell is this? Yeah. This is ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm going further than she's an asshole. I actually think it's just weirdly out of character. Why would she do this to him? Yeah, it's like, oh, there's these people that want to sh probably going to shoot you because, well, they just shot two people before they came in. Um, and now they get in there and then just stop shooting, by the way. But, you is, know, that's is just there how an it. argument? I mean, this, this is just As, a reach in Devil's Africa, but is there an argument for, well, she grew up without her father because her father went mad because of something that he and Indy found? And so Indy, in her mind, is associated with her father's death. And they so do that's a bit why of, she's um, immoral at best. 
They do a bit of Marvel type writing where they try and make uh, a character a worse piece of shit by inventing bullshit. Like later on, she mentions how if only there was a father figure that could have taken care of her when uh, her father died, implying that Indy was like an absent father to her. Um, oh, okay. they try and they tried to make it Indy's fault too. And so it's like, yeah, maybe they are going for that angle, but what the fuck? Uh, they invented her for this film, and now they've invented that he abandoned her. It's, uh, it's the same problem that Secret Invasion, but yeah. which is terrible in a way, is having, where they've invented this new history of Nick Fury's, like, making a massive mistake, like a, like this crazy, like, promising something and then failing to deliver yeah. on it for 30 years to then oh, shit on this thing that was invented in this show. You invented a flaw that didn't exist before to shit on him. And <laughs> like, even if he <laughs> yep. abandoned her, like, as she says, uh, that, what, that means you can kill him? Die exactly, oh, like, and it. Well, I mean, this is made by Disney. Walk, <laughs> made by but, idiots. But she goes out of her way to put him in a position where yeah. he could die. She didn't have not, to it, it wasn't like she risks more by taking him with her. It was that she chose to make his life much worse than she needed to. Yeah, she could have let him yeah. through the door and then left him then, you yeah. know, and just oh, take him off, and he still would have had yeah, a She could have said, "You're on your own. Uh, the dial is mine," sort of thing instead of actually locking him in. And like Mola said, this is the first of a few instances of her doing this. Mm -hmm. Makes it really easy to like. Indiana Jones, a character that people going into this movie already like, with this new character, she's got way more of an uphill battle to climb in terms of being, you know, like, as liked or in, in a way that she could be, like, adversarial to Indy and you'd still like her. And right out of the gate, <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> so, um... Not great. Not great. <laughs> And there isn't have a, any likable or humorous moments, and it's like throughout the whole movie, she's trying to convince herself really hard and the audience that she's this cutthroat capitalist, and that's all that matters. The cold even... hard maths, and it's like, <laughs> who's who's like this? This is. Does it make you a capitalist like... if you only care about money and you steal it from people? That's what makes you a capitalist now. <laughs> it's like okay, that's an interesting point of view you got there. That's such oh, a yeah. please clap joke. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely <laughs> cringe. So, uh, what, what's kind of funny about this scene is that, uh, they all have guns, but none of them shoot Indy, so you'd be like, oh, well, they don't want him dead, of course. It's like, well, it's weird, uh, Boyd Holbrook goes to shoot Indy later. Yes. Um, so I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. I don't understand. Uh, it's Indy... also first very, very, very clear evidence that Harrison Ford is not up to any part of this role. No, anymore. no. It's, it's so... At one point, so, like, he, he's trapped on some of the stairs, isn't he, and they're all sort of closing in on him and he's looking panicky and he's tried to get away he's thrown over a bookshelf i think and that's about it he's hobbled up some stairs like a very old person mm -hmm. and then cia woman approaches him slowly and says we're not going to hurt you yeah and it's like, this is how <laughs> you speak to someone with dementia we're gonna bring you back like to your it. home and then we'll tuck you in i'm gonna go back to the hospital did you know that you did murder the guy with crutches though yeah, that was about to say. He pushes over a bunch of things, and the guy with crutches goes, ah, gets squished. And it's like, what the fuck was all of that? Why did you have man with crutches just to crush him? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> like, Poor guy. Wade! That's all I could think of. Uh, his name was probably Agent Wade. That's yeah. all I remember him. Um, yeah, so well, Indy gets out somehow, avoids all of them with that little move, and she starts going across the rooftops. Now, uh, you might think, well, she's younger. They might be able to actually film some action with her, even if it is like with a double or whatever. Um, did any of you notice they have a moment where she realizes, oh no, I can't just jump across this rooftop. It's actually a decent, like maybe two meter <laughs> distance. I'm gonna have to do a run up and jump across. This is gonna be intense. What a what a crazy stunt. The kind of thing that Tom Cruise would be staring at you for a while, like what? <laughs> what do you mean? Um, That's a stunt. That's like, how I got here. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, she. She doesn't have much of an action movie hero kind of run. No. Oh, like, no, it's really awkward. It. Oh, oh and, gangly um, British woman action she's, star. She, right? Lanky is the word for her. She is super yeah. lanky. Like, uh, so tall, it doesn't proportion well, and so she sort of seems like Slender Man trying to run in the Olympics or something. It's just not quite right. <laughs> So, yeah, she's got this gap to cross, she's like, Phew, and the music's like, oh shit, can she do it? She backs up. We cut to the POV of some guy in an alley, and in the background, like, fucking a mile in the distance, you can see a silhouette crossing over the two buildings. A CGI <laughs> Phoebe Waller Bridge. I, can't, I was like, are you... <laughs> you... I don't even remember the... It wasn't the, even the a difficult up. stunt. No offense, Phoebe, but, like, it's, it's not hard to be able to jump a distance like that, is it? 
I don't even remember the, the, the run up. For me, it just kind of looked like she was standing and then just jumped. The, my point, I, much I, of meant, a I don't know thing. if it, there's like a physical run up. I guess what I mean is that the film itself is making a big moment of like, can she cross oh, this yeah, gap? Yeah, yeah. This is going to be a significant one. She loses the, the people as a result of it, right? So it's, it's a big deal. We just mm -hmm. harsh cut to far away so that we can't possibly <laughs> yeah. make out what's happening. It's like, fuck me. That's yeah, lazy. Just a few instances of the editing being really bizarre. Yes. Um, however, we get this might be the first thing I like in the whole movie. I can't remember. Um, Indy is like, you know, leaving the university, but he stumbles across the bodies from the people who've been killed, his co workers, and he actually takes a moment to, I guess, mourn them. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's nice. They don't do that in yeah. films usually. They're just like, whatever, dead right. people, bye. Well, yeah, yeah. it does go yeah. wrong quite quickly afterwards because doesn't he then call the yes. police and he tells yeah. the police exactly what's happened and then yeah. someone points a gun at him. And he puts the phone down, and the police never show up because it's presented as though having the gun pointed at him means that he didn't make oh, the call we just saw him make. And those think, were the CIA guys. Well, so I think I think I'm pretty. I imagine that what we're meant to pull from that is that later on that's the reason why they blame him or suspect him of doing it. The police. The, the camera hangs possible. on the blood on the the telephone. Uh, and I think it is supposed to imply like this is how they'll frame him. Which, by the way, that all resolves like without uh, this is jumping they, super far ahead. Like, yeah, they drop yeah, that. Yeah, uh, there's, no they, there's no there's no resolution. They nope, don't it, it at all. Comes back to America later at the end of the film, and it's all fine. It's, oh yeah, it's, it's right. awful. <laughs> He's the guy yeah. who called the police to report the murders, and he tells the police there's been a murder when he sees them in the street later on. And I, I, I think it would be hard. I understand what you mean about the the blood hand, the hand, the bloody handprint. Sorry, on the phone. But given that he's reported it directly to the police twice himself, I think it would strain credulity to say they would think that he was the one in. Exactly. Absolutely. Eighty year old. Uh, they find out war hero, hero archaeologist, professor. Like, There's no motive. It make any sense. sense. He totally did it. Yeah. He just went nuts. I guess dementia. After he retired. Yeah, dementia. <laughs> dementia <laughs> three. <laughs> Drama. But yeah, it is like one of those rare moments because it's it's something that's strange. It feels like recently in particular in the last, you know, five, ten years or so that movies have forgotten to have characters acknowledge when other normal people like civilians or otherwise just good people like die and that it's sad. Like yeah. a lot of the time their deaths will just be ignored because they weren't major characters, they weren't important characters, so why would the protagonist care? Well yeah, and it's and just like an Phoebe Waller Bridge's character is the type to do that. She would run past and be like lol. Yeah, she, well, because she's uh, busy idiots. being a Marvel uh, action hero them. movie character, whereas Indy is still, like, kind of a character. So it's nice to have that as, like, a moment of him recognizing that something bad has happened here and getting a little bit emotional over it. There's like a I couple said, of it's... moments, like, out throughout the film where it's, like, these we these almost out-of-place glimpses of, like, oh, wow, that's, like, kind of storytelling. Yeah, and that's what I meant uh, in the sort of intro, that there are these pieces that, normally speaking, they're just things that would be in here. Like, why wouldn't they be? But we rarely get them in movies this bad, and so when they do, I'm like, oh, good, look, look, a piece. Tiny little <laughs> yeah. lake. <laughs> that's nice. Anyway, back to the <laughs> shit. So, uh, yeah, Helena's just, she's on the ground floor now. She's, well, I guess she's made into the parade. I don't know, I guess she went down a ladder or something. I don't know, I don't really care, but she's spotted. Or something, I don't know. And um, the agent lady, she's like, you fucking trigger happy cracker idiot. Like, you, you, I, I was just like, this is funny. <laughs> they, they, they will not allow slurs in the other direction in this film. The, the age rating's way too low for that. But it's just like, what do you think some, a Nazi being called a cracker by a black woman would do? Like, he's an actual full on Nazi. He, he, he goes crazy by the end of the film in terms of how far he wants to go for that shit. Mm hmm. But the film's never gonna be able to portray like what he would do or what he would say. Oh no! Right. Yeah. But they want to play with like that dynamic. It's just like, all right. And he um, just goes. Yeah. Mm, okay. yeah he goes. Mm, mm. Mm. Um. So they captured Jones because he was uh, on the phone, obviously, and he says like, "You're CIA," and then he, and then Boyd is in the background. He goes, "Not me, bad." I was just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> See, I wouldn't take a government job, I think, is the line, isn't it? Yeah. But, like, no but it, also, just before then, they, they put a hood on him to take him out of the place he works, and then they take <laughs> the hood off of him as soon as they get into the van. So he's got a hood on him for about five seconds of inconsequential uh -huh. journey time. You're right, And yeah. then they've removed it again. And I'm pretty sure there was a window in that van? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see, you can see is, out the yeah. front window, the side window. I, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, and then, yeah, she's like, did you give her the dial? And he's like, lady, it's an ancient hunk of gears, which I thought was a really uh, overcompensating line. It's like, you have no idea why they want that. Mm -hmm. It could be anything. It doesn't, it's not because they might think it travels through time. It doesn't have to be that. Um, so it, it felt more meta, like we're, we're pushing the whole idea of like, it ain't going to travel through time. That's like ridiculous. And then in the end, it's like, oh, what it does. What? Yeah. So then the stupidest fucking bullshit happens. They can't go uh, into a main street because the parade is there. And they can't go back because some taxi is now driven right up to the back of them. It's like, <laughs> it's like uh, how did that happen? Basically, they're <laughs> like, there's no way to solve this. We're going to have to walk Indy through the parade now. Like, oh, you, all you have to do is tell the taxi guy to fuck off. And then it's like, yeah, but we accidentally bumped him, so now he's angry and he's gotten out of his thing. And he's like, yeah, but you got guns. You're the CIA. <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you mean? Move the car, I get him in, and go in with him. Fuck me. And then reverse the car, and then you, you're fine, because Indy's captured in a vehicle. But no, they bring him out into the, into the parade. So and this is a different parade as well. So you've got, on the one hand, you've got the Moon Day Parade, which is right. going on. This one is the anti-war parade that's happening at exactly the same time. In exactly oh, right. The same yeah, that's place true. Because that's that, true. Then it's a huge <laughs> amount of sense. Um, and, but this is, this is a weird one as well, because I'm, I'm, I was trying to think back through all of the pre previous films, even Crystal Skull, and to see whether or not anything in those films intrudes on, like, what is real-world documented history. Because, I mean, the line's actually used in this film later on, you shot up a televised parade. And I, I don't think there is anything in the other ones. Like, all of the major action sequences are very secret. They're over in deserts or in, like, mm -hmm. mountains or somewhere else. So no one's really watching. So you can kind of suspend disbelief and say, yeah, this could actually have happened at the time it's said to have happened. It's not, but it's now not we're, like a story. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's kind of like, it's kind of a, yeah, you could imagine that it happened in our world, these adventures with these sort of myths as opposed to this, where it's like... This Nazis has to plus CIA crazy. plus famous war hero archaeologist are in gunfight, horse fight, motorbike chase through Moon know. Day Parade <laughs> television <laughs> in 1969. Like, I think that might have been noticed. <laughs> might have been. Just you think? Bit. Crazy. Uh, uh, so, in the middle of the parade, Harrison Ford, he starts going, hell no, we won't go. Hell no, we won't go. And then other people start chanting it, and then he just punches one of the guards, punches the other one, and runs away. And I just, I, I was just like, what, what did the hell no we don't go have to do with that? He could have just hit him anyway. Like, people chanting that has got nothing to do with anything. <laughs> I, thought they were, I actually thought they were going to have, like, the protesters save him. Yeah, you know, like, I thought that was what he was going for, but that doesn't happen. Yeah, it doesn't happen. And then, because he's a genius, Boyd Holbrook just shoots his gun into the air and everyone screams and crouches, revealing where Jones is, because he's not going to crouch. And I was just like, and none of the police did anything. Yeah, th there are police posted here, but they're also civilians who are more than willing to fucking tackle a person who's just shooting into the air. Yeah. That's a thing that happens. There's a whole crowd surrounding him. You tell me not one person was like, a lot of people. Uh, that guy's got a gun. Hippies. <laughs> <They're all laughs> you pussy. <laughs> Um, yeah, he goes to shoot Indiana, and then the aged lady stops him, and you're just like, what is, what is the goal, guys? What are you doing? The goal and is yeah, to um, get watch minutes, or, or pad as much time, so when it goes on a streaming service, they get as many watch minutes as oof. possible. He gets to the cop, and there's a second cop, Indy's explaining the situation to the guy, and then Boyd Holbrook sees the second cop, and he's just like, ah, oh, fuck it, and punches him out. And at this point, you're just like, okay, so you've murdered several people, you're assaulting police officers, you're in the middle of <laughs> public, so like, screwed. how how is this happening? What's gonna happen to this character? Um, he gets a he gets an interesting end, let's put it that way. It's not gonna involve anything in this timeline, though. Mm -mm. So, um, yeah, he gets on a horse, Indy, and he's chased by uh, Lloyd Holbrook on a motorbike, and if you've seen the trailer, the... It's so awkward how they try to paste Indy's old face onto whoever the stunt guy is who's riding that horse. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, it's just, it just doesn't look good. It looks so shitty. Uh, and and the close up shots, are the close-up shots where it looks like he's running in front of a volume or something? Yeah. It's like pretty bad. I don't know what it is. They've, they've, they've gotten so much worse with incorporating those sorts of effects. I'll have to compare, but I'm guessing the CG in Crystal Skull, which wasn't great in the first place, isn't much worse than this. It, it's it's really you know, busy. It's 
bad. The part where Sheila Booth is swinging through the forest like Tarzan probably probably doesn't hold up well in terms of CG probably either. Not. But, you know. <laughs> You know the yeah, and the jeep scenes are in the jungle too. Or, I actually yeah. watched it yesterday. It does not hold up well. It's Me and Fringy rewatched it. It was awful. awful. Mm -hmm. uh, but this this is a different kind of awful because it does. You know, I don't know how much was in the volume or not, but it just again, it looks super busy, and and mm -hmm. fake, and 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 it it just looks like they copy and pasted the same twelve people doing random things over and over again and uh and, and maybe there was more to it but it didn't look that way it didn't look that way in the theater at all I, it just looked like a bunch of color shit yeah for the, so so much like spielberg does not direct like this so like i i think mangold kind of gave up on the impression later on and had to just go to tricks of the trade to kind of cover up all the CGI, all the volume, the fact that like Harrison Ford's barely in this movie. It's mostly a body double that they're pasting a face on. Yeah. Uh, and the horse scene in the freaking subway was just unnecessary, dumb. I know what they were trying to do, but they didn't pull it off. And it, it just ends. It ends. It, this movie gets dumber and de more depressing as time goes on, especially when Gary, we the, the train of the future progress and technology is about to slam into Indy while he's riding away on his horse. Yep, exactly. I, mm -hmm. I live in the countryside and there's a fair few horses around. And so if you ever go for a walk, just like random country lane, you'd round a corner, there's a horse. The horse is more likely than not to get scared shitless of you and collapse into a bush because they are really, really stupid and cowardly creatures. You cannot ride a horse at full pelt directly at an oncoming train and hope to survive. That's just not going to happen. Oh, Good. it's like the horse has no brain. It has no self-preservation <laughs> instincts. It's just, it's just a mindless slave that's going to willingly put itself in that kind of peril. Well, you can no. tell they were going for that like outrageous factor, like a horse in a subway. Whoa! Oh, but, what uh, a clashing it, of eras. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of it's CG. So like, if you're gonna do something like that, you need to do it practical, like uh, True Lies, where they had the horse on the roof. For the well, yeah, building. You, just, you don't buy any of it. It all looks fucking fake. I'm sorry. Remember, it's just like, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. It's Remember when they had a horse on the Death Star? <laughs> 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 that looked real. That looked real great. Yeah. Tilt the fucking death. He loses the, the Star Destroyers. Fucking idiots. And then, of course, another eye-rolling moment of luck where he's riding down the tunnel and there's a gap in the wall. Right where and he it's needs like, to it's be. It's not yeah. even just, yeah, it's not even just that the wall runs out. It's like there's just a gap there for no reason other than the screenplay needs him to jump through a thing so he can escape. Well, it's and it's like uh, great gap here. Thank God it's that wall instance. gap was there. Awesome. Absolute luck. If the trains were like a couple of seconds, you know, further ahead or further back, he'd be fucking. He'd yep. be dead. It's funny because you yeah. mentioned in the luck. I actually thought you were going to reference the fact that he gets off the horse. All the CIA agents are in the train station that he eventually got to. They cut him off. It's like, oh, it's all over. And then he gets in the train, and the doors close right on the on the agents, yeah. so they can't get into it. It's like, oh, oh wow. Yeah, well, that too. Yeah. Again, he does have yeah, perfectly the horse timed. someone, though. And he does Glad say, that, hold my obviously. horse. That was funny. The thing God, is, is horse. in the old films, there are definitely instances of luck, but it's like we mentioned before, a lot of them are more like... Ca it, the luck doesn't mean anything without him seizing those opportunities compared to just, mm -hmm. damn, man, like if those trains were a couple of seconds ahead or late, that'd just be it for you. Like, Several there'd be nothing times, you yeah. can do. Yeah, it's... it's um, it's um, there's a lot of contrivance in this movie. A lot. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So then uh, Ola's doing like an interview and they're saying like, what's next for you since you've conquered space? And he's like, hmm. And the film is like, see, time, time. See, time, it's space, time. Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. Well, they say, no, because they say, well, what's next for you? Is it Mars? And he says, no, we've conquered space. Like, you really haven't. <laughs> you really <laughs> haven't. Mean, you've gone, you've gone to the moon. We've gone to the moon. finished space. You've conquered space. It's not like, it's not like there's like 99.999999999 our repeating. It's our literal satellite. It doesn't really count, does it? It's like... Well, it counts. It's really cool, but like, you haven't conquered space. What the fuck are you talking about? Not quite. Uh, yeah, and then and then he says, uh, "Charter a plane to Morocco," and we find out it's because he's made some form of a deal with Phoebe Waller-Bridge, and that's why he's he's heading now to get the dial from her? Question mark. That's what we'll next see him anyway. So, yeah. 
And there's even more questions there about, again, the relationship with the CIA and the US government, because he's scheduled to go and meet, it will be Nixon at the time, won't you, mm-hmm. to get a medal for, for helping man land on the moon. And he just basically says, no, nah, I'm not going. So he yeah. charges the plane to go. But it, like, can't the CIA stop him from I doing don't know. that? He's not I do not know. They end, up, they end up chasing him into Morocco and then extracting him, right? And they complain about that. Yeah. It's fucking weird, man. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, so Indy's trying to just hang around, and then there's a news report where it's like, Henry Jones is now wanted for murder. And some well, there's fucking, a man. <laughs> yeah, some hobo just turns up and he's like, that guy looks like you. <gasps> oh, wait, that guy is you. Hey, everyone, this is the murderer. This is the murderer. And then he gets punched out by Salah, and it's just like, what the f- did, did we invent so that weird. just to have Sala punch him? That's the only yeah, reason. Sure. We need to establish the fact that there is now a manhunt for for Indiana Jones, who has murdered two people. Oh no, no, three people because he killed the guy with crutches. So yeah. there's cops actively looking for him in places mm-hmm. now. Can, please, because I'm making a point here. Obviously, go ahead about. Well, it's about at the airport. <laughs> we'll get there. I just wanted to make sure everybody knows there is an active manhunt for Indiana Jones, but then he just kind of just walks around the street, goes back to Sala. <laughs> Come on, how can you off. expect them to remember all that? Some off in the you... front of a fucking airport and yells his name. Go give him hell, Indiana Jones! It's like, <laughs> no. you know, airport security was a little lax in 1969, but the, there's a manhunt for this guy right now. You would remember what? how many faces there are on Earth. You can't remember them all. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and it's which, so... um, which ranks worse, though, as a more contrived introduction? Is it Salah in this film or is it Lando in The Rise of Skywalker? Oh. Well, probably Lando, because gets... they just bump into Lando, right? Like, this at least Indy called Salah. That's the reason he's there. Lando was at Space Coachella. I mean, that's believable. But um, <laughs> it, yeah, like, at least we get some exposition from Salah here, you know? Yeah, Maybe. well, th- this scene, like, when he says, like, boy, am I glad to see you, Sala. I'm just sitting there sad. I was like, yep, that's the whole... You... <laughs> I like sad. that character, just leave me alone. <laughs> like, it's, it's like, what you want. Sala's um, a cab driver in New York now. Yep, that's... that's yep. And all he's, the, his contribution to the story is basically because Indiana Jones has no leads now, but he's a wanted man, so he's got to solve that. And he says... Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to find her. And then he says, if you run, they'll think you're guilty. And he says, without Helena and the dial, I'll get framed for murder. I yep. don't know how getting Helena and the dial would <laughs> exonerate him at all. What he needs to do... Murderer. I have the dial. It's like, I don't know what that is. Go to jail. Well, what's insane <laughs> is that, to be honest with you, he should be fine because he's going to get captured. Then oh, he's yeah. going to say the CIA are the ones that did all of this crazy shit. And then the CIA will have to be like, well... Yeah, kind of. <laughs> like it wasn't. I mean, we we worked with some people who murdered some people. It wasn't. I I actually watched it happen. The agent watched it fucking happen. It wasn't Indy. But you know, like he says, no, I need the like. What does having Helena in the dial do for his innocence? I don't know exactly. It the police are like, you killed these people. It's like, yeah, but I have the dial. Like what? Right. I don't understand. So have her testimony that, that, to back him up. Maybe. No, <laughs> it's not gonna do shit. It wasn't. It wasn't is she a witness to the fact that he didn't kill them? Is that the idea? And would they believe her? Because well, that's the she thing. She's his goddaughter. She could just be lying. I don't think they, they think they're gonna go want to go. I I don't know. It's it. One of my favorite parts is when Solo goes on the internet and finds out that there's a in Morocco. There's some kind of auction. I don't know how he found out any of this information in 1969. Yeah, he says uh, she was arrested a year ago for auctioning contraband, uh, and she was bailed out by Aziz Rahim, who was the son of Big Rahim, who's a Moroccan mobster who owns a hotel that's hosting an auction right now, or at least tomorrow or whatever, for stolen stuff, and she's going to be there. It's like, wow. (laughs) How did you find that out? (laughs) He basically summarized all the exposition you need for the next hour of the film. It's like, fucking hell. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's just a Google away. <laughs> the Google doesn't exist, but it's a Google away. Yep. Um, yeah, and he gave him, he gives him his hat and his whip as well, because obviously Indy would die without those things. That's how yep. that works. They're like a double health bar. Yeah, and then he does the thing from the fucking trailer. Well, at first he says, I miss waking up every morning wondering what adventure will bring us or what adventure we're going to go on. And I was just thinking to myself, like, you know... Last Crusade and Raiders, they're not like things that happened every day. <laughs> Those yeah. are pretty enormous events. Like, 
but he, he's also prepared to go because he says I bought my passport as well. So he gives him mm. his hat, gives him the whip, says I also bought my passport because I want to go on another adventure. And he says it's not going to be an adventure, even though it, it absolutely is. Yeah, he says those days um, are over. Yeah, but I mean they're not because right. you're, you're literally <laughs> going to Morocco to fight some Nazis. So quite clearly you're still involved in some adventures. But I mean, you know, Salah has turned up with his passport as well, and in the end he just kind of says, "Yeah, all right, I won't come." But I don't. Like, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you go? Surely you would go. It feels Everything like you've he... said suggests you would go. And I think it would be in character for him to go if his friend is wanted for murder and he's trying to prove that it's not true. But he can't go for meta reasons, right? We're not going to have Sala be a main character. We got Phoebe Waller Bridge to take up the time and fucking Teddy. Or, or maybe find a fake passport and put him in a disguise because they put the wanted murder <laughs> in front of the fucking airport and yelled his name. It is so funny that he just says, give him hell, Indiana Jones, right here, murder a man. And then uh, they <laughs> undercut it, too, with the, the car nearly hits him, and he's like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. Jokes. Funny. Mm -hmm. I remember good jokes. They're not in this movie, but, you know. They're somewhere. Somewhere. So we get another flashback. Hooray. It's just that uh, Toby Jones lost his mind, and he asked that Indy destroy the dial. Indy didn't destroy the dial. Because this, this, is, shit. It's, it's, this is another bit that may have confused me, because I don't think I was paying enough attention, because it's this film. But mm -hmm. didn't yeah. he already have the dial in his possession? I think He was obsessed with the dial. He tells Indy that if he's going to get both parts, he has to... Why didn't he destroy the dial himself? Don't question. know. I think he was going to, and Indy stops no him. He, the scene starts with him with like a hammer and he's going to destroy it. And then he's like, yeah. what are you doing? And then it's like, well, wait. What, okay. Why do you think D D Indy's going to destroy it if he's preventing you from destroying it? Like, That's right. So it belongs in a museum. He's taken yeah. it off you before you've destroyed it. He says he might find the other half. And then you say, well, if you find the other half, make sure you destroy it. And Indy mm. says, yep, I'll do that. It belongs in a museum, but I'll but definitely destroy it. But then instead of putting it. it into a museum, he just puts it in his little drawer. At the yeah, he doesn't even put it in a museum. You're right. Yeah. It's what a so piece of fucking shit. weird. Dick. <laughs> dick. They just make um, him, yeah, they make him a total dick in this. Such a it's, dick. Yes, yeah, he, just, uh, he chooses the thing friends. that dissatisfies everyone. I'm definitely going to do these things. Anyway, and now, I'm not going to do I'm any of those. Off, I'm going to fuck off and never see you again and not do what I said. Yeah. So, uh, um, there's a shot here that I genuinely was like, did someone fuck up in the editing or is this just the, really the way they wanted it, right? So it begins with, the flashback begins with uh, current day Indiana Jones is sitting there looking at uh, notes and numbers and stuff from, I think, Toby Jones stuff. And he looks over at the window, he sees a reflection of himself, and then we move into it and it, it like moves into the flashback, right? Like, it's a pretty yeah. harsh cut. You you thought that maybe they would try and sync it, but it's like, okay, you know, that's just, he's, he's reminiscing, fine. The scene ends, the flashback, I mean, with, uh, there's a shot where a uh, young Phoebe Waller-Bridge has walked up to the car to give him his hat because he forgot it. It's a very clean shot of her and the window. Then it cuts over to him saying, like, you know, I'll call you when I land, or something like that. It's a couple seconds. Then harsh cut to the airplane with Phoebe Waller-Bridge looking at the the window with a reflection of her younger self in it. And I was like, wait, so why did you have that extra couple of seconds of Indy getting the car ready and leaving when you want to match the shot of her looking through the car window with the airplane window. I was like, editing-wise, surely you'd want to phase it so that that's it, and then she's looking at her younger self. Wouldn't that make way more sense and be less clunky? I was, I was a little bit confused by it. I thought it was like... It looked almost as if that's the way it was, and then someone changed it. And that's keep a... in mind, they had extra time with this movie. It was supposed to come out a while ago, along with a lot of other movies, and they delayed it uh, due to, quote-unquote, COVID. And they were able to do a bunch of reshoots. Well, and they probably... Did a bunch of pickups, and uh, you know, maybe there is something to spending too much uh, yeah. time on it. Yeah, you know? when he cooks in the kitchen, sort of situation. But there's also <clears throat> they had to spend that fucking three hundred million somehow. I never would have guessed this. Like, what would it cost to make a film that you see it, uh, uh, this thing? I'd be like, no way. How the fuck did you waste that much money on this? Three hundred million. For, oh god. Three hundred million, and uh, others have pointed this out. Like, oh. the June two is was one hundred and twenty two million. <laughs> which so. comes across as an enormous brand new world that they've created while here it's just like mm -hmm. how could you possibly have spent that much money they had a lot of time with the script too also because of yeah. covid like production was halted and but it's so like contrived and devoid of humor like you had all this time to work on it come on what are mm. um like insurance costs like if your lead actor is 95 years old 
<laughs> Probably slight less, a little bit more than Robert Downey Jr. in Iron Man when they couldn't injure him, but uh, probably a lot. So, he, uh, with that information from Sala, he arrives at the hotel. She's already selling the Dial of Destiny at the moment he arrives, so that means that if he was five minutes later, he might yeah, have been fucked forever. Been they do that so much in this movie, but yep. you just, just arrive at the, at the right time. And then all the factions that are involved in this movie always happen to be at the exact thing they need to be at all the time. It's so distracting. It's like, oh, they went that way. Oh, guess we'll go there too. How did you get there? Uh, the, the, shut up. Mm -hmm. It's like always like this weird thing where they... I mean, it's later when he looks at through through through, through the uh, what they call binoculars. It's like they're not going in this direction. That shit is so, so funny. They that don't. He clumsy, knows exactly yeah. where they are. It's like what? <laughs> well, you know, uh, we're at the like near hour mark. I think of the film at this point. And yes, right. You know what happens at the near hour mark in in Crusade is is uh, you get Sean Connery added to the cast. This mm. you get Teddy. He's he's added to the cast now. You, you get shorter, rounder. -er. Shit short round, basically. Um, yeah. For anybody who like doesn't remember, if you rewatch Temple of Doom, short round's pretty cool. He's, there's a reason he why is. everyone likes him. He's pretty cool. He is um, far more memorable than Teddy. He's a uh, he's a child character in what feels more like an adult adventure movie that isn't annoying and cringe. Like that's what short round is. He right. set the bar a little bit. He's actually like useful. He has some funny jokes, and there's a bit of a meaningful relationship between him and Indy. Teddy is just terrible. I don't like him. He's annoying, <laughs> and he's only there to uh, either complains or facilitates action. Particularly, like his moments. introduction is like, I have this paper mache plane, and have this random pilot guy tell me a thing. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, you're going to fly a plane later. That's all yeah. you're here for. I know yeah. exactly what you're doing. So it was a what it a was, bizarre scene. It was by the, the reverse way. for me when I saw him playing with that pretend plane setup i was like what in the fuck is this why would they what is that for and then as soon as yeah. he's like can you fly a plane i was like oh come on yeah like, yeah no I, think, I think i was in this way. i was in the same camp as metal it's like oh he's gonna fly a plane it's gonna yep. be like uh you know how like in 2012 good old gordon mm. like he that's just what he's there for it's like well we mm -hmm. need someone to be able to fly the plane um but hey it's it's chekhov's weird thing is like contraption that masquerades <laughs> as a, a plane like controls yeah. the thing is they don't need someone who can fly a plane because there's a guy sleeping in the plane who wakes up to fly the plane <laughs> like, that's, that's yeah. just the random yeah. guy as well and then of course there is the fact that just because you learned how to fly a plane with sticks really archaic, and dials eight contraptions doesn't mean that you can perfectly fly a plane through a massive storm and you're then learning it as well engines. you're learning it as well from a pilot who's drinking yeah and, yes, and he's yeah, giving you random does. bits of information exactly oh he's like, so annoying. what does he do the, with the all end... that stuff the 99.9 .9 of the times when there isn't a pilot sitting there drinking did you just sit there waiting for a pilot to turn up well, so well, yes, i can use my kit now that's the finally thing. has he got a briefcase a filled with all these stupid little things and he just sets them up wherever he goes to play pretend a plane and hopes pilots turn up is that actually what he does <laughs> i don't know it happens every day there in morocco pilots just go through and you know yeah. It should also mention that he is apparently supposed to be there to guard the door. <laughs> that was so fucking dumb. Dude, you know when he you stops in the big Indy? guy on that one door? He's well, like, no, no, no. Okay, let's go through the other door then, I guess. He, he stands up to Indy and he's like, this is invite only. I was like, if Indy doesn't push past this little shit right now, I swear to God. <laughs> <Yeah>. like... <laughs> and he does. But thank fuck. It's also revealed, though, that she's paid off the police in the bar. So you think, well, why aren't they guarding the entrance? Why have you just I don't know if, this to a tiny child. I got a vague impression she might have been lying. I'm not sure. Was she just saying that to say that, or is it true? That's I one thought of it was things. true. I thought it was too, but like you're not sure because like, the police so come after her quite hard, um, and the, those guys she apparently paid off don't help her in the fight. Uh, Little Platoon mentioned the sound mixing is freaking terrible in this mm -hmm. movie. Like, it's terrible, and and it adds to the confusion. So, because we know that Indiana Jones films are known for shitty sound mixing, bad editing, confusing plots. Oh, they're not. Oh, oh they're... wait. <laughs> wait a minute. Oh, they're very. Yeah. That's the thing. Indiana Jones films are very straightforward. This one was confusing. Like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Remember, we still got the CIA is still involved in the plot. 
Somehow, yes. Somehow. <laughs> They're still around. They're doing things. Question mark. Um, oh, yeah, th this is another line really annoyed me. Uh, Indy's like, this auction is over. And then she goes, au contraire, it's hardly begun. I was just like, what yeah. do you mean? What, was that for the trailer? <laughs> like, what the fuck was that line? Yeah. It just, it, she tries so hard to be a, a movie star in this. It's like, I beg you to stop. Have any level of subtlety. I, it, it'd be nice, that's all. It's one of those moments as well that did make me slight, well, no, I won't say reconsider the Crystal Skull because it is still shit, but it did at least make the Crystal Skull look better. If you compare her introduction to Mutt's and what their characters can do and how they interact with Indiana Jones, Mutt is, he, you know, he's talented in terms of physicality, he's headstrong, he's brash, he's an idiot, but he can hold his own, sometimes to a fault. Um, but because he doesn't really know anything, he reads books, but he doesn't read the right ones, it's left to Indy to play the mentor figure. He has a very clearly established role, and the film lets him take the lead in virtually everything they do, because Mutt has not got any experience with this kind of thing. Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character, by contrast, she is physically competent, but she's also very clever. She's also very witty. She already knows everything he already knows, which basically forces him into the backdrop of every scene that they share together, whereas in that one, at least he could still hold the mentor position. Um, and it's it's just it's such a basic thing that even Crystal Skull got it right, and this one didn't. Yeah, I, yeah. I'll I'll give you that. that there's there's stuff in Crystal Skull to point out, even if it's small about mm. characterization and physicality as well, like in a good way for people like Mutt versus him, and that they they bounce off each other in a more equal format than this, where she's just like, well, to give you an example, she says, um, "I like your hat, by the way. Makes you look at least two years younger." And it's oh. just like, why do you speak like you're from 2023 and that you're in a horrible... Like, you, she knows she's in a horrible Indiana Jones sequel. Well, it's she, like she's, she's performing for the audience. Horrible. Yeah. Really annoying. <clears throat> yeah, oh god, it's, this is what I mean. It just doesn't stop, because he's like, um, you want to explain this to the cops out front? She says, the ones I paid off, you're out of your depth, Jonesy. Fucking hell. <laughs> And like you have him go Jonesy, and and to me it's just like yeah man, oh, what the fuck, what what is this? Stop, just stop talking. I fucking beg of you. It seems like the filmmakers were thinking the audience at moments like that would be like, I love this character. <laughs> she's yeah. so sassy and like <laughs> <She's> so <laughs> sassy, yeah, exactly. sassy. <laughs> she's she she doesn't take shit from anybody. Yeah. yeah. That's a strong, powerful woman right there. <laughs> yeah, and so exactly. then uh, like shitty. she's oh, like, God. I'm the criminal. He's wanted for murder. Nice big picture in the New York Herald. Yes. And I'm like, why do you that's speak really, this way? That's, that's really three, bad. I don't like you. Stop it. There's three times they remind you that Indiana Jones is wanted <laughs> for murder. <laughs> and they, and they don't talk about it's That's after it's mentioned for the third time, there's no resolution with that at the end of the movie. Sorry to get ahead, but they they don't like they're, they're, he's just at home, and then well, fucking... this is another instance as well of like weird tone. Why uh, we're meant to like this character who finds it hilarious that Indiana Jones is being pursued for a crime he didn't commit, the victims of which were people he knew. And it's like innocent oh, ha, people, ha, funny, funny. Yeah, like who the fuck is that? Innocent people who died where they may not have had she not been interested in selling the dial. Hey. Exactly. So I mean, yep. she's a she's a twat, but the film doesn't know. Well, the film doesn't recognize that that's what's happening. It doesn't understand the implications of this dialogue. No. If you Just, remove uh, Helena Shaw from Dial of Destiny, uh, a lot of people will live. Yeah. yeah, and the film would be like fucking forty minutes long at that point, which would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um. So, yeah, Indy's like, this is my dial. And then you have Vola from the back is just like, no, actually, this is mine. And I was like, thank fuck the Nazis are here. Like, you know, just improve the story, please. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, he, uh, Indy's like, wait, are you still a Nazi? And he's like, no, I'm from Alabama University. My name is Schmidt. And it's very convincing. Uh, and then he's, yeah, this is the thing from the trailer. It's like, this is uh, my property. And he's like, no, it's not. You stole it. And then he's like, yeah, but then you stole it. And then she says, I stole it after that. And it's called capitalism. <laughs> oh. Uh -huh. oh, man. I, I, I thought the whole point of Cow was you, you buy it, not steal it. But uh, sure, whatever. You do you. Mm -hmm. Plenty of criticisms that can be fun to levy against any economic system. But this one just felt like, a, again, 2023 injection. Uh, do I get points for saying this? She looks right at the screen. She's like, huh? Eh? Eh? 
saying yeah. this. He gets points for saying this. Okay, all right. And so, yeah, coming from yeah. Disney of all companies, it's, like, <laughs> it's always it's funny gross. coming from them. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> Come on. So then everyone gets mad and everyone's getting tossed around and the dials like bouncing from different characters. It's one of those types of scenes that they're completely trying to recreate where it's like, oh, now he has it. Oh, now he has it. Yeah. Bola gets it and just goes into an elevator and leaves. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like I'm done with this shit. I'm out yeah. of here. Um, there's this shot. I don't know if you guys caught it. I thought it was funny as fuck where um, Boyd Holbrook is like trying to, I guess, hold Indy. Indy like moves and then punches him in the face and it just cuts to him flinging across the whole room and into a wall. I was like, holy fuck, did he just punch him with the, like the power of the Hulk? Uh, that happens a lot to him. He just gets abused in this film and then dies. Like that's his, like I said, it was really weird for them to hire Boyd Holbrook for the whole movie just for that. Uh, you don't see that very often. You expect, um, you know, like the actor who's playing the Chungus guy, like I don't know him, but that makes sense, right? He's like the muscle. He doesn't say anything throughout like the whole film. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of actor you expect they grab for those roles. It's just, um, yeah. And I think as he's leaving, Vola says, uh, "See you in the past, Doctor Jones," which I was just like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> <laughs> That's a line. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so then the police arrive, and our characters are, uh, essentially captured by them. It's like, it's looking to be all over, and then, um, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, he, he says, tell them to put their guns down, tell them to back off, and she says, I told them to shoot you. Yeah. Wow. And again, it's like, fuck me, what the hell? Yeah. Give Does me the, something the to like keeps, this character. The movie <laughs> keeps thinking she's so much fun, it's like, no, she's an awful human being, what do you mean? Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, the, the image on screen right now, that is from that scene. And uh, yes, Indy is as bewildered in that poster as he is throughout the whole movie, pretty much. Uh -huh. That's not the face you want to see on him, but hey, why not? That is kind of the resting face he has throughout this entire film. I agree. Uh, before they leave the building is one of the dumbest fucking shots. They used it in the trailer, too, where they all point their guns at Indiana Jones, right? Mm -hmm. And then yep. he ducks. And they all fire their guns, and they break, shatter the window behind him, and they're still shooting at the window. Yeah, like they yeah. don't like point down to where he's no. ducking, and it's just like this is stupid. This looks stupid on its face. Like, yeah, it was supposed to be uh, a very, very clever inversion of the shot with the swordsman in um in Raiders. So obviously, yeah. and in that one, he's waving his sword around, and Indy pulls a gun and shoots him. And this one, Indy's waving his whip around, and they all pull guns on him nice. and go to shoot him. Except that they well, they then overegg that by just carrying on machine gunning a window yeah. for no very good reason. Well, it's, it's it's kind of interesting to point out as a, an inversion because the point of the original scene is that the gun wins that fight, whereas in this movie, it's like, well, no, but that's Indiana Jones, so he can't die here. <laughs> yep. All this gunfire. He but died a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> they used this shot in the trailer. I couldn't believe it. Like this is so dumb. Yeah, well, they and thought then, it like, was a really good joke. Clearly, they, they thought, thought it was, it was a good joke. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. I guess, yeah. And I think this is the last time that he uses his whip. It's for I think this you might be right. dumb oh, scene. You, yeah, yeah, you might be right. I mean, there, he uses it twice. Once, I think, on the roof of the train, uh, and yeah, then yeah. here in one of the dumbest scenes in the whole movie, and then he. Never again. I mean, he doesn't yeah, use he it to swing really, over a yeah. gap or like this. That's it. Well, yeah, it's something no more that's established really quickly in Raiders in that entire opening sequence is like multiple instances of him using the whip and not just as yeah. a weapon, but as a tool, like you said. Right. Oh, well. Yeah. Here, like swing over something, handy. swing over a chasm. Yeah. Like in the... the only reason it's here is because it's like, whoa, it's Indiana Jones and he has a whip, but we couldn't <laughs> think of any creative ways to employ the whip. <laughs> So no, fuck you, basically. To the web. <laughs> uh, so the police get scared off, and we're like, wait, what's happening? And it turns out the mob boss is here, and legit, at this point in the film, I was I so, heard. like, yeah. I was like, I'm gonna need to watch this twice to have any fucking understanding of what the <laughs> hell is going on. And, yeah, because uh, apparently that, that mob boss was sleeping with Hannah Shaw. Well, it's what, it's what Salah referenced. He gave her bail money, this guy, uh, and apparently, right. well, uh, I think um, uh, Indy says, what do you owe this guy? And she says, oh, just some bail money and a lifetime of happiness. Uh, oh. It's like, Ugh. There's even, um, the guy, I think the guy says, I was, I was sleeping, my father woke me up, he gave me a scimitar and told me to return with your head. And then she, the camera, like, tightens up on his fucking face and she goes, oh dear, does it have to be that bit? 
Uh, yeah. He's got a fucking knife Funny. to his throat. It's just like, I beg you to take it seriously but, uh, for one second. Because this will be this be this becomes apparent throughout the film in terms of the ways that they try to do jokes. In the old Indiana Jones films, there are like those films are pretty funny, um, but they're like situations where the characters are reacting to them in a manner that is reflective <laughs> of them being like human beings, um, like that they want to live or that they're scared or angry or whatever. Like it's it's always um, I feel like the clearest example of that would be um, you know how like uh, when uh, in Temple of Doom when he encounters those two guys with swords and he reaches for his gun and it's not there mm -hmm. and then he kind of like does a smirk and then then fights. It's not like he recognizes that he's in a movie and that this is a funny moment. It's funny to us as viewers, but to him it's like a situation he has to try and get his way out of. Whereas here it's like it's always it's like they know that they're in a movie being watched by an audience. Specifically like, for death, yeah. I'll, I'll say, like, his issues aren't, you know, like, Indiana Jones and the portrayal, like, we've been through all the issues with that. It's got nothing to do with him recognizing he's in a movie. She's got that in spades. That's, like, her primary fucking issue. It makes it really hard to take her seriously as an actress, because I... Uh, seriously, if I was, like, casting, I'd just be like, can you... Can you... I, I get it, can but... Yeah. Can you stop? Um, so then, uh, then they decide to run away, and they do it successfully. Like... All these people have guns, the guy wants to kill her, he has a knife on her, and then they just turn around and run. And avoid all the gunfire. It's it's one of the shittiest, quote-unquote, escapes from capture ever. <laughs> but the thing is, this movie, and that's one of the first things that you mentioned to me, Fring, when you saw it, was like, the amount of times characters get captured and released in this film for just any reason. Just like, huh. now you're captured, yeah. no you're not, now you are, no you're not, no you're not, no you're not. It just keeps happening over and over and over again. There's the the one that annoys me most is uh, Teddy later. That one is so fucking unforgivable. But it's it's all right. We'll uh, go about this incredible action scene. The chase begins, um, mm -hmm. but it begins with a little bit of a back and forth. One that we all really enjoy and saw a clip of. Some of us were lucky enough to see this clip uh, circling on Twitter. It's the uh, the one where he goes, uh, "I'm not gonna take." Uh, no, yeah, uh, uh, Indy says, "I'm not the one who's engaged to a monster," and then she says, "I don't need a morality lesson from an aging grave robber." He says, I'm not uh, a grave robber. Your father and I did important work. And she says, don't tell me your escapades were some noble, selfless quest. You did it for the buzz. He saved an entire village of children. Mm-hmm. Ugh. It's actually painful to listen to because that's essentially where it ends. We don't get more on that. We don't get anything nope. from... You You get to the point where you're just like, fuck, can we punch her in the face? Are we allowed? Or is that... <laughs> <laughs> is that cool? Can Please, we go do that? I beg you. It's, uh... Really annoyed to listen to as a person who obviously sees the other movies. They expect you to have seen the other movies when you're watching this, and just to listen to someone say all that shit, you're like, okay. Well, would know because like he's her godfather, so she probably knows about these stories. Well, yeah, and she should know from the notes, I guess, about all the things he's done in relation to like the sacrifices he's made, I guess. Yeah. And like how obviously it's he he could have made several choices along all of these adventures that would get him lots of money and more fame and whatever, but he, he ends up sacrificing elements of himself and of the treasures. Well, often he does that because I mean he laid the archetype for like what a lot of these action adventure stories did. like like Uncharted does it all the time where like the the treasure is something that they have to let go because it's cursed or it's not worth it, and it's mm. like where do you think that comes from? It's like Indiana Jones like set that up as an element. Right. Um, and then there's just the fact that he he does many obviously heroic things. I don't even know why she would make that kind of observation, especially if she knows who he is. Like he saved he saved thousands of children. <laughs> when it's like, funny, he says like you know I'm not the one engaged to a monster. It's like she is a monster, and Indy knows this already. He's got enough now. Like she's yeah. a, she's a horrible piece of shit, and it doesn't even make sense because her inspirations were her dad and Indiana Jones. Why the hell did she turn out to be such a fucking asshole? Yeah, and she's trying to convince everyone that she's a monster, too. And it's like, why? I'm, I'm really convinced. Well, yeah, <laughs> a little bit. You got me. Um, though, did anyone else uh, get almost thrown out of the whole fucking movie when, bear in mind logistics now, when they got down outside of the hotel, Vola was driving away. They were like, fuck. The police arrived, we did all of that. Then the mob boss arrived, we did all of that. Then they escaped mm -hmm. by running, get into a truck, turn a corner... And Indy goes, there Voler is, we got him. Like, yeah, like what the, that's actually they, just, they, that's the logistics. They, they cross a corner and Voler is just him. there. 
They yep. just keep doing it. They keep bumping into them, then losing them, then bumping into them in this yeah. massive city. This massive, and, very populated city. And then Fallout just looks up the thing and just, I guess he just assumes that's Indy yeah. and, and her. Like, there's no way he could see that. He's like, go, go quicker. Ah. It's like, Which is yeah, weird, right? Get off. Because he should have assumed they'd be following him anyway, and now he's yeah. like, "Oh no, go faster!" He's like, "Shouldn't you been going faster?" What? You also can't see them. It's no, like, you can't. No, it's like a random one of these. I don't even know what you call these tri tricycle thingies. They lose him but, again, right? Yeah, they start going down different pathways. They got cars following them. They find a pathway that's not too small that they can't get through, but definitely too small for other cars. They go through. They head down this huge staircase, and there's this cut. With the, the little car they're in is going across it, and it's, it would clearly tilt so far forward it would just roll down the entire thing. Then editing yeah. saves them; and they go back to all four wheels being on the ground. It's like mm -hmm, editing yeah, sure. saves them, yeah. And, and you, you skip over the incredible part where the, the, what's her name just talks about how awesome she is in the middle of the chase. That, yeah. yeah, that's not <laughs> yet. That's after this. Oh, is that afterward? Damn, yeah, yeah. Mix them up. <laughs> Don't worry, cringe is on the way. The audience. Um, <laughs> just on the way. So they yeah. they crash it, right? And then those two see Vola drive past them. Like, like they went on. a completely different direction. They fell down this whole staircase, and then Vola's just like, here I am again. It's like fucking Scooby Doo. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you just don't care anymore. It's funny as well because uh, she's she offers to drive, and he's like, I know Tangier. It's like you don't need to know it. You just it just turns out you keep bumping into him anyway. But yeah, uh, they get out and get into their own little vehicle. He resets the one they're in, so now they've got the two of them, and they're both catching up to Vola, and that's when they have the back and forth where uh, he says... That, I mean, the line you were referencing, I'm trying to... Because I've got a couple quotes here. Hang on. Fucking... All of this seems so annoying, and you realize as you're watching it, like, this is supposed to match up to some of the best action scenes in Indiana Jones. This is supposed okay. to be... It's such a joke. Also, I guess yeah. the, the, the fucking cars can't... Shouldn't the, the cars be faster than these three... Yes. ...tricycle thingies? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I can't wait for, like... Not even close. Remember from, remember from uh, uh, Top Gear when Jeremy Clarkson was riding the three-wheel thing? <laughs> yeah. Kept on turning the corner and falling over. Kept, kept falling over. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he says, Would your father be proud of this? His only daughter selling her soul for bail money. And then I think she says, like, oh, you make it sound awesome or something. I was just like, well, why? Sell your soul for money. Why does, isn't that like the classic that does not sound awesome thing? Okay. Um, and then he says, how did you end up like this? And she says, like what? Resourceful? Daring? Beautiful? Self-sufficient? So oh, just, just don't, don't write like that. Like, don't do that. <laughs> don't write like um, that. And the annoying thing is I imagine people are like, oh, but you like Tony Stark and he did the same thing. Yeah, he did the same thing and then get immediately rebuked by Steve immediately. And also it's feeding into like a broader thing that they're running for Tony about. The, and he was under know, the, the effects of the fucking Mind play. Stone. Yeah, so the point being that there's a whole bunch of context in there that explains that line, that counters that line, and then builds up, like, character down the line. This goes nowhere. This is yeah. just her making a definitive statement to the audience about how cool she is. That's lame. That sucks. It's She's performing for the audience. She's not a character in this world. I'm great and wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's like, what, what, what don't you like about me? That I'm self-sustaining, strong, or something like that? Or... Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, ugh. It's the kind they of thing really that no, the audience no was Indiana like... Jones heroine has ever had to say before, nope. because it's usually been self-evident to people. It's a, any man mm -hmm. who must say I am the king moment. Like, well, yeah, <laughs> Marion never needed to say that, because she was all of those things already, and we could see that through her actions and through her interactions, and she was also exactly. more complex, because she was, she was feminine introduction. and beautiful, but she was also quite sort of brutal and masculine, which she needed to be, and she could fight, and she was a bit uncouth, and she was a complex, reasonably well-fleshed-out character for the day. As a, and she didn't ever need to tell anyone what her qualities were because they were so evident to us. Mm -hmm. Marion's Not introduction, absolutely. she wins a drinking fight, a uh, contest, I should say, and then uh, she stands up to the Nazis who fucking arrive in a bar that she presumably takes care of, right? It's like, you've already got loads there. Versus Phoebe Waller-Bridge's introduction, which is lying through her teeth to try and steal something she wants to sell and gets two people murdered because of it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Phoebe Waller Bridge, beautiful. Suspension of disbelief shattered. <laughs> I mean, it, but you do buy that she'd say it about herself, I guess, right? Resourceful, daring, beautiful, self sufficient. Oh. It's just like, 
I guess Probably maybe James to... Mangold would say, like, get it? She's ego-driven. I'd be like, okay. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> we got it. On that Definitely note, I got, got it. I got a bug out, Mahler. Sorry. And guys. That's okay. I didn't expect to be able to grab you for as long as this will go on, especially since we're only halfway through. But um, I get the vibe that you enjoyed it and that you're going to be <laughs> putting it in your collection. You're going to get the hot toy of... Uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that go right behind me in a in a in a very special place. God, will they make one? That would be hilarious. They if might. They made <laughs> well, I'll yeah, get it for um, Christmas. <laughs> in any case, of course, thank you for joining us. And uh, I'm assuming you're going to be doing coverage of this. I'd imagine. I am right back to working on my video. So, yes, and I'm sure we'll talk about it on BBC, and I wish I could stay the whole time because there's so much more stupid to get to. Oh, yeah. The Antonio Banderas. That, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know he's in this movie. <laughs> Dude, his acting is so bad in this. It's, Nobody gave it's a shit, bad. man. It was an honor and a pleasure to be on EFAP again. Thanks, guys. Great talking to you guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, links in yeah, description yeah, for Nerd Rotic's channel, who, as was said, it's going to have plenty of coverage of this film to come, as well as some other things Disney, Marvel, whoever else are up to in oh, the yeah. media sphere. Maybe Witcher. Maybe Witcher, too. Maybe some Witcher, in case anyone watched it. Because I like punishment. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll see you Tuesday, my good man. Tuesday. Take care, guys. Great talking Bye, to you. Dude. Later, man. Like for you. Okie dokie. See you in the past. That's a good Oh, I should have said it? see you in the past. Yeah. Ugh. What a great line. So, uh, the that, all these like the whole. Oh, sorry. I was going to say all the cars clash and the the Vola men end up shooting the shit out of the the mobster men by like accident. So that kind of makes things easier. And everyone who keeps trying to take shots at Phoebe Waller Bridge is stopped by Mobster Man because he's like, no, actually, I love her or something. It's a fucking wacky and annoying scene. Very, very cartoony. What do you mean? It's really funny and entertaining, and I didn't want to kill myself at all. Lying. Why are you lying to me? Yeah, you're right. I didn't want. I did want to kill myself. But uh, you were gonna say something about the scene overall, John? Something about how much you love it, oh. maybe? <laughs> <laughs> The whole at whole action scene is very flat, generic. Um, there weren't any shots where it's just like, oh my god, I can't believe they pulled that off. You mm -hmm. know, it's just very flat. Uh, there are a couple things where, like, there's one where Indy's car gets just demolished by a bus. I'm like, that's kind of cool, but whatever. The guy th drives into a bunch of sticks. It's like, oh, kind of gnarly, but I've seen it before. Uh, the, uh, the large pursuing vehicle getting pinched into a narrowing alley I've seen before. Like, mm -hmm. there's a Simpsons gag with that that comes to mind. And, uh, I think it was in one of the Mission Impossibles. I think it was Fallout where the, uh, they did exactly that, basically. It's just a bunch of stuff I've seen plenty of times before. None yeah. of them, none of the shots were particularly innovative. Um, yeah. More meh. It was also the scene that, I mean, not to be a broken record on the point, but this was the one when I really thought, yeah, the sound mixing in, in this is completely broken. If you do go back and compare it to any chase sequence, any car sequence, any fight sequence from any of the older films, those are given character because quite often, say, engine sounds are muted or dulled down, so you can very clearly hear what the mood of the thing is supposed to be. And it's a much clearer transition from threat in fight to comedy in fight is when the music is allowed to convey that emotion whereas this one all you can hear is cars crashing tuk tuk engines going whiny and it, it's so loud you can't make anything out very clearly and that gives the whole thing this especially combined with like the weightless comedic lines from phoebe waterbridge the whole thing then just seems completely inconsequential because there's no character to it because it's so loud you can't have any space for character to really come through which doesn't help when you've got uh there's several moments i remember spying of phoebe waller bridge doing the thing where she's holding like the steering wheel but she's just going left right left right left right left right while the scene's happening it's <laughs> <laughs> like yeah i'm driving yeah. that's what drivers do it's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> nailing it yeah um, swerving all over the road but they uh they actually fail to get the dial from vola and they have oh, to regroup, no. but Vola ends up uh, driving directly into the CIA, and he's captured by them again. I guess and that's after he normally like almost gets his head taken off by Phoebe Waterbridge choking him with a cable or something. It's like it's another example of how you don't introduce this guy as a threatening villain because yeah. he he gets out of these things by pure luck. He blunders into them. He's incompetent, 
and he's either saved by incompetent henchmen or just by luck phoebe waterbridge happens to let go of his neck before she breaks it um and i don't feel anything from this villain he's so underwhelming and he's got such presence he could be so good but this is how you don't write villains i think well, uh, yeah. that's how I didn't fucking buy. It's like, how does she end up in that position? It's like, well, she rips off a part of their own car and then slams that like piece of metal into theirs to use as leverage to jump over and be attached to it, <laughs> smashes the window open, and then grabs mm -hmm. the dial's like pouch from... I think that's what it is that she's strangling Vola with from the back of the car. I, I remember watching all of it and being like, I don't buy this. Not whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. She would have died Stupid. like three different times already. This is fucking insane. Uh, and, and just very yeah. awkward, yeah. But yeah, that's that's the end of that chase scene. It was, um, wow, you know. And it just went on for so long it as does, well. It, it just it's go on. interminable chase scene. Well, and it's a chase scene that kind of it came out of nowhere. Like I said, the, the catching up to Vola thing should have been impossible. It's just like, yeah, mm -hmm. but we need to have our chase scene. You're like, oh, okay. Well, then do something better, maybe. How about that? Um, yeah, and that's it's just after the scene then is when she says, um, if only there was someone there for me, some father figure, someone anointed with the job. And he says, you have no idea. And then she says, ah, oh, don't beat yourself up about it. I mean, what even is a godfather? Family was never your strong suit. Wow. Yeah, no, and I, it's, again, it's just <laughs> like, why do you, you like want me to hate her, surely? Yeah. Um, then she says, what's the time? And he realizes his wristwatch has been stolen by fucking Teddy. And then he says, give me that back. It was my father's. And then they agree to give it back to him. And you're just sitting there like, why am I watching a movie with fucking Indiana Jones is getting his shit stolen from him and he's abused and made fun of and pathetic and desperately just trying to kill himself? Like, what? why? <laughs> why, why, why? So um, they need to fix this stupid little thing and then they need to make their next move. Uh, but we cut back over to the CIA with Vola, and they say they're pulling the plug on your operation because your associates killed three civilians and blew up a televised parade, and you stood up the president and then created an incident in Morocco that required extraction. I thought it was so funny that killing three innocent civilians on TV and required an extraction from an explosive chase in Morocco is listed alongside standing up the president. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> sure, I guess, yeah, that, that, that's, yeah, sure. And, uh, and in response to that, he's like, I can explain this. Just let, let me explain it. And, uh, she said they want you to vanish. And that uh, you put them on the moon, which means they got what they wanted. We, uh, mentioned earlier. So it's, that's it, the CIA ain't playing his games anymore. Damn it. So he kills them all. Yay! Wait, what? It's, um, <laughs> it's kind of retarded. Uh, for some reason, his men are allowed to freely walk around with their weapons in this fucking plane. And it's like, shouldn't they be arrested? Mm, no. I don't I understand. So. Why are we treating this like you can just kill innocent people and it doesn't matter? What's going on? I don't understand. Because of the movie. And, um, yeah, uh, Boyd Holbrook just sprays people in the face with his special can of knockout gas. I don't know what it is. And, uh, then the big guy like beats people up and knocks them out, and then they start tossing people out the the plane in general. And it's just like, yep, fuck the CIA, you're all dead now. An agent lady tries to do something to Vola, and then she gets shot, and she's like, "Damn you!" and dies. Uh, and then there's the weird reveal <laughs> that doesn't really mean anything to anyone who's involved in the scene when she says she 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 addresses him. Is it Schmidt? His his fake yeah. name. Yeah. And he says it's not Schmidt. It's uh, I, I keep forgetting his name. It's um, what's something his name? Vola. I forgot. It's like a, uh, Jürgen, Jürgen Vola. Vola. It's Vola. Jürgen that's Vola. fun. And think, well, a like, what does that mean to her? Also, she's dying. <laughs> Dude, so it was so funny if she just went, "Who?" <laughs> <laughs> she and the audience alike. But like, what? Given the scene we had earlier as well, when you know the reason we were supposed to believe that he's still an evil bastard Nazi is that he's basically a big evil racist, and here he is killing a black CIA policewoman. Mm -hmm. um, could you maybe have played back into that and have him shown his hand a bit more that this is a really nasty piece of work as opposed to like a boring run of the mill Nazi piece of work? But no, it's just yeah, this is my real name. Bye now. <laughs> Bye. Okay. <laughs> And again, uh, cut out all the CIA stuff, and we just shave, like, at least 20 minutes off the movie, and it changes nothing. Why? Yeah. What's the point of the CIA shit? 
Maybe they realized it was really stupid. And it's like, just kill them all so we don't have to deal with it anymore. That's how it feels. That's, that scene is literally <laughs> just the CIA like, hey, we still don't like what you did. And he's like, dead now. Stop. Yeah. Just, uh, no you. Oh. That's that. Good stuff. You did it. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so then we Pretty begin good. the next scene with them fixing the thing. And Teddy says, do you know the Wright brothers? They were born in Indiana too. It's just like, fuck me. And uh, Indiana Jones is like, I wasn't born in Indiana, and they were born during the Civil War. And he's like, I thought you went to school with them. And then, before you can, whether or not you want to appreciate it as a joke, Phoebe Waller Bridges walks onto the screen and says, Ha 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 ha, come on, admit that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. It's just like, fuck off, please. Oh. Uh, dialogue, man. Do you think she wrote that line herself? Probably. She had, probably another, she had that. her other character come in and say, yeah, no, that line I just wrote was really funny. And you really have to admit that. And I just, stop it, woman, please. I always see that Don't as the cinematic double downing of like, let's get a bit more laughter. We can get a little bit more. If we have a character in universe acknowledge how funny that was, we can laugh a bit more. <clears throat> the thing is, so it has to be very funny for that line yes. then to work. And it like even if you think there's a little titter in there somewhere, it's not hilarious. It's just kind of run of the mill humor. And then yeah, then being told that that was funny by a character who was supposed to celebrate for her wit really just kind of undermines that character. I don't think she has a sense of humor. Certainly not fucking from this judging from this film because like I said, uh I guess we've been labeling some of the jokes as they've come up, but I, I think I missed plenty of them because I just didn't even realize jokes were happening. I was just like, this is mm -hmm. just dull. Um, and yeah, well, they're fucking around, and then he says, I'm wanted for murder. I'm stuck in Tangier with two thieves. Nazis have half of the dial and the notebooks. Basically, Indy's saying, like, this is horrible, bad, terrible. And then she's just like, oh, don't worry. I've memorized all the important parts of the notes. And it fucking, it hit me like a truck in the head. I was just like, do you listen to anything you just said? It's not... I don't care whether or not you memorize the notes. I was like... <laughs> fucking Nazis have the notebooks. That means they have <laughs> the explanation. Like, she's not even listening. She doesn't even care. And she never actually gives a shit about anything. It's just... it's just Yeah, you sit there and you just feel bad for an already, like, terrible hobo indie anyway. Um... <laughs> Oh, Indy. <laughs> yeah, and she she just does a thing of like the Graphicos is probably in this location. My dad figured it out, and then Indy is like, "What if the code is in Linear B as opposed to Polybius?" And then she's like, "Hmm." And then he says, "Haha, you need me." And and I was so sad that we actually have a part of the film where Indy has to argue his usefulness. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Fuck. It's fucking sad. <laughs> to to her too. <laughs> of all fucking people. Please. Please keep me along for the ride, guys. I'm <laughs> useful, I promise. I'm on okay. the card, I promise. <laughs> um, That's sad, yeah. Yeah, which... Um, uh, it's also the things like, huh, my dad ta taught me this one when I was nine. It's like, okay, good for you, I guess. And uh, we move on to, this is the introduction of Antonio Banderas, which I, I had no... Did anyone know he was in this film before seeing the film? I nope. didn't even know no. since, until you just told me. <laughs> I was, I was, I didn't. In the first shot of him, I didn't recognize him. And then in the, the, the first scene, shot of him, I, was like, I oh, thought yeah, it was that's... him, but I was like, "There's no way that's what he." Like, how would? Why hasn't there been any marketing with Antonio Banderas? If, like, what? Isn't he? A, isn't he a, an actor? <laughs> like last time I checked, <laughs> I thought, like, okay, because he's not in any of the trailers either. I don't think, or at least I don't remember seeing him. So I was just like, fine, I guess he's here now. And the idea is, they need to go to a shipwreck that is out of the range of normal, like, divers, but uh, Indy has a friend uh, in Spain who's going to be able to, he's like a frogman who can go way deeper than a lot of people, and it's like, okie dokie. So he's going to help him get to that, and they believe that's where the Graphicos will be, and the Graphicos will tell you where the second half of the dial will be. Again, uh, yeah. I, I gotta admit, I, I wasn't following that my first time through. I was just like, okay, we're going here now. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and it's like we got to get the thing that gets the thing. It's like sure, totally fine. Yeah, e exactly. I thought the same thing. At that point, it, it became very formulaic, where it's just like, okay, you getting the thing that points to the more important thing. It's it's like them getting the tablet in Venice in like um, Crusades, where it's okay. Mm -hmm. I get what we're doing now. This this that that movie ends. <laughs> um. So yeah, we, I didn't recognize him at all, Antonio Banderas. I just <laughs> checked the character. I was like, oh yeah, shit, that is him. 
Uh, from what I gathered, yeah. they leave at night, and they're on the boat, and they're all having like a back and forth about just stuff. They're just chilling out until they get to the location, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's doing card tricks, and she impresses Antonio Banderas, and then she shows Indy that he picks the card that she wants him to, and he says, eh, trick deck. And then she says, no, I offer the mark the feeling of a choice, but ultimately make them pick the card I want. And then it cuts back to Indy, and he just goes, the mark, and then walks off. The one, the, this is like the second thing in the movie I liked. I was like, ah, oh, that's nice. That's him basically saying, fuck you. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you've treated me like the mark throughout the whole film when I'm supposed to be someone who matters to you and I care about you and this is how you've treated me throughout the whole thing. She even has like a sad face because she realizes what he means by that. But I mean, it's hard to give credit to the film for something that, like, it's, it's like solving or at least dealing in somewhat ways problems it's caused itself, like things that shouldn't have happened anyway. And then it's like slightly yeah. acknowledging them and it, it makes me feel slightly better than misery. And so I feel like complimenting it, but I'm like, I really shouldn't. You don't really, you haven't earned shit, so... Just saying, I, I like to point these things out though, because it's not, you know, I'm not that mean to films, right, guys? No, <laughs> you should be though. Um, yeah, and then he says about the dial. I don't believe in magic, but a few times in my life I've seen stuff that I can't explain. Sometimes it ain't what you believe, but how hard you believe them or believe in them. Sorry. Don't really I, know. I am unconvinced by that line. I don't, yeah, given neither what he's I... been through and everything he's done. Uh... There are other similar-ish lines in the older films, but none of them, if, if anything, they all kind of convey that there is magic. So there's the one in, in Last Crusade when it might actually be Henry Jovencini who says that you're meddling with powers that you can't possibly comprehend. He's seen the arc open, obviously. Um, he's seen voodoo work. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's experienced quite a lot of magic. What we um, would absolutely consider magic, yeah. I don't see... It seems like a weird line to come out of it, and I don't know how it relates to this film at all. Like, um, I don't believe in magic, but, you know, it ain't what you believe in, it's how hard you believe it. It'd be like, what are you yeah. saying? Mm -hmm. Does that mean Does that yeah. mean the only reason when the Ark opened, all of the Nazis' faces melted, and theirs would have done if they'd looked at it, is that they believed it too hard, and if they simply didn't or believe not it was going to happen, it wouldn't have happened? I don't know, because, uh, uh, again, with the Antikythera in this film, like, what, is, what does it mean to believe hard when it's... Like, it, it, yeah... It's a mechanical device. I, I took it yeah. as just some vague statement about faith, but it didn't really land. I feel like, like The Last Crusade fucking nailed that shit, especially with those three yes. challenges. Yes. But yeah, like this yeah. one, I don't know what the fuck it was trying to say. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I just don't, like, Indy at this age, after everything he's seen, would probably be like, yeah, this shit's real. This shit happens. There's a lot about, there's a lot about the world I can't explain. And, you know, that that would be that would be fine. You could make something out of that instead of making him say like you just gotta believe hard. I don't even know if you say you should believe hard. I don't know. I don't know what he's fucking trying to say. Like I said, I don't know what it relates to. We won't be coming back to that statement. That's just something he says. <laughs> That's just something he says. That's um, funny. and then she says something where I was just like, "Fuck me!" They have no imagination. She says the only thing worth believing in ever is cash. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> right. And I already know people will be like, what, are we, what, there are people who think that. And I'll be like, no, it's, it's not that. It's just what a fucking lame character she is with everything that's happened. Right. Everything. And then the, what does she say? I only believe in cash. It's like, oh, fuck off. Yeah. Um, yeah. She, she, I mean, she hangs around with, um, with Teddy because there's a friendship, familial ish relationship going on there. And she's clearly slightly bitter about her dad going a bit mad like, she clearly, she's already demonstrated attachments which are non-financial in this the film the film feels that it it would counter you platoon it would be like yeah we know we're pointing that out you remember the scene where he's like a person who only cares about cash wouldn't have remembered their whole father's journals or whatever yes yeah so the film's like ah see indy's like prying into her he's trying to prove to her that she cares more than just about cash which uh, I think is paid off then in the form of, you see, she puts a lot of work into specifically saving Indy, not even for money or whatever. I just be like, that's obviously what you were going for. I just think you did a, such a fucking horrendous job of it. Because the yeah, idea like, is the that she is always... The stuff in the middle, right? Well, the stuff in the middle, just the middle where she does act purely because it's, of monetary concern. The implication is that she's always cared about people. That's what they're trying to say. Because Teddy is way older than the events of this film, as well as her caring about her father. You see, that person was always there, she just hides it. And it's like, no, she's awful. She does so much shit in this film where she doesn't care at all about anybody. Like, the yeah. only, the only, I've seen people point this out, it's like, what made her care about Indy in this film? 
It's like, well, it just seems to be the fact that he saves her life enough times, or he does enough nice things, that she's like, you know, I guess he isn't a horrible piece of shit that I want dead. <laughs> it's just like, fuck me, guys. Like, and again, a lot of these things come from things that I don't even know if James Mangold noticed. Like, I don't even know that she is aware that she's caused several people to die. I don't, I don't know that he knows that. The stuff that, like, isn't considered in the arc is more so she's kind of a nice person. Yeah, okay, sure, she sells some stuff that she finds. Fine, for a bit of money. She's trying to survive. That's okay. But ultimately, she's actually a really good person deep down. Yeah, I don't think the film quite realizes the character that they've written. Like, not mm -hmm. really. So she says, what would you do if you could go back in time? Witness the Trojan War? Check out on Cleopatra? <laughs> and then he says, I'd stop my son from enlisting. She says, did he do it to please you? No, he did it to piss me off. And uh, to stop him, he would have told him he was going to die, that his mother would find no end to her grief, and that his father would be helpless to console her, and the loss would put an end to their marriage. In isolation, I think that scene is really well performed. I think I he does a really good job acting it, yeah. Any sense within the context of the characters that they've been built up, or the stories that have previously been told, or everything we know about the people involved in them. Uh, I really wanted to like that scene. Um, it's just, yeah, then you have to connect it to, you know, past events and they well, contradict it. First of all, it fucking sucks that she's in the scene at all, because, uh, I, like, I hate that he's sharing this with someone who's such a fucking asshole, but secondly, do you remember what she says back to him when he says all that and he's walking away? Anybody? Uh, I can't remember. Can't remember. She Don't says, remember. you're still wearing the ring. Oh, oh yeah, right. I actually oh. wanted to kill myself. I was like, "Well, but why would you even point that? Are you dense, woman? Like, he doesn't want to be estranged from his fucking wife. Obviously, yeah. it's the kind of thing that I almost feel like. Wait, did did you point that out for us? I know right. he's wearing the ring. I could see the fucking ring in several scenes. I get why he's wearing the ring. That's one of the most obvious storytelling things ever. And then, just as an etiquette thing, someone tells you like, "Yeah, my whole life got ruined because my son died." Then you go, wow. Still wearing the ring, though. Yeah, I think. Oh, cool. <laughs> she is an idiot, yeah. yeah. Like, of course I know I'm wearing the fucking ring. I put it on. It, it makes it sound like his. if he, she wanted a response from me, would be like, that's true, I guess. You know, in some ways, I don't feel like it's the end of our marriage. <laughs> How about that? Ba -da -ba -da -da. It's also it's fucking hideously it's inappropriate. Even... It's hideously inappropriate. It's also it's not just the death of the character. I mean that that one admission is basically the death of every potentially better alternate story we could have had, um, and that's what made the scene I guess annoying on a meta level. Is that there's some considerable merit in having a passing of the torch moment between Indy and his son. If you wanted to carry this thing on, if you wanted to you know have a younger hero, you could cast Indy in the role of his father again, as mentioned earlier. You could have his son like falling away from him and then they have to come back together and then you could start a whole new series of films with Indiana Jones' son and it could actually be half decent if people could still remember how to write things. But no, because eh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, I guess. But no, so, so kill off the, the only character who really has potential going forward for the future and that is that is the end of the franchise. Mm -hmm. Though it should have ended years ago anyway. But And again... It, uh, it really comes across as spiteful and cruel to me. It's just like, you didn't you didn't have to kill him. You could have just had him not in the film, could have recast him, could have done anything. You killed him. You ended that story. Like, okay. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but we wanted to make Indy really fucking sad. You're like, right. But again, like, is Mutt the kind of, you know, from his bare bones characterization in, in Crystal Skull, I would have thought enlisting would be the opposite of the thing he would do. Because well, so that's I actually the, thought based on authority. A story idea could have been that because Indy had enlisted, he could have Mutt being like, fuck going to war. That shit's yeah, stupid. Yeah. And then Indy mm -hmm. could be like, no, it's it's incredibly important to fight for your country. It's the freedoms we enjoy are a result of all the men and women who do this, that, and the other. And, so, and he could inspire Mutt to then go to war. And then if he got killed, that kind of backstory would way, way heavier, right? Like the idea that Indy inspired him to do service for the country that got him killed. But instead they sell it as, he did it to piss me off, and then he died. Oh, so, you yeah. know, I, awesome. I occasionally have arguments with my parents and do drastic things, like going and joining the army and fighting <laughs> in Iraq, for example. So that's a thing that just happens. I mean, it's the only smart thing to do, really. So, yeah, uh, it's all, you know, as, as was said, I, I do agree. In isolation, the performance was pretty strong. From It's nice to see Harrison Ford acting every once in a while. Yeah. Mm. Here and there. 
Um, then the next scene starts, it's the morning, and she's, uh, she's pulled out a flask from some drawer, and she's like, hmm, promising, because there might be alcohol in there. Then she sees a guy walk past her without his shirt on, and she goes, more promising. It was, um, it's, it's, it's weird enough on its own, because you're just like, okay, we're doing that. I don't, I don't know why this, like, it, it's just more things for Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character to pile on, I guess. Because you wonder, like, is this going to be an aid of anything? Unfortunately, it only adds to some problem I'm going to have a little bit later. We'll get there. And then she finds dynamite and uh, presumably pockets it there. I don't know, because she's going to have it later, but uh, Indy looks like it ta he takes it off her and puts it back, so I don't know. He doesn't even just put it back. <laughs> he, he takes it off her and he kind of throws it back into the drawer. Yeah. And th that's kind of risky. If that dynamite is old, I've seen Lost. I remember what happens when dynamite gets old and people mishandle it and it explodes randomly. So... He's kind of lucky that it was in fairly good condition because he just threw it back into what the drawer and they could have all died in that moment. What film are you making me think of when you say that? There's an episode of Lost where it happens. Could be Lost. I'm thinking of it. what visual am I thinking about? It's some story where, the, yeah, there is old explosives, but they're so old that just uh, moving them enough will make them explode. What is that? Chat, help me out. I'm going to read some of your examples and then see if it is going to annoy me. I can picture it, but I can't think of what it's from. I'm thinking, it's, it, I've got the imagery of like an explosive that's like, uh, so to speak, bleeding. Yeah, that's, it, well, it might be from something else as well, but that episode of Lost is they have to try and open one of the doors to a vault somewhere, and they found some very old dynamite. It's bleeding. It's kind of all moldy and leaking and congealed, and they have to carry it out really carefully. They carry it all out. And then they think they've disarmed it, and the guy who's been teaching them how to do it lifts one up and says, and if you do this with it, and it goes bang. A lot of people saying it could be Wild Wild West. That might actually be it, because I watched that a bunch when I was a kid, but <laughs> I don't remember Wild shit all Wild from that Wild film West, now. Yeah. It wasn't well, Django. I watched a lot it? of films when I was young. Uh, I can't remember maybe. what sets off the dynamite there. So people saying Hot Fuzz. It's definitely not Hot Fuzz. I, I know no, that no, back that to front, that like... memory. No, that, that'd be thinking about the mine, but that, wasn't, yeah. that was specifically a little mechanism mm. getting activated. It's not Something. quite the same. It could be. It could be lost as well. I'd have to check. Oh, the rock, maybe, maybe, maybe. I need to rewatch that too. Dun 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 dun. So, uh, the kid isn't coming with because he can't swim. Something that they tell us that only has a, a anti payoff, and that's it. And by that, like I mean he, he swims. <laughs> later. Well, say the guy says, "No, anyone can swim. It's just was it pull and kick? Is that what he says?" And then. Later on, are we supposed to that, buy that? That's how he figured out how to swim. Was that guy saying that? It's that easy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Apparently, cool. so, uh, I had a friend who never learned to swim, and he has still never learned to swim. And he has tried several times, and we've told him in theory how the thing works. But there's a big difference between sort of understanding in theory and deploying in practice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is this is what the film considers setup and payoff, I guess. Um, they go relatively deep, and he says to avoid the bends, you just go down and then come back up within three minutes. I I just thought it was funny. It felt like the film was like, yeah, yeah, shut up. We'll be fine. We're not dealing with that shit, okay? Um, I can't be. That's right. I, I'm fucking, I'm, I ain't doing the Googling to figure that shit out. I just, I, I feel <laughs> like the film is like, please don't look it up. <laughs> <It's> like, please <laughs> don't look it yeah. up. I thought the idea was to avoid an abrupt change in pressure. But that's so what I thought too, that the bends yeah. were specifically that it was very quick and mm -hmm. then the way that, to the point that, uh, yeah, like that is meant to be a slower decompression. This is what, yeah, yes. I have no idea. So you're supposed to go no down clue. slowly, go up slowly, yeah. But it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like it's actually the opposite of what the film says. But, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I have no idea. Google away. Uh, so, they, I mean, the, 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 this can be summarized relatively quickly. They go down, they find a chest. It's, for some reason, covered in electric eels. Or are they even electric eels? They're just regular eels? I don't uh, fucking no, know. No, they're just eels, but get it? They're like well, sea snakes. But the but problem is, yeah. He's, yeah. the reason why I was wondering if they were electric eels, because he says if you get bitten by one, it'll lock your jaw. No, 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 he says they will lock their jaw. Oh, they lock their jaw. Good, because yeah. I was going to uh, say, like, there's no fucking way those things were electric eels with the results they get. But the thing is, Indiana Jones is attacked by, like, a horde of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> and I was just gonna say, if there was any damage they could do, then surely it was done, you know? But there's, there's no... I mean, he gets shot in this film and he doesn't care, so why would I even bring up the eels? There's not much point in that. Um, so they get... They open up the thing, the... the, the or I, can they bring up the chest or whatever? Anyway, bad guys arrive, and... How did they know to be here? I think it's because they had the notes. They based it off the notes. 
I think so. Because I know th this is one a lot of people said they just fucking turned up here, and it's like I think the film wanted us to believe that they they did it because of Toby Jones's notes. That's all yeah. I got. Yeah. I mean, I was kind of unclear on that point. I guess you'd have to run with that because there's mm -hmm. no other explanation for how they could possibly have got there. And uh, yeah, they launch, they go down, they find the chest. Remember, they've got a three minute cap and then they see like th there's a bit of conversation back and forth, discovery. Then we see a ship in the distance and then they get to their ship and get to the point where they're fucking around on their ship before they've even come back up. And I was just like, the time here doesn't seem right at all. Oh, like, no, it's like super far away. And then we cut to below the water and they're just there immediately it's like teleport. oh that's that, yeah, yeah exactly good old um, teleport <clears throat> and so now to help explain we've got four people deep underwater you have uh, at the deepest point in the ship is uh indiana jones phoebe waller bridge and i think antonio banderas is a little bit further up the guy at the highest point is shirtless guy that she thought was hot right he's just on lookout i guess he's just sort of sitting there they cut his wire, and so he just, like, he's struggling to breathe, and then he falls off the cliff's edge and just drowns. I thought this was fucking crazy, because first of all, he's experienced, he's a literal, like, considered a frogman, like, the, in terms of profession. He doesn't pull his, um, life-saving thing. Isn't that, like, the obvious I thing to do? It, I found it very confusing. I wasn't sure why that had happened. But it's even worse. Not only does he not do that, nobody does that for him. They all just watch him as he drowns. I was just like, oh. <laughs> Bye. Well, Absolutely fucking insane. Get, get him out of the picture as quickly as possible so they don't have to deal with him anymore. Yeah, he's just out. And then the others, uh, they start coming up and they pull their life-saving things. So they just, like, propel up really fast because, you know, air pressure, blah, blah, blah. Um, that was lame, and then I was just thinking about the fact that it's like, oh yeah, that guy, he only existed to be called hot by Phoebe Waller-Bridge and then drown. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Very weird. So much for that guy, Ripperoo. Uh, but yeah, the, the bad guys now will have the Graphicos, they've taken over the ship, it's just another moment of we've been captured, because it just keeps on happening. Um, so the scenario now is they're all on the ship, Antonio Banderas is there, and uh, the question from Voler is basically, translate the Graphicos to us, you know, now. And then Jones is like, no. And the first thought I had was like, dude, why don't you just translate it wrong? Take the information in for yourself and just tell them it means something else. It's not like the obvious thing to do. That's what fucking Phoebe Waller-Bridge ends up doing. Not Indiana Jones. He's not clever enough to do that. She is, though. So that was lame yeah. as fuck. It's like it's a language they don't remotely recognize. You could have made up literally anything and then read what it actually is for yourself. That happens quite a lot. I mean, you remember like Multiverse of Madness when Wanda takes Wong up to the, the evil yep. Doom Temple. And he's the only one who can possibly translate and she's got nothing holding over him anymore. And he just helps her because that's what the plot needs him to do at that given moment rather than misdirecting her. Um, there's a few other things like that that have come out recently. I'm trying to think of another specific example, but th yeah, this, this idea that you can only either help the bad guy or die because that's the only two options the script could conceive of when it's so obvious that you could do something so much better than that, just lie and misdirect and there's no way they could possibly know you were lying to them. But fuck it, here we are. That would be difficult, apparently. Well, the plot would come to an end at that point. Oh yeah, it we must keep going. <laughs> we, have, we can't have that because the plot wouldn't carry on. It's not like you have other options for writing, <laughs> like to make it to make it work. Mm -hmm. Well, and, uh, part of this problem is it's like, all right, Indiana, you're pretty experienced. They've asked you to do a thing, and you've said no. What do you think happens next? Several people in the room you care about. Well, I mean, we. I mean, it literally happened in the last crusade. Which is why it annoys me. It's like, he should be able to know what happens next, so he needs to have a plan, he needs to come up with something, and that's what he'd come up with. He'd be like, if I read this for you, you have to promise to let us go. And the guy is like, I don't have to promise to do anything, Dr. Jones. You know, some kind of villain thing. And then he could mm -hmm. be like, listen, I know that you're just gonna kill us all anyway, so, you know, give me this. Give me some leverage and I'll help you. Like, make it sound like he's given something up, and then trick him run the scene the exact same way you have her with the dynamite preparing it while Jones is doing the thing. But no, they give it all to her. She's the one that decodes all of it. She's the one that sells them the wrong story, and then she's the one that gets them out of the situation. Mm -hmm. It was really strange considering Jones is the one with all the fucking experience to have done that. Who is yeah. she? She's the person who steals stuff and sells it on auctions. He's a literal, like, lifelong adventurer who's been through these exact situations. 
It's so lame. You'd think they'd be looking for whatever they can to give indie something to do, especially something that doesn't involve action. He doesn't have yes. to do any stunts. It's like, give it to Indy. Let him do it. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's nope. a question. Did she even lie? I thought it was just that the wax had the misdirection carved into it. That might be true and that you need to burn it away or whatever. But I thought that she gave them the wrong information anyway. She, I think she said that she deliberately gave them the wrong information. I think so, yeah. Um, in any case, of course, I've, I've gone a little bit further ahead. This part really fucking annoyed me. So Indy says no, and they shoot Antonio Banderas in, like, the knee. In his fucking working leg, by the way, which is even more great, because he's uh he's like the, they they make fun of him when they first meet him as being like oh yeah he's the best frogman ever with one leg, mm. just like thanks this is a guy who's given up you know so much of his life to just help you on your stupid fucking quest anyway um <laughs> because he's obviously in pain and pissed he gets up and then they shoot him and uh, just execute That's him it. they just shoot him through the that heart the one working leg and he stands up on the one working leg that's just been shot. I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> like, uh, uh, I think it's in his kneecap, too, that he actually gets shot. But it's so... It's just... You just think about this broadly. It's this group of guys who have fun, deep diving, discovering things, whatever. Old friend says, hey, man, I need some help uh, finding this thing in this specific place. It's like, yeah, okay. Explain the rules, go down with them. It's like, oh, this is great. Oh, one of my guys just drowned because a bunch of Nazis have come aboard and cut the wires. And now I'm getting shot to death. Okay. That's that. Fun. Um, I couldn't get it out of my head. And then the scene just plays out with Phoebe Waller-Bridge being like, I'm so awesome decoding this and telling you how to do it and getting myself some money and sorting out the dynamite and doing clever things. Here we go, Jonesy. It's just like, I hate you. I hate everything about this. It's so fucking hard he, to watch. He does say, he, he says, my friends just died to shut her up, I think, at one point. But that's... So that, that's not yet. That's the thing. You have to enjoy the oh. whole fucking scene. His body is dragged away during the scene, by the way. There's a guy in the mm -hmm. background just dragging Antonio Banderas off. It's like, cool. Mm -hmm. There he goes. And yeah, you get all of that, the explosion, and she's high on the adventure of it all. She's like, this is amazing. And then he says, my friend was just murdered. And then she goes, sorry. Anyway, and then they start talking about the thing again. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the parallel, really, of the scene earlier, which and he, he prays, which is, you know, when he, he finds the museum teacher or sorry the the, the uh, school teacher's dead and he does actually pause and you know, the film takes a bit of time to make sure we understand that these innocent people have just been made to suffer and die needlessly um whereas this one does basically the same thing it's just it doesn't really care about them at all this is what i mean it's like the film does seem to understand that she just doesn't give a shit about human life but does it? Because <laughs> it really wants me to think she's a good person, but I really don't. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't, I want to give some credit for that line, but it really is tiny amount of credit because the scene should go, the, the tone doesn't respect it at all. It's more of like a throwaway, like, people did die back there and that's probably not good. And it's like, yeah, anyway. Yeah, it's also my friend, but hey, uh, adventure, woohoo! Because we cut right back to the whole, like, oh, how cool, you lit the thing on fire, the wax moves away, and now we've got, a, like, a disc that gives us more things to decode, woohoo! I was just like, yeah, man, like, all those guys' lives are over for helping you. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, the, the whole thing makes me super uncomfortable, I just don't like it at all. Also, I mean, the, the dynamite as an escape tool is is an interesting one, because like, I've lived on a boat, I still have it. If anyone wants to buy a boat, get in touch, because I'm trying mm. to get rid of it. But I'm pretty sure if I put a stick of dynamite on the floor of my boat, and I lit it, and it exploded, that boat would be gone. I don't think it would have survived and still been floating after I'd done that. And yet, this one does survive the dynamite explosion. Well, oh, yeah. And I assume it's the means by which they follow them eventually. You must not be familiar with writing, because they need the bad guys <laughs> to have a boat. <laughs> if, we, if we make it so the boat blew up because of the dynamite, that would ruin the story. So we can't do that. Yeah, better luck next time with your little nitpicking, okay? <laughs> what you said doesn't even make sense. Why would dynamite blow up something? That's not what it's known for. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> That's not what it's known for. <laughs> you fool. I thought it was dumb as fuck, too, by the way, that she had the dynamite at all. I was like, did did none of them get patted down? They didn't take, like, any precaution of whether or not they have fucking guns or maybe a stick of dynamite on them? 
I mean, I guess we're still unclear when she actually got it because apparently. Yeah, no, I don't know when she got it away, exactly. So, so she must have took, taken it while she was doing her little translation. I, I don't know how she could get earlier. away with that. I, th I think that they had one of those, you know, those shots that always tell you, oh, that item's important, where there was a shot that focused in on the stick of dynamite. I'm pretty sure there was a shot like that. And I you, guess you're talking about before they it. went down or, or after? Oh, damn. I, I, th I can't remember if it was before or after, but I know that there was that shot. Well, yeah. Um, the other thing about it that's funny is that if Vola wasn't smoking a cigarette in that scene, what was she going to do? Die. Like, she needs a spark. Yep. I guess, I guess uh, Indy has a lighter, I think. So she could have just tossed him the dynamite. That's the thing, she does it as well. And she, when she threw it, I was like, you're blowing up a boat. <laughs> like, do, do, do you know what that means? Like, <laughs> you are blowing up a boat. <laughs> but no, it always works out, because whatever she decides to do, it just sort of, you know, just everything sort of shakes out for the best. It's all good. Even if the boat doesn't sink because of the dynamite, which it would, but even if it didn't, because the hull is usually made of steel, the floors in boats don't tend to be made of steel, and certainly nothing as thick as the steel at the hull of the boat, fire moves in the direction of least resistance, all the force of the explosion will be channeled via the cylindrical hull upward toward mm -hmm. the top. So mm -hmm. everyone in that room is dead, even oh, if yeah, the they're boat doesn't fucked. sink. They're all completely gone. Um, but, but no, because again, the film needs to carry on happening, so I guess it's just a small piece of dynamite. The guy died and, um, when they blew up his boat, yep. <laughs> I'm a bit tired of the, the trope of like Indy doing the hard work to get the thing, and then he's surrounded by the bad guys, and the bad guys like, I must thank you for bringing <laughs> me the thing, Doctor Jones. Um, I was hoping they'd like think of something clever this time around. You no, know, or, we definitely like, got that covered up. In, Indy would say before he went underwater, like, "Stay vigilant. Make make sure they don't come aboard and take you all hostage while I'm down there." Yeah, there was uh, no plan no, for that, they... even though they knew, presumably, because they said they had the notes, that they would eventually reach them, so they should have... By the way, had they been ten minutes later, it would have been fine. Yeah. I yeah. just fucking considered this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's terrible. And it was hard to keep track of these, just so many contrivances. Yeah, well, and speaking of which... Yeah. um. The dynamited boat is is black smoke coming out of it. They're all like, blah, 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 trying to, and then it just shows Vola grab binoculars. So we mentioned this earlier, but he just <laughs> watches Indy's boat and then goes, "Wait a minute, they're not heading where they <laughs> said they were. They're going somewhere else." But and the then that's... there is really weird because he doesn't say it immediately. He picks up the binoculars and watches yeah. them. Then we get the map sequence with the classic red line, and it's implied that lots of time is passing. Then we cut back to him with the binoculars, and he says. Hey, in a minute, they're, they're, they're going west. <laughs> yeah. They're not east. You, could, you already know this, because that's immediately obvious to you, surely. The second they start to leave, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's, you, you can, follows them the whole way. Yeah, I get You yeah. can tell they're probably in the editing room on that map scene, and it's like, will the audience get it that they're <laughs> following them? No, we gotta throw this extra I don't bit buy... in. Like, they're heading west. Like, if Vola okay. is in binocular distance of seeing where they're going, then they must have known he was following them, right? They would just look behind them and be like, oh, that boat's been following us this whole time, so that's probably Vola, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. But no, they don't. It, they, they're completely surprised that Vola manages to find where they are. It, yeah, it didn't need that cut back over the map scene. You're, there was already a shot there where you can see him looking at the boat uh, going away. And you can just draw from that, like, oh, maybe he knows where they're going, maybe he'll follow them. Well, a lot of people pointed um, out, like, no way he could know where they were going just based off northeast, southwest, right? So it's like, yeah, he must have been literally at the fucking front of their boat with his binoculars going, forward still, forward, oh, bit to the right, bit to the right, yeah, mm -hmm. gotta keep going, yeah, because, you know, it's like, I don't actually have any clue where they're going, just follow the distant boat. But don't get yeah. too close, don't want him to realize we're following them. <laughs> if, if he doesn't have line of sight to their boat, he has no idea where he's going. Is that right? Yep. He, so he, he must logically have been following them within eye line of, of them. So they must have known that he was following because... And as soon as they find them, that out, there's a good chance you'd want to be like, well, we don't want to land exactly where we need to go. We should go somewhere else and then move to where we need I to think, go. I think the problem at that point is that uh, he will have figured out where they were going simply because they were heading west. It's too late. 
No, I but think, yeah, but that's uh, fine. If they say Sicily is a big place, you know, <laughs> like they can. No, I, I well, so I think that the problem is that they know that it's got to be the exact place that they end up going because I think it says it's only one or two places. So I think that's like the only place that they would head. Like they're screwed as soon as they know they're heading. I don't know that's true because Indy right, exactly. says Indy says that Teddy's the reason they know it's that cave. Oh well, then yeah, then I have no idea. It's certainly <laughs> the cave, if not the island, because I think Fringy's right about that. They would know it was Syracuse because it is true that yes. the Archimedes only lived in Alexandria and Syracuse and nowhere else. So if Volda knows that, then yeah, he he will know they're not going to Alexandria, so he must know they are going to Syracuse, but. Where he wouldn't in know Syracuse, exactly where at least. on Syracuse, and it's not yeah. a tiny island. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like, if they, because the, they're surprised that he's chasing them, they shouldn't be surprised. Yeah. But then, um, yeah, it's Teddy getting kidnapped. Which, by the way, fucking contrivance like hell. Teddy's angry. It's like, why? Well, because you're doing all this adventuring when I thought we were in this for the money. The few <laughs> Wallbridge is like, oh, don't worry, we totally are in it for the money. I'm the one who's in charge. And then Indy goes, hey, get over here and help me. And then she goes over and helps. And so that's supposed to be like a signal to to uh, Teddy that's like, see, really, Indy's in charge. And that sucks. So he pouts, runs off and gets an ice cream, and then wanders into <laughs> Vola. Just wanders into him. And then turns around to run, and the big Chungus grabs him. And I was just like, fuck off, man. And to make matters worse, Indy's like, where's the little kid gone? Turns a corner and sees him getting put into a van and they drive off. And he's like, oh no, they caught Teddy. And I was like, why are they driving away with Teddy instead of capturing Indy and Big Willow Bridge? Because screw uh, you. All right, well, I think they said, oh, well, he'll lead. They know yeah, that but he knows. You can get way. Indy and her too. You can. You get them all guess. and hold a gun to the kid's head. Yeah. And then they take <laughs> you can fucking blow Phoebe Waller-Bridge's brain out. As a, as a, <laughs> you know, see, we're serious. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, <laughs> just terrible. Because they just drive off straight away. And remember, they drive off with directions from the kid on where to go, and yet they get there like an hour later than Indy and uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. That's true. Don't know how time works, I guess. That's okay. See, when you have a problem like that, you know, it's like, hey, that's just one of a couple, right? One of a couple hundred. Because um, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but there are there are several tweets that are like, you know, this film's getting a lot of hate. I don't see why. It's actually a lot of fun. It's like, I've seen um, those. Yeah. it's awful. <laughs> have we, have we had a scene where it's been like, well, that was pretty good? No, not one. No. Not really. I did, I did actually not. have someone in, in these, pretty much these exact words when I said on Twitter that it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was, only because it didn't make me eat my own face off. And they said <laughs> it was a perfectly acceptable action film. I don't know why it's so hard for people to accept. Oh, okay. I was thinking that's, that's because we don't all have your incredibly low standards. Um, some of us <laughs> pay attention to the films that we watch, but I don't even think you have to pay attention to this film to understand that it's deeply flawed and entirely soulless. That's not something that it takes a huge amount of deep reading to understand. It's self-evidently absurd. Well, there's weird, too, that Indy says, how much fuel have we got? And they say it's full on the boat. Like, how is it full? Didn't they have a whole trip to get to where they are? No. I'm not going to check the fuel amounts of the ship they were in versus <laughs> the amount of distance they had to travel, but I have a feeling there might be something there as well. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was thinking, too. It's like, oh, is it... Even with a full tank, would they make that trip? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't the screenwriter know. filled it back up. It's okay. No, oh, that's nice of him. Um, so yeah, we're at the we're at the cave, and apparently the clue is a whisper can be like a hurricane. And he's like, you got to get to the part of the cave where your echoes are the loudest. I didn't. Uh, th there's bits of this that I like because it, it is the year of Dionysius is is actually a tourist well it's a tourist attraction that's what i don't like about it i don't think really ideally at least you make the super secret location a tourist attraction because that just poses Somebody all sorts of questions like why hasn't it already been found but it was in myth i think it was the myth was created by caravaggio though um so it's not actually established lore of the cave that um yeah if you got to a certain point then there is this this confluence of echo which which i can't what the effect of that is you're not you can't actually go there in real life anymore i don't think that part of the cave has now been sealed up um, but it is famous for its its echo effect, and the echo is supposed to either reveal a piece of knowledge or to really maximize the sounds of a 
tortured prisoners because Dionysius of Syracuse was a famous asshole, even by ancient Greek standards. Other ancient Greek uh, dictators thought that uh, Dionysius was unpalatably tyrannical. Um, so nice little bit of history there that the film doesn't really understand or do anything with because I think all they were doing was Googling for tourist attractions in Syracuse and that's the one they came up with. Well, it's, it's unreal to me that they figure out the big secret entrance is a couple meters up from where the echo is the loudest and it's just this hole and it's like nobody's n nobody's gone through there. No nope. the tourist attraction <laughs> and nobody checked that. Cool. Was Dionysus the guy that used oh. the brass bull on people to torture uh, them? Quite possibly, like a... yes. He did lots of nasty things. I mean, that cave, one of the theories for the origin of that cave is that it was just used as a prison to torture people. Um, right. None of that really makes it into the film, sadly. Well, well, it is torture, so I guess some of it did, but it, it's not torture in canon. Right. Oh, and just in case anyone was confused, someone did just say, wait, Syracuse, New York? Like, yes, New York. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so, uh, they... Cross a bridge, go through a spooky bug room. This was actually mentioned earlier that it's really weird that Indy is like, ah. It just felt like the obvious opportunity to finally show Helena struggling with an environment for once. But, uh. That felt like such a box ticking scene, you know? It's yeah. like, we need an ick icky bug scene. Here it is. <laughs> And it was like CGI bugs. It's not even cool. Like in the old movies, they used real bugs. It was like, you know, yep. had some texture to it. Mm -hmm. uh, they come across a room where you have to put weight in a pool to make it all fucking drain, and they open up a secret entrance sort of stuff. Just, I mean, I say this, it's just a boring challenge room. <laughs> it's like, yeah. move the weights but, across, like, okay. But it's also, it, it's a boring approximation of, of history. I mean, no one ever would ever say that any Indiana Jones film is, is historically accurate, but at least they did interesting things with the Grail myth, and they did interesting things with... Raiders of the Lost Ark, and they actually tied it into various different sort of symbolic locations and symbolic items, and that's the mean. But well, by those means, he discovers the the place he needs to go to to find the thing, to find the thing, to find the thing. Whereas this one, I mean, what does anybody anywhere know about Archimedes? Well, he said Eureka when he got in the bath, and that's basically this entire puzzle scene. So you've taken one of the most I mean, Archimedes is largely responsible for. Uh, geometry as a, as a discipline. He was way more proud of anything he did in terms of theoretical physics than he was his fairly bog-standard inventions, and yet this film has just taken the most shallow understanding of something that he once said and made that basically the crux of this film's historical appeal. And it's just, it's so boring for a, a film series that's supposed to really venerate history that they should go in for, yeah, just tourist attraction history like this. It's There's no interest in it. Mm-hmm. Barely any depth to any of these scenes as a whole. There's not even time to really think about anything either, in terms of just uh, the architecture or the deeper meaning behind the history that would have created something like this. It really felt like, what if there was a pool, and like, you know, you'd think like, oh, don't step in the pool, but no, you do step in the pool. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> like okay, the whole right. displacement along. Uh, contraption thing felt very like. All right, let's just get on with it. Let's yeah. do the puzzle so we can get to the room with the thing in it. It had nowhere near the weight or like um, excitement of like the trials at the end of Crusade. You know, yeah, I think Raiders, where you know he has to use the staff of Ra to find the location in one tomb to go and find the location of a second tomb, which he has to dig all the way down and rappel down into, and it's it's tricky. It requires intelligence and physicality. And at the end of it, there's a setback, of course, because he's discovered. And it's, it's just so much more engaging than, yeah, they find a cave that no one really has any business not knowing about already because it's been there and it's a tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. They put some yeah. stuff in a bath and that's it. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, that's so cheap. Surely you can find something well, more interesting to do. They've right, put yeah. this level of effort into finding that hole. The bad guys, they get into the cave, which is as far as Teddy's knowledge goes. And then um, Boyd Holbrook just, just walks up to the way our characters went up there, and I don't know if he was supposed to have spotted something, but he's like crouched down and he just goes, you know, boss, over here. And then Vola comes along and he goes, that's where they went. Doesn't he point to the light arc? Which is, so th they used the riddle to find the place where they could see the light arc, and the other guys just follow them to the place where there is the arc of light, and they look up at the arc of light and say, hey, maybe it's up there. But if they can do it without having to solve the riddle first, then anyone exactly. else could have done that already. This is the thing. The <laughs> the clue about the present moon thing, I thought that was from the, the disc he got from the 
the thing that from the wax? I guess maybe yeah, I think so. is the implication that Teddy is the one that would have told them that was on there. I don't even know if he knows. That I don't even know if he knows. I don't even think he was. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. But these are things you could have in there. I, I'm surprised they didn't go the way of normal bad movies where Indy's got like a fucking thing in his pocket and it falls out and lands on the floor and then they pick it up later and they're like, they must have gone this way. Something that simple, you know? <laughs> or if like Phoebe Waller-Bridge eats a Mars bar and drops the wrapper there. Like, yeah. <laughs> why not? They were um, here. <laughs> <laughs> so then we get a... Uh, the kid nearly escapes and so they decide, right, we've got a... We gotta handcuff him to Big Chungus, and then oh we'll God, put the yeah. key to the cuffs in Big Chungus's back pocket while the kid is behind him. The pickpocket. I don't kid. see what could. I I can't see what could possibly go wrong. I don't know what you mean. So then, as they're crossing the bridge, the kid pickpockets the key out of his pocket because obviously the guy realizes mm -hmm. right when the kid's got it, and then he tries to like wrestle it from him, but they're on the bridge, so they both fall into the water. And well, the bridge this... breaks, right? Um, Pretty sure it yes. breaks. So the, the, I, I guess that needs to be... Well, do they use the bridge to get back later? Or is there a That's different That's why bridge? I'm pointing that out. <laughs> That's why I said it didn't <laughs> break. I, was like, I guess it doesn't break, but does it? Was like, I don't fucking, uh... I'm pretty sure that bridge breaks, and when they go back, it's just back. It, doesn't, <laughs> it just looks normal. The second bridge that we didn't see. Hey, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I only watched it one time, but... Yeah, I'm pretty to, sure it broke. <laughs> I'd need to give it a. I know that they sure. they like look at them having fallen in the water, and Volers like leave him. Indeed, like, yeah. I don't remember seeing a shot of the bridge after that. I think they fall through the bridge. I'm pretty sure that is what happens. Well, yeah. So if I, if, there's if, a thing that's if, holding if about being dangerous it. to cross, and when they're going across, so most of them are taking care. And then when the big guy goes across, there's a long sort of lingering shot on his feet, and it's wobbling a lot, and he's going really mm. slowly. And I'm I'm sure they fall through the bridge. Yeah. Well, yeah, obviously right. this has been highlighted because they leave this cave later on a bridge. It's very explicitly shown, so it's just like, I guess there was another bridge somewhere else that is another entrance into this place. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, they're falling through, and it's like the water's so strong, the stream of it, it takes them underwater and through like a little passageway. There's a grate with a hole in it. The, ki the kid is small enough to fit through it. And then he gets the key, unhooks himself, and then hooks the the, the cuff back onto the grate, the, mm -hmm. the grate with a hole that's too big for the guy to get through anyway, and swims away, and it just has a, a shot of the guy screaming as he realizes he's just gonna drown now, that's it. I thought it was a fucking weird scene, like... It's very... For someone who just learned, well, learned to swim, in big quotations... Uh-huh. He's he's doing pretty well underwater, you know. Just staying cool, doing all these things, putting the cuff back on, taking that time, not panicking. Well, part like, of it is just that uh, he took the extra effort to make sure that man drowned. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh wow, you you wanted him to die, eh? Definitely. I mean, he was a and piece no of shit, one. but you know, <laughs> it just felt a little odd. That's all. And what that's luck that that hole was there in the grate. Phew. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, you know, oh, yes. could have just been the great wasn't there, and so this, none of this happens. It could have been the great was there and no hole, so they just both die. It's like... <laughs> 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 They're both screaming underwater. <laughs> you can imagine the Chungus guy's like, why did you do this? We're both dead now. <laughs> you fool. <laughs> but why was the kid even still alive? Because they didn't need him anymore. Once they'd got to the cave and once they'd found the Crescent thing, which notably he didn't lead them to anyway. Why Arguably still... leverage? Yeah. But leverage for what? And then when he falls into the water, um, I keep forgetting his fucking name. Oh, okay. Jürgen yeah, says, water, Jürgen says, leave him. Whatever. So he evidently doesn't really care that much That's about true. that. So. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, but I mean, I mean, he's got to. <laughs> they got to. They got to keep him around. They got to find some way to keep him. Do you guys see like how like this plot is like tied together by like strands of hair, like it's barely, <laughs> chewing it's gum, barely connected. Yeah. Yeah. Um. There's a conversation that's had as well between Indiana and uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. He says, you're sure they won't hurt him? And he says, he'll be fine. Uh, where did you find him? And she says, he tried to steal my money once and we were inseparable ever since. And he says, I thought you were just about the money. He says, I am. Nobody memorizes their father's notebooks just for the money. I was more interested in the fact that she just said, 
I've been hanging around with a little kid as my helper because he tried to steal my money once and I stopped him. I was like, oh, you mean Short Round's backstory? Like one to one, <laughs> the backstory for Short Round. You just, you That's just. Right, yeah. And Indy doesn't recognize this at all or have any comment about it. I was like, oh, does James Mangold know? <laughs> like, <laughs> does the people who wrote yeah, this know? And then it just starts to, you know, draw your mind back to, man, why isn't Short Round in this movie? Why isn't he the successor to Indiana Jones? It's it's actually insane, because uh, it's impossible to have... Like, she was saying it, and I was like, oh, here we go. We'll have some more member berries about short round. Like, Indiana will be like, you know, I used to know a kid who'd... Pretty talented <laughs> pickpocket. I hope he's doing it. Or he'd be like, he's dead. <laughs> he's, oh. he's, he fucking died in Vietnam. <laughs> 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 But, uh, no, it's just, I just don't even think they know. And it's like, okay, oh well. Why not? Just remind me of how much this sucks. Don't you like how bad that dialogue was as well? I don't know, weren't you just in it for the money? I was. Well, better have Indiana explain how that's incongruent with the way that she's behaved. Yes. Just in case you didn't fucking notice. <laughs> well, dude, it's the same thing as, like, you know, our marriage was destroyed, yet you still wear the ring. Yeah, th thanks for <laughs> having absolutely no trust in me as a viewer to figure these things out. Nope. Yeah. Mm. I mean, if you want the audience to see the ring, just have a shot of the ring on his hand, like an insert, and then maybe yep. have a shot on Phoebe, like, looking down at the ring. She sees it, but she doesn't say anything. That's all you uh, need. It's a little too subtle. It's a little too, too subtle. Someone <laughs> might miss that. And we wouldn't want to write a story where you could miss anything that happens yeah. in it. God forbid you show, don't tell in a movie. God forbid the audio a viewer potentially misunderstands what's happening <laughs> in the story. We don't want to have that. that. Don't have any confidence in the brains of our viewers. So it's, um, it's worth mentioning, Indy and Thingy decided they're going to try and get the dial before Bola does, because the kid will be able to guide them relatively here as well. But luckily, they don't. Like Indy doesn't believe that Vola would harm the kid. Which is funny, considering what just happened. You fell into <laughs> yeah. a fucking, like, potential drowning, and Vol was like, oh well. <laughs> but, uh, the so point being, they know that this is time-sensitive. They discover the crypt, they open it up, they find the dial piece, and then they just sort of have a little sit and look around. Like, hmm. This is the <laughs> dial, this is it. Reminds me of Multiverse of Madness, where it's like, yep, this is the thing we need, hmm. Oh, okay, that? cool. And then Feeble yeah. Bridge is like, you know, it's weird. These images of a phoenix have propellers on them. And Indy's <laughs> like, that is weird. Huh, how about that? Hmm. Oh, God. <sighs> and at that point, then they have a drink of water, you, like, they read a uh, magazine. At, at that point, it does hit you, metal. You're right. It's just like, <laughs> oh, fuck. We don't need to worry about that. The viewers, we need to be careful. Chat are going to die if they, if we drop all that on them at once, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. You, can't, you can't dump that much on somebody without, you know. Right now, they're listening to us like break this down, and they can probably follow it. They're not going to follow it very soon. It's going to be completely lost. Wow, to this, them. this is the part. We're, we're right at the cusp of the film, absolutely descending into incomprehensible gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> we're real close. We're very close. So the shockingly. Really... Laugh out loud, funny. Yeah. Shockingly, yep. Vola turns up, and they're like, no, he turned up, oh, now he's got the dial. There's this really weird moment where Vola puts a gun to Phoebe Waller-Bridge, and he's like, you can choose between the dial and your goddaughter. And I'm just sitting there like, no, you've got all <laughs> the leverage, what do you mean choose? Just take it off him. Yeah. Why? <laughs> and then Indiana, like, passes the dial, and sh it, they show her recognizing that, like, wow, he gave, he gave up the dial for me. Like, what do you think would happen? You'd shoot exactly. you, and then just take the dial. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, like, yeah. There's, there's no choice to be made here. It's like, give me this or die. Like, yeah. It's so yeah. weird. It's such a forced mode of, like, uh, see that meaningful character choice? Like, no, you've done it wrong. No, you could have, you could have set it up to be a meaningful character choice, but in this situation, he has no leverage. <laughs> I, I don't know if this constitutes straying too far into the incomprehensible part of the film, but before he hands the dial over, they have discovered that there is a modern watch embedded oh, yes, in that dial. True. Yeah. Um, a modern wristwatch is on watch Archimedes' on skeleton. That's odd. Yeah. It's not only on it, it's in the dial, isn't it? It's a part of the mechanism. So oh, I think somehow, so, yeah. 
the yeah. dial has been created with a watch that won't exist for another few thousand years. Oh, I wonder no. where this could possibly be going. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, put oh, that no. in your pocket. Oh, no. Keep that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so in this scene, here we are yet again with the I must thank you for getting the thing for me, Dr. Jones. Yes. Again, and again. I knew this was going to come. <laughs> as soon as that line, they're heading west, I knew, like, this is what's going to happen again. Like, fucking hell. <laughs> Sorry. Go on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Teddy jumps onto Voler, I think. I can't remember. He's, he's like, on a statue, and he surprise attacks. And then... Yeah. Um, Indy grabs the dial, I think, but he's he's like, oh, you guys, get out of here, go! And then he starts shooty-banging with his gun, everyone's shooty-banging, and mm -hmm. uh, they're like, oh, golly gee, wow, should we should we get out of here? And then they see Indy get shot. Oh, no! And he's like, just go, just get out of here! And then she's like, no, Indy! And then leaves, and... I don't know, you're just sort of sitting there like... If you, I, I already knew they weren't gonna kill him in this film, but if I didn't, mm -hmm. I would be like, hmm... Uh oh. Uh, and then you sort of in your head, like, would it be better if he was to die or not? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, why didn't you shoot him in the head? Done. God damn I, it. I completely forgot how long in this film he spends shot and yep. bleeding. It's, it's probably it's... like 25, 30 minutes or something. <laughs> it... Yeah, to be fair, it, it looks like if I was to be very definitive that he was shot in the upper, his upper left torso. It's not quite yeah. his shoulder. It looks like it's yeah. more so on his torso. But it's it's funny how they handle it because the first time we see him back, he's like, "Oh, I'm so weak," and then next next scene is like action scene, woohoo, everything's yeah. fine. And then later, he's like, "Just let me die." <laughs> it is uh, the, the the creators would be like, "Yeah, he's on like a bit of a ticking clock now, you know," and it's like, "Yeah, <laughs> what does that clock look like?" They're like, "We're not telling you." It's like, okay. <laughs> Um, and it's really lame, by the way. The reason he gets shot is he's in cover, and he pops out to shoot, goes back in cover, and then he sees Phoebe Waller-Bridge is potentially leaving, stands up out of cover, and then says, go on, get out of here, and then Boyd Holbrook just looks at him and goes, okay, and shoots him. It's yeah. like, it, it's not like he got shot taking the bullet for someone, or because he was in an awkward position, or that someone moved around and outsmarted him, it's just like, no, he's, he's an idiot. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> um... Yeah, and then, uh, so they've escaped, but they're going to capture Indy now, because they don't want him dead. Vola wants Indy to see what he's going to do. <laughs> because of course Why? he wants to see Why? him. Because he's an evil trope. He's <laughs> like, ah, I need you to see my evil plan come to fruition. Haha. -ha. I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Yeah, and it's, it's the kind of thing where it's just, like, as a movie watcher, you're just like, Indy's going to do something at some point that's going to fuck everything up for you. Obviously. Yeah. And it's also yeah, this, yeah. this flip flapping around between, ah, kill these people. I don't care about these people. But then when it's like the main protagonist, it's like, oh, you're going to capture him. Yeah. I'm so and... cold blooded, except <laughs> when there's a main protagonist on screen. Well, you know that if he put a gun to Indy's head and pulled the trigger, it would jam. He'd be like, damn it. And then someone else goes to hit him with a shovel and the shovel handle time. breaks off. And he's like, oh, why? Yeah. <laughs> and just according, like, yeah, to, according to Jurgen's theory of what he's going to go on to do, he could leave Indy in the present, and he would still have seen what the results of that would yeah. be. Because That's right, yeah. you can't really ignore the fact that he's changed all of history. So he doesn't need to take him with him in any way. Even if he does want him to see masochistically the results of his, his evil plan come to fruition, he could have just left him here and he would have seen so exactly funny. the same thing. If you were like yeah. on the like the, with the writing team saying that, the, the only response they'd have for you was like, yeah, but Indy's our main character. <laughs> if he's not there, how can the audience see? Oh fuck! We're not well, they to throw you him. out the window like that meme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, the first thought I had when they were exiting the uh, the cave, Phoebe Waller Bridge and Teddy, I was like, you know, any bad guys worth their fucking salt would have slashed the tires of the car you came in on, and then they actually did. And I was like, whoa! Mm -hmm. So they fucked, right? It's like, no, the guy who works here at the caves, the one that they <laughs> shot. They just take his vehicle, being a, it's a bike. They didn't slash those tires. What? Yeah, <laughs> it's so fucking pointless. Like, oh no, we can't follow them. Oh, actually, we can. Okay, yeah. moving along. The scene <laughs> is like filler. It, you don't need it. It's like, how are they going to follow them when their tires are slashed? Like, you didn't have. If you were going to not slash the motorbike ones, why slash their ones? 
I don't know. Cause it's, cause it's just it's dumb as fuck. And yeah, they chase them. And now we're really entering the... Uh, I guess this is the third act. I don't actually know where the act breaks are in this one. <laughs> it's a little bit <laughs> fucked. <laughs> I don't fucking I'd know. say the low point is when Baller has the dial. He's like, yes, ultimate power. Ah. He doesn't say that, but it's basically that beat where he gets what he wants. Well, yeah, and so for those listening who haven't seen this film, the dial is supposed to give him the ability to manipulate, you know, past events, right? And Indy is, I guess, at the point of believing this is true now. And so he says, who are you going to kill? Churchill? Ike? And then Vola says, we're going to fly into Sicilian airspace, August 20th, 1939. We'll head north to Munich, where my quarry will be waiting for me uh, uh, for an update on his V-1 rocket. And then he says, what kind of Nazi kills the Fuhrer? He says, the kind that believes in victory, Dr. Jones. <laughs> Which I thought oh was funny. <laughs> He says, uh, Hitler lit a fire that could have burned for a thousand years. I saw every mistake and regret them all. History's a long list of losses, Dr. Jones. It's just a question of whose. Uh. <laughs> so cringy. Mm -hmm. Such a lame it's, bad guy. It's, where do you... I, uh, it's, it's hard to know even where to begin with it but okay let, let's say he did manage and nothing went wrong and he did manage to go back in time and kill hitler does, <laughs> what does he think will happen to him if he, he thinks does he thinks he'll take over right and that he'll he'll do everything properly quote unquote well and of course at this point you need to start like you would imagine he'd have the question so what time travel rules are we working in here am i oh. going to be impacted by the events that i manipulate in the past like can i delete myself from existence what does that look like? I don't understand why this wouldn't be something that. Yeah, I was gonna say. Wanna... Do you want to? Do we want to talk about the whole of it once they pass through the portal or now? Because we really could do either. Why do we have? Uh, what are we doing? Uh, why uh, indeed, not, metal? Uh, why uh, indeed? Every every fucking movie these days, <laughs> we have to talk about the fucking implications of time travel. Or it just won't stop. I don't, I don't understand the obsession. I really don't get it, like, it with time travel. Stop. Especially when nobody wants to put in the work to actually make their time travel story function properly. Like, I don't understand what the obsession is. I really no, don't. I don't know. If anything, and, and bizarrely, old Bruce Wayne in The Flash has put more thought into time travel than theoretical physicist Jürgen, whatever his name is, in Indiana Jones, even though he's an actual physicist and Bruce Wayne in The Flash is not. None of them make, neither of them make sense, but at least one of them kind of knew what he was talking about, whereas well, it doesn't seem to have occurred to, to Jürgen to even ask the question. I think that the problem, I think we briefly touched on this on Open Bar, the problem is that a lot, all of the other, all of the other Mr. all of the other, um, Man, my brain's not working. The Ark of the Covenant, the Holy Grail, you know, like these, th there's an element of, of uh, myth and mystery that you can always have there where you don't need to get into the nitty gritty details about how exactly they work mm -hmm. uh, because they're yeah. magical. But the problem is that, like this time travel just feels like science fiction and feel like magic. No, um, yeah. This, this has to have rules. Uh, you have to tell us how it works, and then we have to think about whether or not that makes any fucking uh, sense, which we've done 17 kind of times lately. The, the same problem that Kingdom of the Crystal Skull has. That's science fiction, and you can't hide behind myth there. Like, there's, there's a demand for an explanation for how these things work, and it seems like this film, it wants to be able to be like with the arc where it just says, this is how it works, and you basically accept it because it's magic. But like you can't hear. It has to work in a certain way. Like this, the, is, this is a situation where you, there needs to be some rules. The Ark, the the Grail, and even the Blood of Kali, for example, like they they all have mechanics that are wild, but still very much like they don't contradict at all. They're very straightforward. This one is so it much to say. Out of the gate. Yeah. I think if we can, I'll just set a few more oh. things that happen and then we'll try and talk about it in depth because there's there's so much wrong and it's it's so incredible how this is thrown in in the last like 20 minutes of the movie like it's we're doing this now throughout the movie after we had the in initial like flashback scene i was like oh i guess we're not doing not doing any time travel stuff i guess there was just a bit of bait in the in the trailers i guess i don't know because that was like the whole speculation, right? Where it's just like, oh, find a way for those flashbacks, and maybe there's like a young indie with a yeah. old indie, blah blah blah. There's nothing of this in here. They just I go thought with this dial, and they maybe do something. I thought that they were gonna do. Um, we were gonna have like the past and future running at the same time. That we were gonna. Yeah, do. maybe something like that. Uh, past indie has to do blah blah blah, and future indie has to blah blah blah, yeah. and you know, 
But uh, no, yeah, it's just the flashback scene, and then yeah. all the way up to now, where stuff is happening. Oh yeah. Bear in mind, then, Jones as, as has soon been as shot I saw this that, whole time. No, a, no efforts to heal him at all. Yeah, as as I already said, like when 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 you see that watch or this this mural, it's like oh fuck, we're we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're doing something, and it's not gonna be good. Um, so Helena and Telly, Teddy catch up to them. And I don't know if you guys noticed it, but there's this shot where they're hiding from the German soldiers behind something that's very much not concealing them, and the soldiers are about five meters away, looking at their direction. I was like, pretty sure all of them just saw you, but that's, that. you know what, it's low on the list at this point. <laughs> and yeah, uh, Helena says, this part drove Drinker like mad on open bars. <laughs> She's like, can you fly that plane? And uh, he's like, I've never flown that plane and oh. then she says you've never flown any plane and why it's like, did you ask why did you ask whether he could fly it if he's never flown a plane? It's, <laughs> what <laughs> like it's, How do you write this <laughs> and leave it in your movie <laughs> it's like well, it feels like it's supposed to be a funny goes thing on, she then goes on and says well no, he then goes on and says well i'll go and get it started and runs off and she says oh Fuck or oh shit or something. So like she doesn't want him to do it. But then again, why did you ask him if he could fly the plane if you didn't want him to run away and get in in the plane? And then she doesn't even go with him to get in the plane. Yep, because she wants to use him. I, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. She um... the only reason these choices were made to, was to facilitate essentially the action scene that they were about to do. Absolutely, but I think the I've never flown that plane. You've never flown any plane. I think that's supposed to be funny. Yeah. But, but then it was added no. on to her question, which was, can you fly that plane? Like, you're, do you, she's the person that said that and the person <laughs> that you've made do the joke. She's the same you person. Important to, uh, yeah. important, it's important, to yeah. important to look at your script and, then, and, and then redraft. Like, oh, so you're just wasting time now by making funny questions or whatever. Like, it's <laughs> not a time to be snarky, you know? And it would be an easy thing to fix because you could just have him say, like, have him look at the plane and say, "Hey, what about if we use that plane?" And she says, well, "Can you fly it?" And he says, "No." She says, "Well, can you fly any plane?" And he says, "No." And then, okay, problem solved. Like, it's not that difficult to to make it less ridiculous. It's just that they don't put any effort in. So, well, yeah, we yeah, there's so many ways to do it. It could be that he sees it and he's like, "I can fly that," and she's like, "You can't fly that." And he's like, "Yes, I can." She's like, "You've never flown a plane before." And then he yep. says, I'm going to get it, like, I'll get it started, but, you know, he's the rash one. He's, he's a kid, you could definitely run it that way. But, uh, no, dialogue's fucked anyway. And yeah, she decides that she's just going to chase them on her motorbike, and he sees that happening while he's trying to start up the plane, and you can't imagine what's going through his head, right? Like, I thought I, thought I was starting this up for us, but now you're, you're just leaving. What am I supposed <laughs> to do? Just, just, just prior to that chase sequence, though, obviously, so they've gone to this airbase where there are like relic planes, essentially like old World War II planes, because they want to fly very specifically an old, I can't remember what type of plane it is, but an old German bomber back into the past. Right. Um, and I was thinking, well, th th this has always been your plan. You are very well connected. You have the CIA under your thumb for part of this film. Are, are you telling me that you couldn't at any point have arranged for a modern day plane? And even if you wanted to like repaint it in the Nazi colors so it wasn't like shot at when you arrived, but, you know, fly something big and impressive and technologically advancing back through time. Because if your whole plan is to depose Hitler anyway, then that would be A, more useful, and B, much more impressive to people, and C, would actually aid the war effort going forward. So why did they have to go to all the trouble of finding a, a plane of the era when they could have used and repainted an actually impressive one? I don't even buy the he would be able to take over. I just don't. Even if he brought back a really impressive... Oh, yeah. I just don't get it. He lands and he's bullshit. like, I'm taking over... Is he going to kill his past self and assume his role in, in the history of the world? Is that the idea? Does his past self even exist if he goes back in time? Or does he remove his past <laughs> self? Or is he taking the place of his past self? And even if none of those questions arise, he kills Hitler and he imagines that he won't immediately be shot for a traitor? <laughs> I saw someone... <laughs> Yeah, I know. I saw someone mention this, by the way. It's like, so at this point in the film, the mission for Indiana Jones becomes save Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> That's base. Protect him at all costs. <laughs> Imagine he like jumps in front of Vola's bullet to Hitler and takes the shot. It's like, no, Hitler. <laughs> um, for who is supposed to be a brilliant mathematician, it seems like such a limited scope. Like it has to be 1939. Like you can go back anywhere, anytime. 
It's like, I mean, no, it has to be 1939. Oh, yeah. I we guess because like, he, he loves Nazis it. so much, yeah. It, he also thinks we finished space, so, you know, maybe he's not <laughs> <Yeah>. that smart. <laughs> well, and can, can the dial take you to the future? Or is that not possible? Right. It, it takes well, can you go back in time, in time and, and answer the final question that everyone always rises as a basic ethical question? Kill baby Hitler instead <laughs> and, you know, do something else with time. Why did you go back to the, like, the last conceivable moment when you might have been able to do this? And and try and change history from that point. Like there are so many things you could have done which are more effective than that. I know oh, it just makes no right. goddamn sense. It's end game all over again. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, well, and his mind is tiny on this subject. And he was like, "Man, there's so many other things you could. You have time travel, and you want to win World War Two. That's your thing. Yeah, <laughs> time travel, dude. Um, you you mean you don't mean he's gonna win World War Two? You guys are going to lose World War Right, II. right. It's all about yeah, losers. Uh, with this logic. Yeah. Um, yeah, Helena's like in the middle of a storm, just barreling down, uh, you know, the, the, the road with, with following the, the aircraft. It's, it's so hard to buy again. She's doing the like, I'm an action hero now. It jumps into like the, you know, the landing gear before it props back up, up and in and she gets in that way. Like Woody does in Toy Story 2. Oh wait, is that Buzz? <laughs> Who's, who does that? Is that Woody? That's Woody on Bullseye, isn't it? I remember. I feel like. I feel like. Well, they they try to get off the plane in Toy Story too, because Woody has to has get on, to, right? or they have to go. Well, they have to go on to save Woody, and then Woody has to get off the plane before it takes off. Yeah. Um, well, in any case, she does it. She's successful, and then cool. Indy starts to spot that a bunch of, I guess, shit on the plane, like the metal bits on the plane, are being dragged in a particular direction. And I don't know if that was... That's what gives him the idea of continental drift. He sees the two suitcases. The bullets yeah. fall off onto the floor, and then he sees two suitcases, I think just because of the vibration of the plane, just right. are moving. Yeah, they're moving. And that immediately, in his mind, makes him think, tectonic plates, yes! This is the thing that proves that you're wrong. It's, it's, um, it's a but, bit of a leap, I think. Well, to be fair, he's old, senile, and also dying, so maybe he's just <laughs> tripping. So, well... I mean, this is almost enough now that we could probably talk about it, because they're about to head into the portal that is there, and the dial directed them to, and Indy says, you can't go through that portal as directed by the <laughs> dial to take you to 1939, because the continental drift would have happened over a thousand, two thousand years, and that means that that portal will take you somewhere else. Except yeah. that... Portals in the sky are not affected by continental drift because they're not. I guess his point is the dial decides where things are based on things on the ground or something. I don't know. I actually really am lost at this point. I don't. Well, my my first question would probably be: Wait, so is this is this portal always here, or the the dial? Right, yeah, make that we one? should we should roll it all the way back to. Yeah. Are there no. loads of portals around it? Exactly. Are there just loads of portals? Is that is that what this? Is? He says it detects time fissures. Does that mean there's just a shit ton of po open portals that take you back and forward through time? No, because later on, Phoebe Waterbridge will give the line quick. The portal's closing. What? But why? <laughs> um, I don't know. It's incredibly lucky that they got that dial at that time so that they could execute their plan to go back to 1939. Because it sounds like if they had done that maybe two or three hours later, that window of opportunity would have just been gone. Well, so we get it also into the problem that it was like, they like set to do all of this the way that they do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's it was so painful. Play out that way. Um, I don't even know why they need the dial like the hands on the dial point you to the big glowy thing in the sky and it's like can't you just look up and look for the big glowy thing like i get it like it's in a bunch of clouds well, but, it, but it isn't okay. always cloudy How in any it, one area i don't say look like, when there's no clouds there's a flag portal <laughs> oh, well, so that? that means then that there are loads of portals that open and close at different times all the way throughout the universe question mark possibly well, yeah, because the, the, the Archimedes dial's points of reference are interstellar objects, so we no, no, maybe it wouldn't mean all across the universe then, because it's sort of like triangulating to... Well, so the, we got all this, but do you remember the line um, Archimedes, or I think Phoebe Waller-Bridge says it, about how he made the device specifically to take them here at this time? Yes. That's right. Meaning... That's right. That's right. So the portal... <laughs> 
That's not uh, that's got nothing to do with Archimedes, right? The portal is a, a natural phenomenon in this universe. Uh, yeah, it has to, but it means yeah. that he knew about it somehow. Yeah, it somehow he knows where the portal to oh. 1939 oh. is going to. Oh, well, sorry, the, the portal to 2214 <laughs> BC. Yeah, he knows where that one's going to open, and he knows how to direct them to it with the dial. And it opens right above a really important day in his life. Just I, just, so like, she, I don't yeah, even know where needs, to begin. It's battle. so fucked. The whole thing is so fucked. Because some people are probably listening right now be like, what is what is happening? It's like, well, they go through the portal and it takes them to 214 BC. The Romans yeah. besieging Syracuse. So we fly above the Roman Navy. Yes. Um, in World War II bomber planes. Uh, yeah. And the, they, Them going through oh, the portal was the one moment in the movie where I like perked up. Because I was, like, bracing myself. I'm like, this is going to be stupid as fuck, isn't it? Is there yes. going to be, like, dinosaurs? I didn't know what to expect. Well, and, and bear in mind as well, as soon as they go through the portal, their engines stop working, they have to restart them as they're falling, including that kid who's never flown a plane before. It just restarts his engines. Oh, with his random, presumably... Oh, well, yeah, yeah, luckily the guy in the back friend. wakes up at this point, and so does it for him. But meaning, if that guy wasn't sleeping in there, that he may have just died. And they would have all been stranded there. And yeah, why was, was he sleeping in the back. back of his own plane? Well, don't, just, you don't know. know. He's just tired. Yeah, he's really tired. <laughs> Maybe his wife kicked him out. He was like, fuck you, I'll sleep in the airplane. Oh, um, yeah, no amount of saying it's a closed loop is going to make this make sense, by the way. No, no, yeah. no, no, you um, can't. It, yeah, so if you want it more than justified just as a causal loop, you have to, like, like, what initiates the loop in the first place? How does that even Yeah, there's well, always that problem. There is always that problem. Well, the answer to that is kind of taught... It's taught the logical answer is that it always happened because it always happened because it always happened for infinity. Yeah, at infinity. that point, the universe isn't a straight um, line. It's like a circle or some shit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it, it, yeah. So, so Archimedes always needs to get the watch, to finish the dial, to find the portal, to leave the dial for it, the dial to be found for the portal to be found in order the watch people back to finish the dial and it just goes on like that turtles all the way down the only um, problem if it's bad enough right with leaving the wristwatch because that would change everything forever and ever and ever they leave a whole ass fucking plane all those pieces of tech inside it even stuff as simple as like the way that their clothing is made like it's it's it would change everything forever and ever and ever no, Archimedes so, knows what's up. He's just very. I like the idea uh, that Archimedes t t ordered the ball to just fucking bury all of that. Or like, <laughs> we're yeah. not touching it. It's too far away from us. But I'm going to keep the wristwatch. It's neat. For I, some I, reason, the way they... I. Th Sorry, go ahead, Metal. Oh, it's just even if they would didn't do that, it would probably. People would find that shit in the future. And it's like, why is there like a 4,000 old plane in the ground <laughs> what's going on Why it's so um, there for so long it's too much and i find it so weird that the film doesn't address it it's like it's, it doesn't matter if archimedes has a fucking wristwatch you just crash yeah. that there there's machine guns in there man <laughs> and then just uh she just goes later i think i think it just said it's like if you stay here you, you change time <laughs> like yeah time. i thought that was really done funny that. We'll, we've already we'll, done that we'll get to that in a sec because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, they they arrive, and as was mentioned, they they need to restart their engines and stuff. But then, once they do, they just stay really low during a war. Now, <laughs> what's really neat about airplanes is that you can kind of avoid most of medieval technology by flying <laughs> relatively upish. It's not even that far. You don't have to go that far. Um, they don't. And a fucking like I, I don't even know. It's like a it would it be a baluster? Is that what they're called? Uh, I the, guess so. I don't know That's what, what it was. Oh, ballista, yeah. Ballista, yeah. Uh, they're, uh, that comes right through their fucking ship. It's, it, it skewers them. And it, it hits they one of their engines, too. Three times or four times. Now to believe it for a second. So, um, the problem is that uh, even, even at the height they're flying, which is way too low because they shouldn't be flying that yeah. low, ballistas are not generally designed to be able to shoot for well, that. What a sort of legendary shot. Because nothing they're going to be shooting at will ever yeah. be that high. And they get to hit multiple times. Like, Jesus, what did they... Did they have, have some Mentos before they object. aimed? Like, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. yeah and Those planes are quick. And the fucker that launched it, what a legend. He nailed it. He hit them in their engine. Yeah. Like, if he had stabbed the plane any other way, he it probably would have done it. He doesn't even know what an engine is, and he still did it. 
He must be so he <laughs> killed the dragon. You know, that guy's uh, what a, what a great like, guy. Yeah, I'm a uh, legend. Okay, okay so th there's one little tiny piece of credit I'll give the film, which is pre uh, sorry, succeeded by a, a huge fucking problem, which is that they, they do sort of tease it. So when they first arrive at Syracuse in the present day timeline, they see the puppet play, and the puppet play in Syracuse has dragons fighting, um, uh, fighting in the Battle of Syracuse. And so it, it's sort of teasing the thing that the film will try and explain as, as the presence of the planes in the past. So the dragons have been passed down in folktale up to the present day people of Syrac Syracuse in, in 1969, whenever we are now, um, which I, I quite like as a, a little bit of foreshadowing, except that the only reason we know anything at all about the Battle of Syracuse is that both the Greeks and the Romans particularly were exceptionally detailed record keepers. Um, there is absolutely no way this would have happened, and if for it only to be passed down in folktale as dragons, because otherwise we would never have known the Dude, Battle they... of Syracuse took place, or who Archimedes was, or who killed him, and why. It's it's completely unbelievable that the Romans wouldn't maybe have noted the fact that there were giant metal machines flying around in they the sky. They had the dragon's corpse. It was right there. They could have yeah. literally drawn it. The books. Yeah. I just, uh, no, yeah, I don't buy it. And you know what I don't like, too? You've highlighted that, and I think it's relatively fair. It's like, oh, that's kind of a cool, neat detail, but I don't like that they happen to have that there at that time, and also, if you guys remember, he happens to be talking about this very fucking battle, and the, uh, the dial itself, and his, his, his last lesson in uni, yeah. it's like, I wow. Surprised. I wanted to mention that later, yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, uh, there's a lot of different media that does this, like a school lesson is about something, but it's it, Breaking Bad is the one I would always go to, right? He talks about chemical change and what it takes for something to become something else and like in that episode he's also going to turn from being the more mild-mannered uh, teacher into c c further going along and it's like drug dealer sort of persona i'm pretty sure it's the one where he, he throws the meth and he's like this is not meth that episode i'm pretty sure the lesson in school is all about chemical change or whatever and it's like oh that's kind of interesting the more you think about how it works with chemicals maybe you could um draw something out of it about how human character changes over time, what journeys we go through. Instead of just being like, whoa, I was teaching a lesson about this war, now we're at the war. Foreshadowing. Whoa, yeah. crazy. Like, that's... <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And anyone Riding. in this lecture hall, tell me who's gonna show up in the third act. You, suspicious peppy girl in the background <laughs> I haven't seen before. Uh, Archimedes. Yes, of course. So, um, it's very uh, on the nose. I think it's time to highlight what I think is probably the stupidest part of the whole movie. Uh, oh, ooh, ooh, yeah. But their, their aircraft is getting peppered with all kinds of stuff, and the people on board are rather angry about this. Vola's panicking. Boyd Holbrook is like, oh my fucking god, they're taking us down. What do we do? So they slide open one of the doors. And Boyd and another henchman get their pistols and start shooting randomly at the Romans. <laughs> I was I started laughing. blown away I when was, that was happening. It's like, that what was, is this clown movie? So hilarious. It's, he just uh, goes like, ah! Just, uh, it's like, what are you doing? Down at the Romans Why are you doing? Their plane is crashing. Like, what the? What is the what fucking point? <laughs> what is <laughs> fucking? How, yeah, how yeah, can you be gun. that stupid? Do you not know what guns? How they work? <laughs> like, what? Why? So, what? What, I, what's, I, what I, the? F <laughs> and I think they even have Indy be like, "What are you doing?" And it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. He just starts peppering the fucking soldiers, and if a new one hit him. And they still won't kill Indiana, by the way. He's free oh, on no. their aircraft, questioning their decisions, and they just won't kill him. They're just like, nah, that's fine. This guy's busy killing all the Roman soldiers, I guess. At one point, he just fucking breaks the cockpit window <laughs> and starts shooting out of that starts one. Starts shooting too, yeah. And then he gets on a minigun. He gets on the minigun and starts shooting. Or one of them does. Yeah. Oh, it's and so it's like, good. What are you guys? What are you way. doing? What are you doing? <laughs> I think some, somewhere in his head, the question asked is, why am I shooting Romans? Because I want to save Hitler. And it's just... Uh... <laughs> That's the best summary of this action scene. We have to kill the Romans to protect Hitler. <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, 
uh, by the way, devoid of humor as this film was, I was laughing quite hard in the theater. I don't think this was this meant whole to be thing. funny. I don't think any of this was. No, I don't think you no. Were be laughing at this guy shooting Romans with a pistol out of his <laughs> descending like World well, War II bomber. It's also funny that this <laughs> mustache guy has been there this whole time, and this is what he is, what he ends up be being. Like he goes from being like the, a side bad guy to go. Who goes like in between, like sometimes in between comments, he goes like, oh, that means this and this. And it's like, thank you. And we just <laughs> take off and just like, fuck it, I'm going to shoot Romans now. <laughs> you can repurpose the Monty Python question to what did the Romans ever do to you? Yeah. <laughs> no, stop it. Uh, I, I do wonder what the filmmakers exactly thought how the audience was going to react to that scene. Whether the audience was supposed to be like, oh, wow, it's like back in time. Or they were supposed to be mildly amused, or maybe it was supposed to be laugh out loud funny. Like, I, this is so ridiculous. I seriously I don't know worry what they were thinking. That they thought like, well, of course they'd shoot back. They're shooting at them. What? <laughs> I, I, like, I genuinely worry that they would say that. Uh. Like, oh, no. <laughs> um, Vola <laughs> commands the pilots to go back to the portal. And they're like trying because they're pilots and they don't want to fucking be here, obviously. And then they don't do it enough. And so Vola starts fucking with the controls. And then he starts like finger wagging them for not doing it good enough. And then they both get killed by random shit just coming into the plane. This is one of the tropes that's also really annoying. Go back. We're trying. Oh, let me try. I can't fly a plane, yeah. but let me do well, things. It, it gets better, right? Like, if you, anyone who's been here for the whole stream and hadn't seen the film, we've been talking about how useless and pathetic Vola is. The next we see him is just a shot of him basically crying on the ship. He's just sitting down, head in hands, just tearing up, because it's all over. His whole plan failed. Oh, no. <laughs> I wanted to kill Hitler so badly. <laughs> it's and for, for, for the continental drift. <laughs> <laughs> what? The continental Why are the Americans drift protecting my... Hitler so badly? <laughs> the continent... I... Like... What the continental drift meant that, like, come on, <laughs> how far did the continents move in two thousand years? It's an like, inch a year, more? so two thousand inches. I don't know how that is in. Wow, two thousand like... inches. Is that like how much is? I don't know your. I don't it's, know it's just that crazy, it's crazy. And apparently, that is enough to go from. We go back twenty years or whatever it was to we go back three thousand years. years. Yeah. <laughs> like okay. It's 0.05 right. kilometers, apparently. <laughs> oh, wow. And that's, no, that's enough not a lot. To... And then, of course, as people are probably, like, going to point out, right? Like, how, how much has Earth moved in the last yeah. 2,000 years? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Archimedes accounted for that. Don't you worry. Like, what? A billion well, kilometers? That might be even fair, be a low ball. He would have accounted, or could have accounted for that, because he was friends with Eratosthenes. Eratosthenes counted, uh, calculated the first sort of accurate curvature of the earth and also earth's axial tilt and also its position in relation to the size of the sun and the position in relation to the sun so like he could have known all yeah, this shit yeah, but the yeah, film doesn't but he know any of that he well, didn't calculate you the know. continental drift so fuck you <laughs> <laughs> um, I also find it amusing that if he didn't calculate it properly that means there's a portal just to the left of the current portal that goes to the correct place it's like oh shit it was that one <laughs> fuck the way I thought it worked for some reason is depending on what angle you approach the portal at, that will uh, alter what time period you come out the other side. You know what I mean? So mm. I figured that was the, if there's any calculation involved at all, it must be that. And the dial somehow tells you the exact angle to approach it at. Otherwise, what's the calculation? If you can just go through a hole and no matter what angle you approach it at, you're always going to come out at whatever it is, 200 something BC. Like, what's the calculation in that case? Like, I don't get even even setting aside the whole continent continental drift thing. Like, how can you be so precise and certain that you know it's gonna be like uh, nineteen thirty nine on the other side mm -hmm. when there's so many know, like you're in, in this either. turbulent yeah. plane and, and flying in a storm? Like, really, you're gonna fly it at just the right angle? You're so certain. That it's going to be exactly 1939. And he is very confident when he comes out the other side for some reason. He's like yeah. looking at the clouds or something. And he's like, ha ha, yes, we did it. It's 1939. It's like, <laughs> it's not going to be 1939, is it? And no. how did you, what makes you think that? Why are you so certain right now? I don't get it. But all, is it <laughs> Ar Archimedes who did not know about continental drift? 
created the dial to bring people back and got cosmically lucky that the people in the future who use the dial forgot that Archimedes well, didn't know about continental drift. Is that how that works? I think that what we're meant to conclude actually is that Indy was just like wrong completely, that it was fucking irrelevant. <laughs> like the continental drift, that didn't matter at all. It was always, there was only one portal and it yeah, went back uh, yeah, to this point. Yeah, I think point. by the time you hit the end of this, they want to make it as simple as there's nothing to consider except this device will lead them through this portal that will lead them to this time in order to make all of this happen. Yeah, I think that's all that's that there it. is mm. to it. <clears throat> Which is so they didn't create hilarious. the portal with the dial, did they? Like, the portal was already uh, there. No, the portal... I, I, <sighs> yeah, I think the portal is already there, but fortunately it was well, the that portal means... that led specifically to this time. That means there, there are just portal. time fissures everywhere, and that that's just something well, that this universe will deal with some other time. <laughs> like, people I, going through portals I, or something. Uh, 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 like, the world of Indiana Ooh. Jones, the more that time advances and everyone's flying around and stuff, the more people are just gonna randomly fall through time and fuck everything up. Oh no! <laughs> I mean, wouldn't it have been, like, made more sense for Jürgen to go back to Raiders of the Lost Ark to ensure the Nazis get the Ark and so their armies are invincible and so they win? Like, there's just any number of different possible permutations of things he could have done that he would also have known yeah. about. Um, right. No, it has to be 1939 because I love Nazis. For the, yeah. Wait, hang, he, he hang loves on. Nazis. I also think, hate Hitler. Yeah. I was thinking about something. So, so Archimedes made this thing that makes portals or whatever. Oh. Why did he? Why did he make the portal appear like somewhere up in the air? He didn't make where the, the portal appear. It was already there. He didn't make the portal appear. It's just that there was the. He portal knew that there. it would be there because of this event, and he guided them to that. Even. Even though how the <sighs> fuck what? he didn't do that. I don't want to talk about it anymore. No, I mean, <laughs> uh, so their, their plane crashes. Um, they do. get shot down. Well, before that, dead. we got uh, Helena oh, is, right. is yeah, yeah, getting yeah. onto the ship and she pre pulls a lever that sends all a bunch of the backup Nazis just fall out. And as she's trying to climb over it, there's a guy who's hanging there looking for like, oh god, then she says, sorry, you're a Nazi. <laughs> Which was again just like what the, f like what what year are you from? <laughs> like, it, was, it just doesn't match at all. It's just like every single second, it's like I get reminded. Oh yeah, this is a movie. To be fair, this whole sequence, I was just like, what insane goofy nonsense. But it would always be better if she wasn't in the scene. Is what I'm saying. Per the rules of this film, she could well have come back through a time portal using the dial that Archimedes made that gave to Indiana Jones that gave to Archimedes that ended up in her hands, and then she used it in the year 2023 to go back to 1969 to go back to 19... Uh, no, 2063 BC. I don't even care. But yeah, it, like she could have come from the future. That's a possibility for her insufferable dialogue. Dude, imagine she when she opened that up and all the Nazis just fall into the water and then swim to shore and just live, like... In this time, like, <laughs> like, well, time to find a trade, I guess. Yeah, do they immediately drown, or do any of them survive? And are they like pivotally responsible in the development of Roman civilization? <laughs> the Romans got a lot of their ideas from the Nazis. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, then and then they bail out. They jump out of the plane with a with parachute. parachute. Oh yeah, she does. She gets the final kill shot on uh, Vola. Not sure why they gave it to her, but she's the one that gets it before he can shoot Indy. Um, I guess it's not necessarily that that kills him, because he crashes and... Dude, it's so fucking funny. The plane is just, like, about to smash into the ground, and Boyd Holbrook is still there with his machine gun going, like, Fuck you, Robert! <laughs> Fuck <laughs> you. All I can gauge from, like, this entire sequence and their demise is it's meant to be... We see Indiana Jones villains, usually they, you know, th their undoing comes from their own actions. It's like they get themselves killed, but mm -hmm. in this case, it's like, holy shit, like, this is just... What was all of this? Silly. <laughs> this is just really, really, really silly compared to, you know, if, I mean, obviously the Holy Grail is, is probably the best one of just his complete and utter ignorance of, of, uh, of like, all of this leads to his undoing compared to Indy, who understands all of this. He's the knowledgeable one, and so he prevails compared to this, where it's like, yeah, I guess they screwed up and they went through the wrong portal, flew really low, and got hit by a bunch of, uh, like, arrows, and then crashed. Strong then arrows. random soldier goes to try and kill Phoebe Waller-Bridge and, uh, uh, 
I was about to say Han Solo, jeez. Indeed. <laughs> and then he gets shot in the back, because Archimedes has shown up with his two archers, and he's like, hey man, um, the long and short of their conversation is basically just them figuring out that this was always gonna happen, I guess, and that they're gonna make it happen. They're all very chill with this. <laughs> it's, it's very strange. Um, they even get to the wreckage of the plane, which, by the way, cornucopia of fucking incredible technology. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's just, the, the, I just don't buy that that won't change everything forever, but whatever. The film's saying it is. It won't. It's like, oh, okay. But like is said, Indy starts to basically imply like he'd like to stay here. Yeah, I think I like it here. You guys go. Reverse the coordinates and you can go back I, and you'll be fine. I want to stay here in this war zone. This is nice. <laughs> well, so this is the thing that I was drawing from it, and I was like, this is really sad that this is what I'm drawing from it, but I'm pretty sure that's the truth. He's not staying here, so to speak. Like, he's not like, I really want to be in this time to go have... He's like, I'm done. I just... Yeah. I'm just gonna die. And and you know what? If I get to bleed out while looking at history in action, that's pretty cool. And then Phoebe Waller-Bridge is like, well, no, we're gonna get you home and then sort out your bullet wound and you'll be fine. And this is basically Indy's scene of telling her, like, I don't want to live. Yeah. And that fucking sucks. Yep. The most charitable <laughs> interpretation of it is that he he doesn't want to live in the present because he has nothing to live for then. Whereas at least here, I think he uses the line, "I've studied this all my life," and so. But he knows he's going to die. Well, yes. My um, like I said, I think the best faith interpretation is that he'd rather die watching this battle unfold than go back and live. But then I mean, she, she uses against it. Well, what do you want? Like a slow death with with leeches, um, which would entail. If she's right, then you know they might. He might be captured. Maybe someone would try and save him, but he would die much more slowly. So it wouldn't be dying just in the course of the battle. I that assume is by far the most likely outcome. I assume that was her saying like the absolute best case scenario because either he's gonna bleed out like now, or he's gonna bleed out soon, or he would just be killed. I don't see how he's gonna be able to survive this. No. Like even even if he had everyone trying to save him, I'm not sure they can save him from that bullet wound. That's gonna be. I mean, tough. No. Also, the like Archimedes doesn't survive this. Yeah. Although the film seems a bit unsure on that point, but he's supposed mm -hmm. to die in this battle. Um, and yet, apparently he has time to finish the Dal and, and organize his tomb to be built in the place where they have to go and find it later. And, oh, yeah, I'm not sure the film really allowed enough time for that to happen. But on, on Indy, I don't know. I, I think, yeah, maybe they are coterminous. It is, you know, I want to stay in history and that does entail death, basically. Maybe you're right. I think well, he's it's so very at peace with though, dying. Because every single Indiana Jones film, he's totally willing to essentially lose the treasure, walk away from it, walk yeah. away from the thing that he'd been seeking because it's not worth it. And now here, the final time, after having four times made the right choice to let it go, to not look at the Ark, to let go of the Grail, mm -hmm. and then he just decides, oh, I'm just going to stay here. You know? <laughs> like, it's just... Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, he says. I, he, I says, think he would like decide to stay if like he was so thoroughly convinced that he wouldn't be able to make it work with uh, Marion. But then at the end, all it takes is her walking through the fucking door, and then it's like fine again. Then and, even like, then, you've got the whole time problem because if he decides to stay, even because of for that reason, up, yeah. well, he's he won't ever live in the present. So basically, it means that he will die. Or cease to exist rather in one timeline in order to exist in this timeline. Um, and so he right. has nothing worth living for in his actual life span, life timeline. Um, yeah, I, I don't know about that. I think really the, the most tragic thing of all, though, is that he's never convinced otherwise. He doesn't, he, he doesn't almost fall for temptation and then see the light afterwards. He's perfectly willing to accept this. And is just yanked out of it by somebody else because he never makes the moral realization himself. Speaking of which, um, the, the line is, get on the plane, I'll be alright, I need to do this. And then she says, so do I, and punches him. And I happen to know, really well, Robert Bridges comments on this moment in the film, she says mm -hmm. that it was, uh, it was really funny. Well, oh. fuck. But... The thing is, a lot of people apparently thought this was funny. I, I'm aware of audiences that laugh at this moment. I have seen audiences laugh at this moment. All three of them who were in the audience on the thing I watched laughed at it. Um, so, maybe, because it was so fucking dumb. Sure. I, I just, yeah. uh, it's, it's really like, wild uh, to me because I was just fucking annoyed. Uh, like, I think, um, 
I genuinely you did think it, Marvel uh, movies oh. have ruined the way that people like because you often see where people I, like there have been a few instances where people laugh at something that was clearly not funny, but it's almost like they've been conditioned by Marvel movies that they're meant to be laughing every now and then. Mm-hmm. Look, the, yeah, remember I the, saw it was like, ugh. Okay, I guess. To me, it's this like fucking tragic, broken old man basically saying, "Just let me die with something I'd enjoy." And then yeah. she's like, fuck you, knocks him out and drags him back to hell, which is what he hates. You know what I mean? And then, and then, like, that's funny. It's like, good God. Well, so I guess they somehow managed to get him back on the fucking plane in time. Do yeah. a off, get through the portal, even yeah. though they said, it's going to close soon. It's like, well, yeah, no, that's balloons not Balloons really aren't that bad. They're kind of fine. Yeah. I didn't like the time jump from the punch cut to black, then he wakes up. In it's back bathroom. in this fucking apartment. Yeah. How long has he been knocked out? Yeah, I wanted to see how right they got hand, back, dude. if that's what they're going to do. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, so he wakes up, and he's miserable, and he says, you should have let me die, basically. He says stay, but you know what he means, and then she's like, yeah. I couldn't <laughs> do that. And he's like, why not? And she says, for starters, you'd have changed the course of history. Oh, we're done. We, 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 then he says, yeah, is that a okay. bad thing? Just like... <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> I mean, there are some pretty major implications generally when you change history. It's pretty unpredictable. Yeah. Indiana also, Jones might be one of the believe... main people I would ever pick from fictional characters who would never want to go back in time and change shit. That was that yeah. was his whole moral dilemma with the Nazis trying to use the Ark for a weapon, or the Nazis trying to use the Holy Grail to give them eternal life in the present. It was this idea that yes, the past is the past. Myths are myths. Artifacts are artifacts. They belong in museums because we shouldn't be using them today. Um, but also, as far as this film goes, if they've or have they already figured out themselves that this was essentially a closed timeline loop because they know that Archimedes gets the watch to get the dial to be made, which means they must always have gone back but if they know it's a closed timeline loop then they must already know that what they've just done is always what happens and indy could well, never have stayed there but at the end, right th something that's really confusing is that at the end of the film he's got the completed dial and the watch like on his table so they didn't even leave it with like archimedes so i don't even understand like if he if it was a self-fulfilling prophecy do they leave the watch on the corpse of Jürgen? Because I know she has the line, he has to make that himself, by the way. Um, About the dial, yeah. And and so that I means they think... are using pieces of ancient, like, well, futuristic Nazi technology to create technology. Oh, God, it makes no goddamn well, sense. Someone, someone in chat just highlighted this, and I haven't really got a counter for it. Is it um, so... How is it that Phoebe Waller-Bridge has concluded that Indiana Jones doesn't die here in terms of how this works, but all those other guys definitely did? Like, she's like, you know, you stay here, it'll fuck everything up, but all those other people and the crash ship... She even says, like, you can't have the dial because that'll fuck everything up. It's like, woman, yeah. if, 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 if we're talking about that, like, it's already fucked. All of it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what I was trying to point out earlier. So but if there's Indy already so much new stuff here. But if he bled out on the way to the airplane, just fell over, and he was actually just, you know, brain dead, hot stop, whatever. And it's just like, oh, I guess that that just That's that is fine. what happens then. Okay. And then again, you you already have like the, all the clothes. You have the you have the plane there. There's gonna be some some kind of jump in technology for whoever's gonna check that shit out. Oh, yeah. It's gonna do something. Well, um, just, yeah, the idea of like a massive like World War Two era plane wreck in ancient. Yeah. Like that, <laughs> like, and, and what do we get from it? We, all we get from it is the propellers on the little phoenix mm. picture. Oh, dude, and guns! Like just yeah, the like that. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. There is the oh. argument. So, so that's Arthur C. Clarke's maxim is that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So, yeah. Nah. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> it's it's all you need, like, right? Really pushing, but but no, it doesn't work because. I mean, there's also there's an historic analog, analog. Sorry, so so when the Romans left uh, Britain in whenever it was, um, we they'd been building with bricks and glass, and the native British population didn't know how to do that, and we didn't do it again for another six odd thousand years. But the film has kind of defeated that because it points out several times that the Dial of Archimedes uses technology that won't be seen again for another two thousand years because it's it's so fantastically advanced. And the fact is that 
yeah, sufficiently advanced civilizations know how to make use of brand new discoveries in a way that unadvanced civilizations don't. And if you're telling me that the Greeks with the likes of Archimedes, who preempt the 14th century in technology, can't figure out some kind of use for World War II era uh, technology, no, that, no, it doesn't actually. I, hold I, it, I honestly believe if they had, let's just say, you know, five machine guns, they disconnect and detach they break it even and they see how it all and they're just like huh this is interesting this looks like it does this which does that which does that and then they actually try it and then it shoots and they probably fucking kill someone back and they're like holy fuck that you know like it they're human beings they're not gonna just go this is club boom boom that's all it do i don't know Blah. like you just look at the mechanics you open them up and you have a look at how everything works and you're like whoa how did they machine this how did they get metal to bend in such a like questions like that sure but they'll be able to figure out just by clicking things and pushing buttons it's like oh this does this this does this this does this well, and of course fundamentally you've got the problem as well of how are they going to mistake it for a dragon it's it's metal it's <laughs> not alive it's it's, hey. it's it's a piece it's a vehicle <laughs> I'm a and they know alive. it's a vehicle yeah, no. no the, uh, even metal and I'm, I'm metal suggesting alloy, that right? even if they can't <laughs> fully comprehend everything there and make use of everything, it's still going to have dramatic changes upon time. Of course time. it is, but yeah. we're not. We're done. We're done with that. We yeah. we don't. The only neat thing to facilitate the whole time thing was that Indiana Jones doesn't want to live in the present, and so that's like the only purpose it serves. And let's not deal at all with what we've created in terms of this time travel as a, an element of this world. Oh, it's shit, done. I'm... It's over. Moving on. There's Nothing only like five minutes, minutes left of the movie. Another good example, though, the Romans had um, basic rudimentary steam engines way before the Industrial Revolution. So they are basically familiar with the principles that underpin like internal combustion engines and things like that. And things like that. So they, they, they would be able to see at least analogies with what they are looking at and what they already have. Um, yeah. No, there's no way yeah, it can't exactly. dramatically it's, it's improve broken. things. It's totally broken. It's fucked. The whole, it's it's a disaster, guys. <laughs> yeah, absolute disaster. Um, and so upon that comment, uh, she then says, "You're meant to be here, Indy. Here." And then he says, "For who?" And now, before we go further in what the movie is, I just hate the fact that you actually have suicidal Indy specifically because he thinks mm -hmm. he's worthless at this point. That sucks. Well, and just that Indiana, he has no capacity to essentially facilitate this growth himself. Yeah, None he can't, it he can't, it sounds like he's lost any meaning in life. What the fuck? <laughs> like, as if he didn't derive meaning from his work. There's so as much he derives meaning from, but he's like this he meaning from. despondent hobo person that just doesn't well, care just, about anything. He seems, to, he seems to have unlearned a lot of lessons that he learned over the original trilogy. And, anyway, and again, <laughs> just to emphasize, how lame is it that he doesn't even, he... He isn't the person to essentially facilitate the resolution of his own story. He yeah. doesn't get to do it. Oh, she well, does. Yeah. So, but I don't even like the answer to the question the movie posits, right? So he asks the question, who am I here for? Then the door opens and Marion comes in. It's mm -hmm. like... Yeah, and this is her just showing up right at the end of the film as though it wasn't even planned at all. Yeah. Um, this is something that they make explicit. It's like, Phoebe Walbridge, you were the one that set all this up. Wow, she told Marion to come here. She's told Marion that, that Indy is back. That's apparently what she told her. Like, do you understand what's happening? Like, that they had what is essentially the, the bigger parts of the divorce because Indy wasn't good enough to console her when their son died. So they split. And now this fucking idiot, who has no idea what's going on between them, just told Marion, yeah, Indy may have actually been suicidal to the point where I had to knock him out to prevent him from killing himself, but he's back. Do you, have, like, do you know how much that annoys me? Like, you have no mm -hmm. fucking clue what's going on between these two people. You have no business putting them together like fucking action figures, and then congratulating yourself. <laughs> Like, imagine Marion came in and said, like, she said you were back, and then Indy's like, what does that even mean? And then she's like, let me guess, she lied just to get me in here. You don't want the divorce, do you? You're gonna run this out? Like, they have, like, a horrible fucking fight in the middle of the end of the movie. <laughs> like, and then Phoebe the bridge is just like, wow, why didn't that work? I'm so confused. It, everything is chill, even though nothing has fucking changed for nothing them. Nothing changed. Yeah, nothing doesn't even respect its own, like, insane, stupid retcons. It's like, these two had such a rocky relationship, they f fucking broke apart. But now Phoebe Waller-Bridge said, get back together, and so they did. So they yeah. did. Ah! Oh! 
That was then, his line earlier when she says you could change history, and he says, and that would be a bad thing because he's for some reason decided that yeah, history is so irredeemably <laughs> yeah. awful okay. that any change would be better. Mm -hmm. And now he's expected yeah. to make do with the fact that all it takes is somebody else to say to Marianne, yeah, come back. Um, I, I guess they were trying to pay off the adventure line from earlier. So Indy has been on an adventure. The fact he's been on an adventure means that he is he is bad. I know that even that doesn't make any sense. That's a reach. No, I, I can't. <laughs> I, I guess the only thing we're very, very lucky about is that we've got Phoebe Waterbridge's character who lacks a father, who is redeeming Indiana Jones as a father figure and bringing Marion back. And she doesn't end that by saying, yeah, my name is such and such Jones. Um, that's that's something. At least she hasn't done identity theft. I Well, yeah, I guess you know we've got some other movies to compare to on that front, but... Uh, I don't even like that answer to the question. It's like, who is Indiana Jones here for? And there's like Marion. It's like, that's not what it should... It shouldn't be that Indy will live because Marion is here. It should be the, the fundamental. It should, it should be like, I should exist because I am a meaningful person. I could add to the world. I enjoy it here. I have friends. I have a job that I find meaningful. I enjoy understanding history. I love the influence that all these people had on my life and the life I live. No, it's just... Well, you could get back with that on and off girlfriend. Yeah, like it's it really is not like a resolution that is derived from core aspects of Indiana Jones as a character. Shit. And I hate making that yeah, his life is shit. now about Marion. It's like what? She was, was definitely already, important. It was already a problem with Crystal Skull. Yeah. Like sort of retroactively giving like her way too much. But this film gives her even more, even though she is less of a component of the story. She's only in it for like two minutes. Well, yeah, because someone just said on and off girlfriend, he married. It's like, yeah, that's Crystal Skull's stupid baggage. That's Crystal Skull's. That's not <laughs> The Last Crusade, which is the canonical ending of Indiana Jones. Absolutely. Not even it close. is. They ride off into the sunset. That's the end. None of this is. This they is all did a did it. Dream. It's done. <laughs> it's exactly. Yeah. It's burned it in the fire. And I think that if. Uh, Mangold heard everything I just said. He'd be like, no, that is the point. You see, we show Marion, then we show Sala, then we show the kids. Remember earlier in the film, he said that the kids were learning a lot and learning well, and the Indy's the reason that they were able to get over here and that they respect American and Egyptian culture and history. The point is, all of these people are positively impacted by Indy, and that they're all the reason that he should stay. They're, they're all the, the, the for you is answered by not only all of these people, but then, think about it, it's all of us. We appreciate Indiana Jones. He's a great character. He's inspirational, blah, 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 blah. And all I'd have to say to all of that is, you fucked up. If that was your actual <laughs> fucking goal, holy shit. And why the hell didn't you have Indy figure this out himself? Why did you have Phoebe Waller-Bridge explain this to him and why set it up somebody for else? him? Why not somebody else? So let's say, you know, Salah's around and he keeps in touch with Indy and he knows he's really depressed and he knows what Marion means to him. So why doesn't he just tell Marion, look, Indy's really depressed and then she turns up and none of this happens? Because like, because for, for, this to, for this to work... Then Mar Phoebe Waterbridge's character has told Marion that Indy is back. That makes Marion surely quite a self-absorbed, if not completely selfish person, in saying that I'm not going to be a part of this guy's life unless he is go get him, up and at him, and the kind of guy I remember. She's not actually going to take any agency in that. She's only going to come back if she's told that he's already fixed. So what does that say about her character? What does it say about Sada's character that he hasn't kept in touch enough to know how miserable Indy is? What does it say about Indy that he doesn't recognize what it takes yeah. to fix how miserable it is? Like, none of these people come out well from this at all. Every single person, even the ancillary characters, are badly reduced by this story. Yeah, and I, I, I'm inclined to completely agree. I think it's kind of gross, like, the whole thing. And the, mm -hmm. how important these relationships should be, and how much baggage and history there is, and how much how little B.B. Wallabridge specifically would understand about any of these people, and yet she's considered by the end of the film as, like, the heroic linchpin that brings all of it together. Like, ew. Most, like, really? Come on. Yeah. yeah. Like, huh, I'm gonna go have ice cream with the, with the family while they have a sexy time, or whatever well, the indication. Well, yeah, they I've just never reunite, met, by the way. Reunite instantly. Like, yeah. in 30 seconds, because they do the, oh, you know, where does it hurt? Yeah, and then they do it, and then that's the end of the movie. Like, it, it, it is short, guys. <laughs> like, it's yeah. really mm -hmm. short. And then it's over. Don't worry, we spent loads of time on bullshit action scenes and a bunch of padded walking around, but when we have Marion and 
fucking Indiana Jones themselves, like trying to reconnect. The film can't Pretty wait enough, to hit the, the credits. Time, <laughs> yeah. The last time that you're ever going to see this character, the the end as they've decided for Indiana Jones, and they just race past it. No, like this, that that had to be a reshoot, right? Oh, it feels so much like a reshoot. Mm -hmm. the, nothing about that scene feels like it belongs with the film that preceded it. it I don't think so they had an ending. No one near it. And then they were like, like when it's, this will work. When it happened, it's like, oh, we, why would we have a... What? Why? Isn't that an unbelievable sort of statement to have? I don't think they had an ending for the ending of Indiana Jones. The film yeah. that they fucking made with the explicit goal of it being the ending the of film, the series. When the cost there was already 300 ending, million. 300 million dollars. And Three what's its opening domestic? 60 million. So it's going to fail. It's going to fail spectacularly. Miserably. Yeah. Also, are, are they um are they expanding the definition of opening weekend? Because I know the box office predictions at the beginning were doing that. It's a five day holiday weekend. Oh yeah, so yeah. Speak. Which so um, it's, uh, <clears throat> okay. be, they it can't escape. Anything at the end of the day, yeah, they can't still escape. Days. It's just days that people go to watch movies. So you can buff that number up all you want. But three hundred million dollars, sixty million opening weekend. I mean, how much would the market? Well, people have been? calculated like, 100, 200 million? This motherfucker of a movie needs to make like eight hundred million to break proper even. It's like, not going to do that. Like, look no at this way. Year. Look, look at this year. Like the only, I think the only two films that have made that much money this year was Mario. Which, let's be real, Mario probably has more of like a box office draw as a franchise than Indiana Jones and Guardians. Yeah. It's not going to make it. Well, no, it is, what is it's a doctor? fucking, it's a shit film that no one should recommend to anybody. Uh, yes, it's, yeah, so that's probably Terrible. the thing that is worth emphasizing. There may be, like, you know, whatever people want to talk about in terms of the meta, the place of Lucasfilm right now, and I guess, you know, culture war stuff or whatever, but, like, fundamentally, this film sucks. This is really <laughs> bad. A shitty film. It's a really bad Meanwhile, rewatching... Don't let people convince you otherwise. <laughs> rewatching the original trilogy is a fucking blast. It really oh, it is. was an absolute blast. Oh, yeah. Those three mm -hmm. movies. What a great trilogy that was. What a great trilogy of three pretty different films that are still bound together by a sort of same general core uh, formula that like culminates in The Last Crusade, which you know, I'm, I don't know how many of us agree, but the, the best one in this series. No, I agree in with my that. opinion. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not just what I think is the best of the three. It's like one of my favorite movies. A movie kicks ass. Uh, yeah, it's one of the best films ever made. Uh, I'd be happy to say that. And there's so much heart there. There's so much passion behind the filmmaking, so much creativity mm -hmm. and ingenuity. They're just really fun, well-balanced movies. They got lots of comedy. They got heart. Uh, and they rode off into the sunset, and that was the end of the trilogy, and then they couldn't help themselves because there's currently the fucking climate that we're in where they just have to yeah. keep, like, digging up the grave of these, of these like, franchises and these characters to parade them around. And at like the same a, time, uh, at the same time, we have this dumbass trend with multiverse and time travel that has to mm -hmm. be in every fucking movie and media in no general. No creativity. Stop it. Stop. No creativity Seriously. At all. I'm done with this bullshit time travel well, shenanigans. Then to address it's mind bending to fucking figure out what you want. And it's mind bending for you to. Well, it's not mind bending for you because you don't give a shit. You just do the things like, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Shut the fuck up. It's just, it Wasn't makes amazing, me angry though? when I see time shows. It's like, this is fucked. This is going to be fucked. There's no way it's going to be coherent at all. They have access to that, and that's what they used it for. Like, they, they it's like a uh, multiverse of madness. It's like, what are you going to do with your premise then? Because, like, I hate that you're choosing it, but at least w what will you do? Same, by the way, for The Flash. This goes, yeah. Christ, what a bunch of shitty films. Yeah, and uh, I guess in a certain sense, is there cause for optimism that it seems like these tricks aren't working anymore a little bit I mean, yeah it's not I mean, been a good year for these types of projects marvel is now like their films actually have the capacity to fail now yeah. every lucasfilm property has been completely obliterated in terms of like future box office potential yeah the, yeah. the whole um, set has been completed there is nothing yeah. left at lucasfilm that has not been plundered and raped and left in a ditch but uh, I, I guess that there's one maybe medium term positive to take from that which is that the reason spielberg and, and lucas and the like are popular anyway and uh, the reason they made their names and were given the opportunity to do that is because throughout the sort of 40s 50s of hollywood then we, we were actually in a fairly similar position. You had the rise of TV, for parallels, the rise of streaming and TV. Um, and that was taking a huge amount of money away from studios. And in, in response to that, studios did for cinema uh, what we are currently seeing. What they did is they tried to extrapolate and, and to expand as far as possible the technological marvels that you can put on a big screen that don't fit on a small screen. They wanted to do even bigger 
production shots, everything, like all the great epics. They wanted to make it a visually splendid thing, but there weren't any stories being told and these were the same old thing. And eventually you saw the studio system almost collapse and some fairly large companies go out of business. It's only after that that you get the Hollywood renaissance of the sort of 70s, early 70s through to 80s. And it's that period which sees Spielberg come up and George Lucas come up. And many of these people got their start doing TV as well. Uh, Spielberg himself, you know, did early work on Columbo, of all things. Um, But eventually the studios started losing so much money on these big epic productions that they turned to young upstarts and said, well, look, it can't possibly be worse. So what have you got for us? And they took risks. And those risks gave us some of the greatest directors, the greatest films. It gave us Indiana Jones in in time. Um, And if we're at the sort of the, the declining period of of the 30s, 40s in terms of historical parallels, then eventually there might be a renaissance coming after that. But it's it's going to be another decade, probably, before we start seeing studios say, yeah, maybe with all the multiverse stuff, all the CGI megascapes with no story, maybe they've lost us so much money that we can't carry on. It's going to be a while, but these things go in cycles. They are repetitive. History does repeat. So eventually mm-hmm. you will have a recovery. It's just not yet. Yeah, uh, I think you're right that it will probably take some time for them to react because, I mean, the, you know, this year's not been good for, like, a lot of these big franchise films. Mm. Um, it's been a lot more unpredictable which films are going to succeed and fail, whereas Marvel movies were guaranteed to succeed or, like, Disney remakes were guaranteed to succeed. Like, a lot of these projects are no longer reliably making money, and I don't really know what this industry, especially in the midst of the writer's strike going on, like, I don't know what the reaction to that is going to be or how long it's going to take before changes start to happen in the filmmaking process. But, I mean, every it's gone wrong. It's gone wrong, and it seems like people are getting more receptive to that. I don't Thankfully, know why Disney bought Indiana Jones, like, the, the rights to well, it. Lucasfilm, I get Star right? Wars. Uh, oh, sure, I get... Oh, so the, with they Lucasfilm, they Lucasfilm get Indiana and Jones. Indiana Jones just came along with it, like a pack. Yeah, Indiana Jones... Um, uh, Willow and Star Wars, and there's a couple of other like smaller things that nobody gives a shit about, as far as I know. These were the, the biggest dark. hitters they had from Lucasfilm. So I I thought they bought Indiana Jones individually, so I guess that makes more sense. Well, it's, it's a little bit more complicated. <laughs> I think Paramount still has some rights to Indiana Jones, like distribution or something, but it was part of the Lucasfilm deal essentially, and they wouldn't turn up and all, like they love franchises, or maybe they did, but now it's not really. It's not. It's not a uh, well, yeah, not going. <laughs> Willow's fate was to be removed from Disney Plus, right? <laughs> Within what six months after it came out, and it got like critically panned, and nobody watched it. Indiana Jones is set to be one of the biggest like record-breaking losses ever because of how insane the the budget ballooned. And then, do I even what do I need to say about Star Wars? What did they do to mm-hmm. that? Absolutely incredible work. So yeah, they know, and they know that yeah. like they they yeah. got serious. Someone needs to answer for all of this. Oh, it's just they can delude themselves into thinking that people think these films are good, but at the end of the day, if people aren't showing up to watch the films, like, you can't keep going like this. Mm-hmm. You can't keep going like this. You're just losing money. And that's what will compel them to change in the long run. But um, Money. But yep. the, well, the, the, interesting, the interesting thing is that you, you've got a, a number of smaller studios, or studios that began smaller, which actually are a result of the Hollywood renaissance, and Lucasfilm is one of them, Pixar would be another one later on, um, both of which are now in dire straits because they are owned by moribund and intellectually bankrupt old studios, which are trying to leech profit off of things without really understanding what value creation is. That's that eventual loss of money. The fact that everything, because it's not just a Lucasfilm problem, it's not just a Kathleen Kennedy problem. It's a Disney problem. It's it's a Paramount problem. It's Water it's a problem water. with a huge number of large studios at the moment. And the fact is that they do not any longer understand what created the value behind the properties they are now exploiting. That means they will lose money. That means eventually some of them will go bust. And after that, you will get a bit of desperation, which prompts more innovation. And maybe there'll be a new Star Wars or a new Indiana Jones. But it won't course. be Star Wars or Indiana Jones anymore. It'll be a brand new story because these things have been tied to corpses and dumped in the sea. And like you mentioned before as well, it will be the new filmmakers, the new James Camerons and Steven Spielbergs, yeah. George Lucas's Martin Scorsese's, right. like that new generation of directors who right now with the studio system with uh, like Marvel where they make one indie film and then get snatched up into these $200 million and ruined. Productions. Uh, yeah. Well, and it's the same problem that the video game industry has right now with Crunch, right? Who's going to be the next like Hideo Kojima, Corey Barlog, Miyamoto, all these guys when so many people are, you know, like so many, so much young talent is being uh, lost because of crunch. 
like permanently sort of uh they don't want to be part of the industry anymore like it's it's cuz it's it's the people who make the it's the people who make these things that like make the value that make the art it's not just indiana jones as like an intellectual property and the desire to turn it into a film and having the money to back it up it's the it's the creativity behind it like you need that well, yeah, the, i think that was um, illustrated heavily with star wars over a long period of time i say long uh, what is it like 2015 to now sort of like this yeah. journey and sad but it's yeah it's it's the star wars was a name and you know star wars was so incredible it would have characters that carry as much as an ip name like obi-wan like vader like and the rest of them and they've all been squeezed and it's just crazy to think yeah lucasfilm is a dried corpse uh yeah pretty much yeah. They, and, and and in what eight years holy shit in eight years, you made it to where Star Wars and Indiana Jones are not reliable in terms of making money. I mean, it only took Star Wars three years to get to that point. Incredible. And that's absolutely you know, incredible. A huge leg of uh, Disney is, is going to be Lucasfilm. It's like another one is Marvel. What have they got next? The Marvels. That's, that's what the they've Marvels, got next. Secret Invasion's viewership is like the Tanking. second lowest of all. No of one them. cares about that show. Nobody. And, 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 and what's it going to look like? What's it going to look like with Echo or Ironheart? The fuck. Like what? How are those films gonna the films TV shows gonna perform? And then just you know, the Elemental, like another Pixar film that's bombed. When Pixar used to be reliable yeah. money makers, like it's it's unreal, isn't it? Like what an interesting year twenty twenty three is turning out to be for yeah. film and television. And Indiana oh. Jones is yet another piece of shit to throw on well, there. Well, because it sounds, it sounds almost <laughs> like, it's like, oh, let me guess, you didn't like a new thing that came out, and it's just like, dude. Dude, I don't know what to <laughs> tell you, man. Like, <laughs> they're just shit. <laughs> there's not a you. scene that, like, there's, there's maybe a line of dialogue here and there, but there is no scene that I consider to be solid. There's no, fucking no, there's breaks not one. in there's, everything. There's maybe an individual component of 10 to 15 seconds that's okay, as long as you ignore everything else that happened. I don't want these films to be absolute it. shit. We talked forever about how this was a bad idea from the start. However, there are ways to make yeah. it work. And then what that they exactly. chose to do was horrible. That's what we got. Yeah. And then the execution was bad, too. Even when the ideas are misguided. It's mm -hmm. like, wow, just... Yeah. Oh, hey, look, video, it's, been a, it's been a cool year for video games, though, huh, lads? Yeah. You know, Dead Space, yeah. Resident yeah. Evil 4, Breath of the Wild... Uh, not Breath of the... Tears of the Kingdom, Metroid been Prime an, Remastered, Final Fantasy enjoying... 16 is pretty cool. Yeah. Been enjoying that. That's lots fun. of cool video games. Yeah. Mm. As a... <laughs> I'd like oh, a good Gollum. movie. Who could forget? A Gollum, a legend. <laughs> Gollum will love the, 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 the second one is scrapped. It's done. The Dadalik is like yeah, we're done with developing. We're just publishing now. They, they died That's of the embarrassment. Game. I think. <laughs> like, yeah. Oof. That's oof, insane. Oof, oof. Um, sorry, guys, you won't get a follow up on the Golem streams. I'm so no. sorry. But at least, at least they got this, eh? Um, that 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 is that is Indiana that Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Yeah. It's a fucking terrible thing. Avoid it. Never ever give give any Don't attention to this thing. Let it die. Yeah. Let it fall there into obscurity. Three Indiana Jones movies. And Go watch movie have it those. somehow. Yeah, but what, they what? exist and they're great. It's because uh, I, I get asked the question quite often, and I'm sure you guys will do as well, but, you know, when you give a, a preemptive review on Twitter or somewhere and people say, is it worth me watching? And I, almost always, I really want to say, well, make your own mind up, go and watch it and find out. This is one of the few films, but they are increasingly common, where I say, you know what? No, it's, it's genuinely just not. Watch it if you do want to find out for yourself, but I'm pretty sure you will be wasting your money and your time. There is no point to this. It doesn't tell a story. It doesn't go anywhere. It will only destroy what you liked about the character to begin with. So what's the damn point? Yeah. Um, I hate to say yeah. it because it sounds so insane, but like of all the timelines, I, we got a really bad role here. This is one of the worst possible mm -hmm. ones, surely. They did everything fucking wrong. I don't think we mentioned it, but uh, the the hat shot at the end was weird. <laughs> yes, yeah, it, like oh god, yeah. The, it, so you see them making out inside, right? And then it cuts to outside, and Phoebe, whatever her name is, is walking away. So presumably, it's like a continuous exterior. So they're still inside making out, and then there's a crane shot upwards. You see Indy's hat on like a clothes peg, 
There's an iris close on the hat. You're waiting for it to fully close. It's like, oh, is it the end? And then Indy snatches his hat off the clothesline. It's like, what are you and then it closes. It? And it, it's not right. A what do you need the hat for? What are you doing? <laughs> so I'm thinking, like, are they doing like that. sexy role play? And like he's putting the hat on. <laughs> yes. Face on during sex. You're not Indy when you're not wearing your hat. That's what she was saying. True. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. That was really fucking strange. And I've I already know that apparently like there's there's comments from people like Kathleen Kennedy or whatever being like, you know, hey. That Phoebe Waller Bridge, you know, she's she's a star, and she really could take this franchise forward. You know, it's it's, it's not impossible. You know? if that be. happens, no, I will that Indiana be. Jones's hat. That's not gonna. It's happen. just funny, man. It's like I don't, fucking can't Harrison that. Ford can't no even way. carry Indiana Jones right now. Yeah. What do you think she's gonna do? <laughs> Jeez. So, what? before we wrap up, I think it should be said that uh, I appreciate both uh, Little Platoon and John for hanging out with us for so long. Metal, you're just, you know, you're just, you're just here. You're always here. I know, I know, I know. You away. Um, for anybody, because this is the beginning of the stream, I mentioned this, but yes, Rags couldn't make it, but he'll be back from his holiday. He will see this movie, and he'll fucking despise it, and then he'll be like, <laughs> man, I wish I could have been on the stream to, you know, have a bit of catharsis talking about it. So sorry. <laughs> uh in, in any case, I would like to give everyone an opportunity to talk about what they're up to on their channels. Why don't we start with Little Platoon? What are you up to, mate? Um, this, sadly. So <laughs> I'll be doing Indiana Jones 5, yeah. I think the, the introduction is 12,000 words, so it's, um, mm -hmm. it's going to be going for a while. We'll see what happens, but yeah, plenty of Indy 5. And then after that, who knows? Some other travesty will come up, I'm sure. But um, but always a pleasure to be on EFAP because this has been really good fun. The film was shit. I've seen it twice. This has made up for the suffering that I went through. I oh, appreciate you. Good, yeah. good company and plenty of insights. Really appreciate it. Um, John, what about yourself? I'm I'm still doing like these dumb self-contained Arby and the Chief episodes. I did a the reboot was my last one where the show gets rebooted by a Hollywood executive. I'm doing another one called <laughs> Chief's Big Wiener. It's, <laughs> it's really dumb, really long too, but whatever. Uh, I'm working on that. And uh, yeah, John Graham on YouTube if you want to subscribe and all that. Check it out. Always Thank you for having me company. on, guys. Oh, yeah, absolutely, dude. Uh, nice to have you back. It's been a, I was about to say it's been a yeah. while. Not really, but kind of. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just that amount of time. Um, Metal, how about Hello. you, sir? Uh, currently, well, I, I thought I'm going to do a forge on this, but I really didn't want to. So now I talked about it here. So there you go. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just forges are coming up. I'm. I'm probably going to grab some people to just uh, have a talk see about uh, Final Fantasy 16 when I'm through the game. Uh, I'm going through it pretty slowly because I'm also working on other things. Uh, that yeah, you, and, uh, you and Az are currently competing to see who can stream it more, right? Uh, is that so? Maybe. I don't and know. <laughs> I just, that's what I see. I see the streams. And look at them go, playing their little video game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, is that I, any good, FF16? I'm I'm having to blast with it, yeah. It's uh, I'm, I, uh I'm, this thing's pretty good. I like That's it, good to hear. but I'm not very far into it. Um, I think I want to see how the combat develops as new abilities sort of get unlocked and whether it makes a little bit more varied than it is right now. It, it yeah, does. It's, it does. I think I figure <laughs> it does. Yeah, but yeah, it's fun. Yeah, so I'm probably gonna grab some people to talk about that. I don't know. Uh, maybe Fringy. I don't know. Depends how far. Oh, uh, dude, I, guess. I don't know I don't how know. far I'm getting. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe at some point you start not playing Mario Kart and play other games. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey leave me be. <laughs> uh, but no, that, that's the. Uh, um, I'm probably going to stream that tomorrow. Uh, grab some people for that forge. And I guess the next big movie that's coming out is probably Mission Impossible, right? If I'm remembering correctly. That's. Yeah, that's, uh, reckoning. I think it's coming out this week, actually. This at least over here. Uh, so all eyes uh, on the Indiana yeah. Jones 5 drop-off when Mission Impossible comes yeah. out and takes all of the viewers <laughs> away. That'll be fun. It says 12th on my on my whiteboard over there. So. I, 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 oh, no, it's coming out this week over in Ozland. Ooh. Well, good uh, for that's, you. Uh, a good point, actually, regarding, like, because uh, I wasn't sure if Dial of Destiny would make its money back, because it's, like, the most expensive 
Indiana it's Jones movie that's been made. No. And I'm not sure, like I thought maybe it'll make its money back, but not by a lot. But uh, Mission Impossible could really throw a wrench in that, I think. Uh, it's a busy and cramped time for the, because there's a lot, there's that, Barbie and Oppenheimer come out the same mm -hmm. day. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. There's, another, there's another movie I'm forgetting about too that's coming out this month. It's, uh, it's a busy month. So yeah, I imagine that Mission yeah, I Impossible forgot. will because that probably competes with a similar audience. So yeah, good oh, luck, okay. Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. Uh, but but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually have a, my my script finished on my current project. I'm actually pretty happy with it right now. So I'm probably going to start recording soon. So maybe there's going to be actual information what it's going to be about uh, sometime that, uh, this month. Maybe we'll see. About that. Links. Link subscribe or I'll beat you up. <laughs> Links for all these lads in the description. Fringy, do me or yourself want to say anything about anything? I Probably did. not. I just working. <laughs> you know, I mean, you significant progress is being made. It's yes. a, it's a chongus, yeah. and um, I don't know. Maybe maybe in two weeks at the lo lowest, oh more information God. would be given. Oh, that's all exciting. I've said. More information. It could be the vaguest information. Could be that we say what it may be, you know, who knows? Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, I mean, I've mentioned it on other streams I'm on if anyone's been watching them. I'm just editing pretty much every day. That's all it is. And, uh, likewise, it'll be fun to show you guys what ends up getting made. Uh, give her time. Uh, on that note, nice. I think that's, that's going to be it from us. We're going to be heading out. Of course, uh, we'll be doing, uh, catch up streams, but we'll probably wait till Rags is back to check out these animal. Don't worry, I'll force him to watch Indiana Jones. He's going to love it. Uh, big old fan of the, the original three. So he's... Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and yeah. Oh, he'll uh, love this one then. Absolutely. Right. Actually, I, I am going to be curious what he thinks of this. I <laughs> fucking piss him off so much. Um, he's going to yes. be so angry. Until next time, everybody. I'm not even sure if we'll be covering... I don't know if... It, is, is Mission Impossible something that we might cover on EFAB? Who knows? We'll have to figure that one out. Because the... Uh, I don't know if it's suitable or not. It could be fun, though. Oh, what about Bobby? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually thinking about covering that for the memes alone. I think it could be fun. Fair I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to watch it. This kind of looks I'll probably watch it. Project. I don't think I'll cover it on yeah. EFAP, but I don't know. What about, what about Oppenheimer? I doubt that's going to be very good for covering an EFAP, but you know what? We can well, talk we can about turn it. it a, we can turn <laughs> it because we haven't seen Tenet yet. It could be a double feature, Tenet and Oppenheimer. Oh, God. <laughs> Arbenheimer EFAB. That's, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's like the, the key like... thing you look for in a film for EFAP coverage. Like, uh, um, it's a complicated Because, like, you're a Nolan fan, thing. right? Like, I figured maybe mm. Oppenheimer would be a. <laughs> I um, I think I said this on the last Real BBC. I'm way more of a fan of his first half than his second half of his work. I think okay. I'm always interested in what he's doing. I, I have a lot of respect for him as a filmmaker, but I mean, can't lie. Like I haven't enjoyed. I don't like Interstellar. I kind of don't like Dunkirk. I think The Dark Knight Rise is really bad. <laughs> like, <it's... laughs> I need to rewatch. Yeah. Um, what's it called? Yeah. Inception. I don't know if that's good or not. I can't remember. Uh, that's a good. That's well, a, yeah, I, I like. Think I only Inception. watched it when it came out. I have no idea. I really idea. like Inception, but we'll see. Like on a rewatch, <laughs> we'll how I feel see. about it. Yeah, uh, but, but I have a lot of respect for him as a filmmaker. So, like, I'm always mm. going to be interested in whatever he's working on. Part of what we look for, I think, is something that's definitely going to create a lot of conversations. It's not mm -hmm. just a series of this didn't make sense, this did, this didn't, this didn't, this did. It's, it's more like we knew with Indiana Jones. It's like we're going to have to talk a lot about meta, what he means to the world, what this film says about him, and. You know, as soon as they introduced fucking time travel, I was like, well, that's going to be a whole fucking thing. Um, right. Oppenheimer, I'm not sure, like, how much we're going to be able to draw much of a... I, I have no idea what we're dealing with with that, a movie like that. Um, right. I also worry a movie like that is probably going to flop. I'm not sure. Uh, competing... Barbie seems like the one to, that will win that competition. I think Barbie has more mass appeal. More mass appeal, yeah. Yeah, I, I, and it seems like there's a hell of a lot of hype for Barbie. Oppenheimer is a bit of a harder sell, I think. Mm. Like, you want to watch a biopic about one of the guys who helped develop the atomic bomb compared to you want to watch a movie about Barbie, like a well-known, well-recognized, iconic brand that has this huge stacked cast. Though Oppenheimer has a really stacked cast as well. But yeah, I think that one struggles in a fight against the both, you know, between those two films. Um, <laughs> Come on, <me>, right? <laughs> <Bailing. laughs> 
<laughs> he looks so worried. <laughs> she she pulled looks... the fucking pit on his grenade as well. Another attempt. Why it not? looks so worried. It's like, I don't trust that, that one bad lady. <laughs> that was a good Hitler impression, by the way. <laughs> oh. It's uh, it's definitely a take. I, f I feel like this should enter a lot of people's videos about this film. <laughs> like, it's a very confusing <laughs> third act. Disney Anna Jones. All right. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We shall catch you in the next EFAP related thing, whatever it may be. And uh, appreciate you. Toodle pip. Good night. Cheerio. Thanks, oh, everybody. Bye. 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 See ya. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, uh. Belongs in a museum. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm.